Hello. I hear you.
Two days down, two days to go. We are live for day number three of competition here at the Duty Free Tennis Stadium for the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. I'm Chase Singham, Bill Grundler, Nikki Braze will be joining us shortly. After two days of competition, it's going to start to get pretty fun as the teams are slated for a lot of action to start day number three. They had five scored events within the first two days. They have four individually scored events today. It's almost like it's its own event just today. So whatever points you got, great. Hopefully you got a little bit of a cushion, but we are, we're going to get into the thick of it today. And after five scored events, it is Misfits Performance sitting on top of the leaderboard over We Got Cake as well as team prepared. And as you know, we've seen, it was really four individual events, but one part had a two part score. What have you seen from Misfits so far that you think may either keep that top position or lose that top position after at least today? Uh, one word, the word is domination. They've been either first or second in every single event that we've had. Uh, and we have seen a multitude of different types of, of events. So we talked about the specialty events with the swimming and those sort of things. But these, this team has been all business. And we talked about what is that going to look like, and that's what—that's exactly what they're going to be doing. Is business is showing that that's what's, what's going to happen, and that that's the dominating statement across the board. Um, but I think we're going to see the same thing with the events that we have. These guys can grind, and they have the cushion. We talked about if you look at the leaderboard and how it's scored, 15 points is a very good cushion for them going into these events. Starting off day number three in a just mean kind of way when this event Ew. was announced this is the, this is Ew. one of those that it's not hard to do it's just going to be a painful day of activities you got three rounds 50 cals shared between men and women pairs so you're going to have two bikes two pairs and they both got a bike to 50 cals total and then those 50 worm squats for three rounds we were talking to rich running earlier and he was just all smiles <laughs> about this individual event just now to be fair they tested it he put himself through this so he knows what's he coming knows what it feels like and yeah. he's going to be glued to the tv screens just like you guys should be because it's going to be a tough event for these teams yeah and it's going to come this is a leg blaster so you are going to have to figure out how hard to push your legs you know, everyone knows that they can go hard on the bike, but you really want to make those worms as unbroken as possible. You don't want to have to put that thing down. So keep moving on the bike, but really put it down on the on the worm, and then the one who can deal with the pain is the one that's going to win. So we have two heats for the first event today for team competition in the first heat. You'll have CrossFit Eliath, Team Tractor, CrossFit Yaz, and Aarhus Supreme. Now, Yaz had a pretty good heat, well, at least heat one, last night to kind of close things out we just had one individual event but when you, when you look at this on paper you know it's going to be it's not really it's not a hard event to do there's no trickery ah uh, no 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 and, and it turns into a can do event into a want to event and a, a lot of times that is not a fun event to do <laughs> there's a lot of distance distance between i can do it and i want to do it because if you're in the want to do it area it's how bad are you willing to make yourself hurt? And it's going to hurt as you start pushing yourself through these through these elements. I think that what's really going to have to happen is who, what team is going to be able to keep their athletes in the game. You know, we saw, we talked about the communication and how important that is. And we talked about how we, uh, uh, we got cake. They're a very close-knit group. Yet we saw in one of the events on the first day where they got really separated and they just didn't seem to be talking, even though those guys are so close and tight. I didn't see the, come on, guys, let's keep moving. I didn't see that. I just saw them all kind of doing their own thing. This is one of those events where these bikes hurt mm -hmm. really, really bad. <laughs> and you need to make sure that you keep your, keep your, your partner moving. And then, the, again, you have to have that same kind of communication. So if you have a weak link somewhere, you're going to try and keep them moving as well. Now, how this is going to be or separated is that the teams must complete 50 cals total on the Rogue Echo bike. They're working in male and female pairs together, and they can switch off as much as they want, but it only a male and female are dedicated to one bike. So you can't have men on one bike. And right. That would be a horrible idea to begin with <laughs> when you're just talking about cals on the bike. But... Until the team collectively reaches 50 cals for both bikes, they can split that up however they want. Then they move to the worm. Will they do 50 squats with the worm? And we'll cycle through three rounds of that. And, and I think, you know, we're already seeing probably one of the best strategies for the bike, which is 
get in there and work hard for about 10, 15 seconds and then get off so you can let the other athlete do that. It, you you got to keep the, you have to keep the pain off your legs as much as possible because you got to, where the race is going to be is on that worm. It, you have to, you got to keep it on you. You can't put that thing down. You can break it up, but you cannot put it down. And here's one thing I see is, you know, you do have a male and female pair on the bike and you see athletes adjusting seats in between. That takes time. Do, do you feel like that's even worth the time? No. Or, you no. know, what also hard is, you know, if you're a tall guy, hopefully you paired with your tallest Taller, female. Totally. And I, and I think that that's something that all these athletes, I mean, hopefully at this point are aware of. If you're going to be going back and forth and there's going to be a lot of exchanging, you want to try and take the tall position for the shortest athlete. To the worm first is CrossFit Eliath. They'll be all in red. And as we move into 50 squats with the worm. And we see, you know, there's, the worm is used so much in team events now uh, across the world. Athlete, or teams have to be very aware of how everyone is moving in that group. If you see that worm start to get uneven and there's bends in it and tall end here and it's sagging over here, all that does is put extra weight on the different athletes and it just really can crush your team. Well, a lot of this is that that's not just the volume being challenge, challenging physically, but to keep your team together for 50 repetitions. That's, that poses itself a unique challenge. You know, I'm not worried about their athlete's ability to do 50 squats with a heavy worm, right. but keeping everyone together for that four, three rounds under fatigue and well, then the stress of trying to beat other teams, it, and that's it can what, get confusing. It, well, one, you got to remember you have three rounds, so you don't have to do it all in the first round. You don't have to you know, put yourself into, buried yourself into the pain cave on the first round, but you're right. I think that you have to pick a good reset which is if it's every 10 or 12 or 8 or whatever it is, hit that number, everyone stops, boom, reset. So you don't get out of sync. You're not having people going up and down when they don't need to. So Elias, they'll put the worm down, and then everyone reshuffled after the break. You know, the, the, the worm weight in terms of that is 170, 170. So it's evenly split for men, women, men, women. But... Being in the front or being in the back and being in the middle, that actually That's has a drastic difference of feel for athletes. And you can see how up there in the front, that's Carmen Bosman from CrossFit Yes, I mean, she's trying to keep that position with that bag on her, whoa, on her shoulder. You can see her hands going down, trying to help herself up, keep that chest up, keep her back as vertical as possible. Uh, but you're right, being in the different position, the way that bag pulls your body either backwards or forward, back or forth could be really difficult. Time cap for this event, 17 minutes. As Eliath will advance forward. We are nearing the five minute mark. And it looks like they will be done with their first set of 50 worm squats and back to the bikes. They were the first one off the bike. Yaz was just behind him and they keep that pace. It, Bosman's looking. Ooh. Doesn't, Very uncomfortable for just being the first round. Doesn't look like she enjoyed that round at all. And the fact that, you know, she was having to fight, you know, put, driving off her legs, that just shows how devastating the first round is. We still have two more. Your top two teams in the upper left in all red, that is Elioth. You have Arhu Supreme finishing up their 50 squats. Tractor is still working on their set. So your two leaders, CrossFit Yaz, sitting second just behind CrossFit Eliath. I know one of the nice things that all these teams need to be thinking about is, okay, we just came off all those squats. You can use the bike to try to flush those legs out as much as you can. Just kind of get them moving. But you should be seeing a lot more arm use during this time as well. Let, get, let those legs breathe just a touch. But why are you making your switch back and forth? Because, again, you're going to be back on that worm and have to deal with that 50 squats again for round number two. Past the six-minute mark. 50 more cows combined between the teams. Carmen Bosman looking very comfortable on that assault bike. <laughs> <laughs> or rogue echo bike. <laughs> Yaz's squad. Team captain is Carmen Bosmans. See Chris Cunningham for Eliath. 
Eliath has Chris Cunningham, Sam Clark, Emily Webb, and Rachel Knox. It's Lauren Stallwood for CrossFit Yaz. Her and Anthony Mox side by side, although it only matters to that particular bike. Both bikes must hit 50 cals split between the two pairs. Ahmed Eid moving up. I'm actually surprised that the it looks like the teams are starting to stay on the bike longer than they did even in the first round. It, it's okay to come off. I mean, it, unless you're having to do that, that, that seat switch, which even though it's a pretty quick switch, there's really no need to do that. I mean, I, I just... I just don't see the need to do it. You aren't going to be on bike, or you shouldn't be on the bike that long, where you're going to need to be that comfortable on it. Now coming into the bike, Yaz was behind Eliath, and it looks like they have moved up ahead. Although Eliath doesn't look like they're far behind. So CrossFit Yaz is moving into their second set of 50 squats. And these middle rounds in the these three round events, these are just just the worst. It's kind of a no man's land feeling of, you know, it's not the first round. We already did that. We're tired from that. We still got one more afterwards. And this is where round two is always the you worst. You know, people talk about the, the gut check at the end, but yeah. I honestly feel like I think the gut check is there in the middle. Oh, yeah. You don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. There's no light anywhere. So you are experiencing the pain from round one. You realize that now you're in it. You went from being comfortable before it started to now I'm breathing hard, my legs are burning, and I'm not even halfway done yet. And that's a very um, ugly and, and uncomfortable position to be in. Team Tractor, they're behind everybody coming in. Females on the bike, Sylvia Garcia and Rita Garcia Herrera. One thing with Elia, they've really compressed their athletes together which in a sense might make it a little easier to keep yourselves from, I mean, maybe better communication. and Maybe. I, I just think that if you have the bag hang over too far in the front, that's actually more weight on your front person uh, because there's more hanging out there. Why, you know, let that person come out to the front just a little bit, spread that weight out as evenly as possible. Team Tractor finishing up their final 50 cals for round number two. Yaz was to the worm first after the second set of 50 cals, but Eliath was close behind him. Eliath was leading earlier into the bike for the second round. Eliath, now the way Eliath is holding that bag nice and flat, that looks really, really good. Even, even the way Yaz had their setup, even though it was hanging over the front just a touch, the rest of the bag was nice and straight. So again, the more straight the bag is, the easier it's gonna be to move that. And a lot of this kind of comes down to is the consistent height between a lot of your teammates. You see the Aarhus Supreme, I mean that that one athlete is, I'm not say head and shoulders, <laughs> head and shoulders head shorter and than shoulders. everybody, but she, you know, her head is at everybody's shoulders and that's, <laughs> that's just what's happening. But it does make a difference where you put your athletes relative to the worm. And, the, and if you do have a shorter athlete like that, it does, all it does is make it more, be more weight for the other athletes that are around them. So you kind of want to have your strong squatter right behind that shorter athlete because they're going to be taking more weight. And the challenge there is that you have an athlete who's 6'3 on the backside and you have the other athlete that's 5'1. 5'1 five one. Five one five on, on the front. Looks like an AT&T commercial. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have that many bars on my phone. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Yaz is done with round number two, moving into their third and final round. And that was. And the challenge here is that with a 17 minute cap, that second round based off their first, they were under the pace, but now creeping towards other. They're gonna have to at least match the same pace they just went on just to make the time cap. They lost a lot of time in that second round. Well, and I, I think that again, now that they know they're in the last round and we just talked about, you know, what the rounds look like first round, gut check, second round, 
where the heck am I? Third round, okay, now I just want to finish. Um, I think that now they know that this will be the last one so they can kind of pick that up. But you have to you have to figure the time cap being 17 minutes, you're virtually looking at about five and a half minutes around. And they're right in the pace. I think this one, they're going to do better on this last round than we saw in that second round. Falling off the pace is Team Eliath from CrossFit Yaz. They were leading them, but now they are a minute behind Yaz. They're just about 10 seconds coming off the bike, so they lost a lot of time on those worm squats as Carmen Bosmans is working into her final set of 50 cals alongside her teammates. Five minutes left before we hit that 17 minute cap. Team Alaya trying to get through their third and final set of cows on this Rogue Echo bike. Now we're talking about, you know, changing seat heights. If my partner is 5'1 and I am 6'3, I am moving the seat. I am not going to bike uh, standing up. Well, I, and again, but, but, but we already <laughs> said this, if that's the case, Hopefully you didn't do that unless everyone is 6'1 and your other partner is. Then well, someone has to do that. If, you ha if you're in that position, I get it. I well, totally it's also, it. well, here's the thing. You have to average the pace of the two. So you're not going to put your best bikers on one bike. That no. doesn't make any sense. No, absolutely. So your worst biker is going to be 5'1. Absolutely. And your best will be 6'3. Uh, yeah, that's true. But, I mean, if you if you No, look Bill, at it, I'm correct. No, no, <laughs> you're not. Because actually we're not talking about an all-out sprint either. We're talking about just keeping the thing rolling. We just have to keep the, the wheel the moving. The fan speed. So it's it's going to be that over the course of whatever. And you know, make the switch. And if you need to make the switch to keep yourself from being overly tired, you don't want to have to worry about popping that seat in and out. I'm not saying it takes a long time because you can see that most of these teams are able to do that. But that's just one extra thing that you don't have to deal with if, if you can find that. Keep that fan speed moving. We see that a lot of times in, you know, for cows on the bike, different than maybe just reps on a bar. But right. CrossFit Yaz is done with their third and final set on the bike, and they will move to the worm for the last time. As we are at the 14-minute mark, they have three minutes to get through 50 worm squats. Time check, and their time splits from the second round was ex exactly three minutes. And so we said light at the end of the tunnel, it's here. But it's not, it's I not hope the, they see it, though. they got to open up their eyes. It's see not it. the gut check necessarily, but it's that carrot at the end of the stick. Now, the, the issue that they're going to have to be aware of is, yes, they do see the light at the end of the tunnel, but do they get out of sync while they're trying to run to that light? They have to make sure that they stay on their tempo, make sure they keep checking themselves so they don't get out of sync and have that bag all over the place. I like the way the bag is set right there over Yaz's shoulders. That looks very smooth. That's awesome. They just need to make sure that as they get towards the end, they don't try to rush it and then start throwing that good efficiency all out the window. Two minutes before we reach that 17 minute cap, no one else is on the floor with CrossFit Yaz. Now one thing we've seen them do different than others is they not only just switch positions on the worm, but they switch sides on the worm as well, moving from one shoulder to the other. Well, and I think it was uh, Arhu Supreme, I think they are actually carrying it on their back like a squat rack. I mean, a basic back squat. So their whole team turns to the back. So I like the idea of switching from one side to the other. Eliath is done with their last set of 50 cals, and now they're just going to try to get as many reps as they can in the next 90 seconds. Oh, that is a lot of weight in the front there. A lot of weight. Final 60 seconds for heat number two. Yaz takes another break. Crowd starts to come alive, try to cheer them on to the finish line. They're close. They'll be the only team that has a shot of finishing this event. 
We still have one more heat to go. We are top teams after two days will be coming up, and we've seen a stark difference between heat one and heat two over the last two days. <laughs> There's definitely a line drawn in the sand between the two heats for sure. This sucks. <laughs> 30 seconds to go. And Yaz will finish right underneath that time cap. And that was exactly what we were talking about, being able to finish in that last round, having the, having the capacity or the, the, the gas left in the tank to be able to finish that last round. And it was faster than their second round. So great job for Yaz to be able to finish that last set of 50 of those squats. So CrossFit Yaz will finish unofficially right around 1640. One of my favorite athletes for her post-event <laughs> <laughs> absolute meltdowns. <laughs> We've all been there. We can respect that. And as you finish heat number one, going into heat number two, Rich, you've got a devious smile on your face. Although, uh, we sit to your credit, you have tested this event yourself, tested even it. after programming it. Tested it, yeah. This is one of those events that uh, you're nervous because of the pain that you're about to have. <laughs> Not necessarily about how fast you have to go, but how much it's going to hurt. And uh, yeah, I mean, we finished this workout. I'd, I was, if Dre would text me back, I'm pretty sure it's 13-ish minutes. Um, we did watch Independence also finish it under the cap. We did this workout back in the summer in peak games uh, shape. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's definitely doable to finish under that 17 minute time cap, which we saw there. Um, you'll see some of the top times, I think around 14, 13 minutes. So as we saw heat one go, and we were kind of going back and forth on different strategies on how to approach this, how to set your men and women up on the bike and worm. Before heat two kind of goes in, I mean, they're not gonna hear this, but coaching advice you kind of give to your teammates yeah, I think it's definitely the way the way we did it was uh, 12, 12 calories for the men, eight calories for the women, um, depending who's on the front of that worm. So we had so I would usually start on the bike uh, because I was on the front of the worm. So I'd get a, about an eight calorie rest before I jumped on the front of the worm. If you need to, you're going to need to, you know, if that middle guy can the way it should go is male in the front, female, male, female. Um, depending on how the orientation of the worm is, which I assume it's the 100 bag, 70 bag, 100 bag, 70 bag. Um, the front of the worm is the person that gets punished the most, probably. <laughs> um, as you saw here, especially if, you, if you're going to drape that sandbag over your, uh, your chest so much, you're getting a lot more of that weight. So you really want to be more towards the middle of that sandbag. Um, you did see a lot of teams turning to the side, which they allowed, which gets it more towards a back squat. At the games, they do make us stay, you know, you try to squirt that, or you know, <laughs> skirt that line of it being maybe a little bit more towards the back, um, but you, you you can't get away with that too much. Which uh, hey, they're, they're allowing it, and so if you're within the rules, then by all means go for it. You <laughs> Play know? by the rules. So our top four teams are coming up. They'll be in your top four positions after two days. Mitz fit performance, looking very strong after five scored events. But you know, when you kind of look at some of the athletes coming up, we got cake and team prepared. Are definitely have the athletes to match them up. I mean, we, we got four events today. Four events. Yeah, so th there's a lot. a lot that can happen. Rich, I'll, I'll defer to you on this. Is you know, With the athletes that I would say that we got cake, have, and prepared, I mean, you got some strong athletes on there that can, I would assume, handle this squat load. Yeah, yeah. You have Cody Mooney, who's really good at machine um, type stuff and then can just grind it out on moderate. I mean, a worm squat is heavy, but it's more of a moderate to heavy type load. Uh, but for 150 reps, that becomes really heavy. And so, you know, <laughs> when we talked earlier, you, you do want to try to keep it on your shoulder as long as you can. You want to, you know, break, break the set into sets of 10 or maybe even, you know, a, a 12, 10, 8, and then go to some 10s or whatever you have to do. But you don't want to drop that, that sandbag. So maybe a set of 10, rest for a second. When that person in the front is ready, uh, then you kind of give the thumbs up. Hey, let's go for uh, another set of 10. So we'll see here and see how that all plays out. But um, I'm interested to see how hard Travis goes on this first set of bike <laughs> and how that plays out for the rest of the event. So here we go, a sprint. Travis is going to be the first one on the bike. Well, and I think, you know, Chase, what you were talking about between the two teams, Misfit and We Got Cake, it was interesting to watch them last night. That was another leg blast type of a, an event. And We Got Cake was able to pace it to where they pace finished it. a lot stronger. Mm -hmm. So we know the way Travis rolls. We know that the way he has a tendency to pull that team into that as well. So 
is that same thing going to happen? Well, that's what I want to see. The only time I would want to partner with Travis Williams would be on a shared cow <laughs> bike. I'm like, you do you, buddy. <laughs> go, man. Just, go. Let okay, me know no, you want. just let me know when you want to come You know, in. Uh, kind of something to think about here, too, is, is it's a very – something you can look past really quickly, um, the height. Height differences. Yeah, we were talking If you about do that. have to change the uh, – change the bike or if you don't have to change the bike or if you have that seat a little bit lower you know for some of the guys they may go a little bit lower on the yeah. seat that blows those quads up yes, a little bit more does. than you know you're getting a little quad dominant instead of hamstring and so that that may add up towards the end so that's something you you don't really think about when you really look at this workout we, we had that conversation the first heat because one team they had you know we would assume you'd pair you'd even out your abilities on the so. bike to yep. get off at the same time unfortunately for I think believe is Arhu Supreme their Shortest male athlete, athlete was 6'3", and their female athlete was 5'1". Yes, and so that's, I mean, that's something you got to look at. When you're looking at a team and a team dynamic, um, you know, height height does play a huge let, factor. And if it's close, if you're close to the same height, um, it's going to play me, get an advantage. Let me ask you something. When you are pairing on your team on Mayhem, do you classically have your set Male female pairs, or is it all based on well, the event that you all have? All based on the, the event. And luckily for us, uh, we all work well together. And so there's no, you know, especially, you know, we, Scott's kind of new to the team. So we're, we are trying to figure out, hey, in a certain event, how does he work well with Tej or how does he work well with China? But yeah, I mean, height, an event, event like this, you definitely want to look at height, oh, really, because totally. it's a huge. A huge advantage if yeah. you don't have to move that seat or if I'm not getting so blown up on my quads or if one of the girls can, you know, maybe go to a little bit higher seat, that'll help. And to that, I'm looking at Misfit, who's first off the bike. They're nearly all, all the, the same, same height, height across yeah. the board, so I feel like that's a massive advantage when it has something like 150 worm squats where there's really no deviation from front to back. Right, yeah, and then so something, I guess, I guess they have the orientation of the worm a little bit different. Um, so I guess the female bag is the, the bag in the front here. So um, that's something that's a little bit different. We don't ever really train that much. You know, we, we always have the, the heavy bag in the front. And being in the front is a completely different experience. Uh, uh, and I've seen before is that being the tall guy in the middle not is well. not ideal. Yeah. We, <laughs> being the tall guy we, in the middle, no matter where you're at. Yeah. We, uh, we kind of screwed that up one year at regionals. <laughs> we put our 6'4 athlete right there in the middle for the uh, worm thrusters. That didn't and, work uh, well, huh? He got religion in the middle of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's a good way to find it. it. Yeah, and so kind of if you can... Ah. What you really want to do here is you want to watch the first person and let them dictate the pace. So right. everybody just kind of follows along because we don't we don't call on worm squats. You do give like a, hey, down, that's your first rep, and you just kind of fall into place from there. Um, you have a set number of reps that you're going to go to or maybe, hey, I got one more, um, that kind of talk. But you want to try to save as much breath as you can, so you don't want somebody saying down every single rep. You know, right. there's some movements that you will have to do that. Uh, but this is one of those movements that if you can get away with, hey, just watch the person in front and kind of match your pace. And that's what people don't realize, I guess, on a team is um, it's, it's a whole lot easier to go at your own pace. Mm -hmm. But when you have to match someone else's, some people like to take rest between reps. Some people want to take rest um, in between transitions. And so that's something you have to really uh, account for. I think one thing I, I like to see is that you also don't have to really ever race worm movements in particular it's right. almost that steady technical pace what that I, they keep i you know i'll tell you something what i'm impressed with because we we talked about all right travis williams is on the team for misfits you know they're gonna you know go all out go full hard. sand they were taking breaks and very calculated Control, breaks yep. so even with with tyler williamson's up in the front she was calling the breaks and they were doing I mean, they weren't over rushing their reps nope. hitting every single one just like you like what you were saying rich not saying down every single time it was a thumbs up ready to go they would go yep. then they would all stop take their break she'd give a thumbs up they would all go again impressive communication with that team i mean again it's a manufactured team right all for business but and you do have a lot of experience really well. on there with the you look here athlete. cody's crushing jess right here See how he, he just all that weight Someone is going that straight down. Yeah. Yep. Like, oh, that was so hard. It's like I didn't feel a I thing. I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> the front of my shoulder was getting quite fatigued. Right, but. right. <laughs> so we got Kate currently sitting in third behind Misfit Performance and Team Prepared. As we move into our second round, 
And they are well ahead of the pace set in the first heat. It's something to think about here too. It's it's hot here, you know. There's um, I don't I'm not sure how it is in there and if there's some some air moving, but you know, four events today. Uh, and this is something you think about, start to think about maybe on the last round is, hey, if we're that far ahead, let's, uh, let's cool it off. Let's cool it off. I mean, because you, you, I guess you are racing some heats in the, or uh, some teams in the prior heat, but um, you also have to be smart. It's a long weekend. Now we're getting into the, the meat of the weekend, and uh, you have to be a little bit, little bit smart. And we said the benefit of that, actually, we were talking about this last night, <laughs> is that, you know, knowing where other people were, what the best time was coming in, right. if I know I'm well ahead, and also the time to beat, then what is the incentive to annihilate yourself to beat everybody by more than just the seconds that you need? There's not. And, you know, people want to say, or people on the outside want to say, well, oh, you should give it all you got no matter what to the end. But uh, it's it's an endurance event. It's an endurance weekend. And so you've got you to gotta be smart and, and kind of kind of if you have to, if you can, pull it back a little well, bit. Well, and I've always said that, like, that's the event that's not scored. Yeah. Is the entire, the entire event. event. So it's like, yeah, how, is that, how is that playing on you throughout the event? Yeah, I, you know, I always loved when people said, oh, I can do that event, and I would totally beat their time. Yeah, yeah. Let's put the other three days on top or, of that. Or the Times famous, 13. you know, endurance athlete. Well, it's not an endurance. There's no true endurance event. Yeah. I'm like, all right, work out for five days straight or yeah. four days straight, <laughs> and tell me that's not an endurance event. So, yeah. Um, Misfit Pro uh, perform wow, P10 performance moving. here, moving moving back and forth, changing up the, that's another thing. If you can have somebody that can take the front of the worm and you can alternate a little bit. We had this at the games a couple years ago where, uh, you know, I was in the front for the first round, got back on the row. We did a worm squat and row, very similar to this workout. It's kind of the, the, um, the idea the behind idea. this workout. And uh, I remember I finished that first round and I was like, Hewitt, you got to take round two at the front. And he's like, sure, sure thing. He didn't think anything about switching it. He got back and he's like, can you take the last round? And I look at Darren and I'm like, Darren, can you can you go to the front? And Darren looks at me like, hell no, man. Like, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry. I don't exactly. Speak Darren's like, uh, after it, he was, he was saying, uh, if you think it's going to be hard for you on the front, how hard do you think it's going to be for me on the front? So, yeah, that, the front of that worm, uh, it's, uh, it's a little daunting. You don't really think about it. I would rather be on the front, though, than call, to be honest. I just... Uh, give me the work instead of talking yep. in the middle of a workout. Prepare to the worm for their second set of 50 squats. They're over a minute behind Misfit's performance. And I think when, you know, to that specifically, just that communication within that, I feel like it's invaluable to have, you know, I like to call him like a floor general yeah. on the field that can have that awareness the entire time because a lot of people just go workout dumb. Yep. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And, it, and it's good to have someone out there that has – kind of a wherewithal of what's going on, the strategy, plan B, C, D, yeah. E, F. We had this happen at Waterpalooza, and, you know, Dre was, it was the very last workout. It ended with 30 uh, worm cleaning jerks. And, it, and Dre's defense, this was his first real competition with us, and he just lost it. And he's the one that's <laughs> supposed to be calling. And finally, at the end, Tasia's like, Dre, you just pick up the worm, I'll call. And Dre just hung on as long as he could. You know, like, Dre would drop it and then sit on his knees for a little bit, and we're all like, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? And so Tasia just uh, she went a little crazy on us and uh, and 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 finished it. It was just it was funny to look back on now that you know somebody pulled me aside and they're like, yeah, it looked like you got in Dre's ear and gave him a you know real good pep talk. And I was like, there was nothing productive said in that <laughs> that uh, that meeting we no, had no there. No pep so. about that. Nope, nope, not about that. So talk. it's surprising here you're seeing some of these teams break. You know, we saw P10 performance uh, break there a minute ago, and um, I you you'd think you'd see these teams finish. Uh, unbroken on this, but hey, got to do what you got to do. And well, well under the the pace to beat, I think here. The time to beat in the previous heat was unofficially 16:40 by CrossFit Yaz. It looked like, and this is that round two blues that we were talking yeah, about. Round about, two blues. Uh, I like round that. two blues. You're in the middle the, of it's it. It's the pain that you feel. Oh, they dropped it down. That was ah. Uh, that was that's that's, not the that's time a buzz kill to right drop there. that. Ah. Nope. Final round here, final round here, going to uh, P10 Performance taking on the workout here. We got uh, we got Cake, needs, uh, needs to push a little bit here. They can't have Team Prepared jump in and take some scores, take some points away from We Got Cake here. The We Got Cake is sitting really close to tied for third along with Team Finland, at least coming off the second round of the bike. Team Prepared is the four part of your screen. They're just trying to get through this second round of squats.
But Misfit 10 perform P10 performance, they're absolutely destroying this event. Destroying it. CrossFit Yaz's pace at this moment is right about the same time as prepared. So though Misfit performance is ahead of that pace, about 45 seconds, prepared, that's kind of when you need to have that understanding. Like, you should know what the time to beat is from the pre previous heat. Understanding is like, okay, we have three teams to beat in this heat and then that one time. Well, I think it's you have to have it out there so you know kind of where you are in the general realm of, of the event. Uh, I, I don't think you can let it completely dictate everything you have going on because once you get in there, you know, if, if things start to go wrong, you have to be able to adjust not to what the time is, but to what your team is going to do yep. to be able to keep them moving. Yeah, you have to be able to uh, kind of communicate within yourself. You need, like you said, you need that field general to kind of, hey, we're all right, guys. You know, we may not take this event, but let's let's try to get ahead of a team here and not lose too right. many points. You want to, it's a larger game. You know, I think over the years, everybody wanted to say, hey, I'm in my lane. This is, you know, I'm going to stay at my pace. But you, I mean, it's a sport. You right. have to be able to call audibles in the middle of a workout. Hey, right. all right, our plan was to do tens. Let's switch it up a little bit. Right, like we said earlier, you know, the plan was to go unbroken in sets. You know, keep the worm, I say unbroken, keep the worm on your shoulder. Um, but middle of the workout, I, I can see some people are hurting. We're uh, taking <laughs> right. a little bit longer to get to the worm. Let's break it. Let's let's ch put it into some manageable sets because you're you're playing mind games at this point too. You know, like you said, those round two blues. That's uh, <laughs> it's real though. But that's what we call the sticking point of the workout. You know, yeah. it's if you can get over that hump. It's you know, ten round workout. It's that round seven. If you can get past round seven, you're you're there for me personally. You know, everybody kind of has a different place there. But if you're over, you're two thirds of the way done with this workout, um, you can finish. I love, did you see the way that Misfit had that switch of that bike? Yep. Off and almost as, oh, within the revolution, hands go on the handlebars and they're right back into it's that, huge. right back on that bike. Huge. Yeah, I totally because you would have screwed what, that up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it takes to get that bike going again. And so if you ever see people ride that pedal and then right. kind of stop it completely, drives me nuts. <laughs> I hate that. Hate that. And so that's something, you know, you got to learn as a team. And some of these teams haven't worked together quite as much. And, you know, that's that's little things. Little things add up, and especially in a workout like this. You know, you're going to have a couple transitions on that bike. So every transition that you stop that momentum, you got to get that momentum going again. That's going to hurt you a little bit. Misfit Looking performance on to the last set of squats at the 13-minute mark. They are ahead of the pace by CrossFit Yaz. Their time to beat was 1640 unofficially. They got to the last set of squats right around three minutes. That was right, kind of that so time right pace that they have. So we're about a minute or so ahead of pace by CrossFit Yaz. Now what we're looking for is to see where Yaz fits in with the rest of these teams because team prepared pace-wise was tied up with Yaz in the previous round. Well, that's what we talked about. You know, most of these, if these top teams are all so close if you throw a team or two in there and that's how you're going to gain some separation over the weekend but that's what's so nerve-wracking about these nine or eight or ten team events you know you may be so much better than some of these other teams but you have three or four the teams there's no points you know that. like yep. yeah you so you, you have to like uh, you have to push, and that's what I think makes it a little bit more. I mean, we only had 14 teams. Well, at the we were games talking order. about that even here. Yeah. You have eight teams, so if you're last, you still get 71 60, yeah, points. Exactly. So that's a. I mean, you can if you get a cushion, yep. you can afford to just go. Oh, we're going to sit this one out yep. and get last, well, and you don't and, really lose a whole and lot. And see, that's what was nerve wracking at the games. You know, the, when there's only five teams, yeah, they cut it to zero, yep. yeah. zero yep. points. You get dead last, and five good teams. You get zero points. <laughs> we had a hundred and whatever point lead, but you're still in the back of your head. You're like, if we get fifth, we get hiccup. zero points. <laughs> zero points. Next place team gets a hundred points. It's crazy. So uh, it keeps it interesting. Keeps it, you know, with these smaller fields that we're seeing at some of these events. Um, I think it's good to kind of take some of that into account. Um, how to score some of these events. Look at that again. The way that the communication, these guys, I didn't see any hands go up, but they're breaking at the exact same time. They know the number and they can all handle that number. Yep. If it's 10 or whatever, I mean, look at that. They even broke that up into a short set. There no wasn't panic. even a bobble. Yep, no panic, just just calm. Go with that 15 minute mark, two minutes left. Again, time to beat 1640. And I don't think it's gonna be time to beat much longer as Misfits performance is finish, finishing up their last set of squats. About five reps remaining for Misfit. Nice. Yeah. No sprint across that finish no line need. on this one. No, no need. need. No, nope. I'm going to. I mean, probably don't want to, but nope. no need to. <laughs> probably can't, but, you know. So nearly 90 seconds All ahead. All these people hate me. 
of the pace set by CrossFit <laughs> Yaz. And now we're looking to see where that 1640 stacks up as we have some athletes like on it. the ground for Team Prepared. They do not look very happy at all. Rich, no, but I'm, I'm going to blame you I'm on sorry, this one, everybody. my friend. I'm sorry. Like I said, though. What's hey. your uh, Instagram handle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unfollow. Hey, uh, Unfollow. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Send uh, complaints to... <laughs> Yeah. So what's, what's Dre's phone number? Yeah, what's Dre's <laughs> email? <laughs> send this to Dre. Oh, I can send it to Tasia. One more minute remaining before we hit that 17-minute cap, but just 40 seconds remaining for the yeah, so next yes. best time. Yes, time might be uh, right there. See, we got Cake in the background trying to switch athletes up, just trying to hold on, staying ahead of Finland. Oh, come on, Phil. Utilizing the old push off the yeah, knees that's old there school. technique. Yeah, that's old, school. Uh, old Jason Kalipa <laughs> where he's got there. Okay, we're gonna see prepared, I think, finish here and might sneak in there in between. They're, they may actually have to run across the uh, finish line, which they don't want it, but that's a big point. Big oh, point. Oh, and that there. is close, so we'll have to see what the official wow. not times come out wow. to be. <laughs> As Mia and Amelia just hit the deck. That's this is actually helps uh, P10 right here because you got we got cakes still out there on the floor, not sure where they're at in the overall rank on this event. So that, like we said, this is where oh there oh, we go they we were got, close. Oh, be close. So we got cakes sneaking in just underneath that time cap. Probably at fourth. Could be if if that's where they did stand. Is no other team really got close to that. So unofficially, maybe in fourth place. But it is all misfit performance, taking heat number two and taking the event in dominating fashion. And they're kind of picking up where they left off yep. after the first five scored events. And Rich getting to do it, getting to test it, getting to program it, but then getting to see it yeah. on the competition floor. Yeah, that like, stack up yeah for I what think you like wanted. we said, um, you know, we want these want these events to push people. Uh, it's You want the top teams going from these events. And there, you do have such a a large, I guess, uh, talent pool. And so, you know, top to bottom. And so you want some of these events to have some separators. You want some events to, to push people. And so these are CrossFit Games style events, I feel like. So you should be able to do CrossFit <laughs> Games style events, right? And Could so, you go into the CrossFit Games? There's a common theme Amazing. there, you know, Amazing. what it is. how that works. So one event down, they still got three more to go. And the, the variety of events that they have coming up, all aspects of tests, it just from top to bottom, Movements, weights, gymnastic skills, communication. Variance. So yeah. variance, you know? Weird. Weird. Weird how that all stacks up together. But Mr. Performance is looking so strong. Solid. And they're down with Nikki Brazier after that event win. So you guys were able to pull ahead early and stay ahead the whole time, which was great. But how did you approach the bike, decide when to switch it up and who was going to go? Yeah, we've practiced uh, 10 and 15 second pretty high intense intervals. So we just stuck to that game plan and turn out and work for us. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Now, you guys did a little bit of a walk across the finish line. I'm assuming that was because your legs weren't really feeling it much more after all of that work. Um, any choice words for Mr. Rich Froning, who programmed this and all the other team workouts here? Uh, my, my legs are flooded. How about you? Thanks for making the cleans power clean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah agreed. Saving the legs a little. Um, it's really a battle at this point. The top teams are really tough. The field is deep this year. I mean, what is your strategy for the final events here of the weekend to make sure that you can get your way to the top? We'll just strategize together, go out there, stay in our own lane, execute our game plan, and that'll get us where we need to be. There you go. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks Thank so much. Miss it performance. What a way to start off day number three. Looking pretty strong. Uh, you can hear Travis, but he was thanking hear. you for making the, uh, the cleans put into power cleans yeah, during the team Yeah, yeah, we made that adjustment after the 30-pound wall ball last night. I, I talked to the guys uh, that organized the event. I was like, hey, let's give them the option to uh, clean it anyway. You know, if they <laughs> want to squat clean it. See, so, I call that stern but fair. Yeah, yeah stern I feel but like fair. it's still a clean, you know, and, uh, yeah, after looking at that last night, I was like, let's make that a, you know, 20-pound wall ball, I feel like, for me, gets a little bit more of the shoulders. 30, uh, a little bit more explosion, you got to use the legs. So I was like, all right, let's, uh, let's, hey, you can't, you can't be stuck in your ways and say, hey, this, this needs to stay this way. Um, you got to be able to adapt on the fly. And so uh, I credit these, these guys here on, on being able to do that. I'll I tell you what. 
with Misfit not just showing their capabilities, but now having the confidence that they are just smashing events, they're going to be really hard to beat. Yep. I don't think anyone is going to try to tussle with them <laughs> right now. Yeah. They are on a roll. That train is moving. It looks very good right now. Well, the athletes might not be thanking you, but we will thank you thank for you. joining thank us you. Thank you. yet yep. again during out the sure weekend. Was. Rich will be us the rest of the weekend here, giving us some good commentary on the inside scoop of these team events. But coming up next will be the individual's turn to take on day number three. So for Rich Froning, Bill Grundler, and Nikki Brazier, I'm Chase Singer, and we'll see you guys for the individual competition coming up next.
Individual women underway, one heat down, two heats left to go. Bill Grundler, Chase Ingram, as we just saw Shahad Budebs destroy <laughs> that first heat. I mean, we both said right off the bat, you're like, good luck with that pace. Right, yeah. <laughs> she was able to hold on to it. But this is the third day of competition here at the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. We've had two days already and four scored events on the individual side. And currently sitting on top of the leaderboard is Sarah Sigmund's daughter after her 112 kilo clean and jerk last night. That put her up into first place. But Sam Briggs, who was in first, got nearly, I think, tied for last. Tied for last. Still in second place. The fact that she was able to do that is pretty impressive. And again, that's kind of playing to how the point totals are working or how the, how the scoring system is working. But again, look at that distance between Sarah and Sam. It's only four points, a, a small seven points between Sam and Corinne Frey. So we have our three women that are starting to move themselves away from the pack. You know, Gab, uh, Gabby Miguel is right below that, 309. So we still have a, a decent spread that's building up there. But this is, now we're kind of getting into the crossfit -y type of stuff. And this is going to start to separate some people. We, we saw what Shahad did, beautiful execution of that event. This is going to be a fun one to watch. I mean, I like the event. I'm not the best at muscle-ups, but I really do like this event. Well, let's talk to the event in particular of what these athletes have in store today. And what that's going to be is it's 10 rounds, five muscle-ups, and a 10-meter handstand walk. You're like, oh, that's not too bad. However, Wait just a second. <laughs> however, these uh, movements, they have to be unbroken. Have to be unbroken. So your set of five ring muscle-ups has to be unbroken. Your handstand walk has to be unbroken. If at any time, let's say you fail on your fourth one, of your muscle-ups, then all of those muscle-ups don't count in that round. You have to redo that whole round. Same thing with the handstand walk. If you come down within that 10 meters, wherever that is, whether it's the beginning or the end, you have to restart that one all over again. So the key here is know thyself. <laughs> um, if you know that you aren't very good at either of these, then take the time to make the rest. Don't worry about trying to finish. It's about knowing and not having to redo any of the reps. Now, this is an event that got announced earlier prior to these athletes coming to Dubai. So know thyself. You, I hope you practice this event because this is oh, one yeah. that needs to figure out your own strategy and your own abilities. So we've had one heat already go. Shahad Budev is the only female athlete to finish at 1042. Of the athletes in this one, it's a couple you're probably looking at that should fare well for this particular event. Well, again, you, you want to look at your more gymnastic-y athletes for sure. Uh, I always like to watch, okay, who's going to attack right off the gate? And who's really going to push that right away? Because they got to be excited to do this. And you'll see the other one's kind of, I'm just going <laughs> to lightly jog to the rig to start this one off. And a lot of it's really hard to tell how this event is going to unfold until you get to about five or six rounds in, because everybody's going to look great for five. Well, let's just look at the totality of the whole thing. It's 50 muscle-ups. I, I think the, you know, CrossFit has always been, oh, well, 30 muscle-ups, 30 muscle-ups for time. We saw that at the games. That's kind of one of those gold standards. You bump it up to 50, that's a whole nother realm. So, yes, everyone now can get to 30. That's not a big deal unbroken set to five that throws a little bit of a wrench but 50 is a wrench in the system first to the rig is laura clifton after round number one now in terms of pacing from the previous heat shahad Budez was done in her first round about 45 seconds starting her last one and relative to say the style we see all these athletes catching in the deep right. harsh portion of that dip Shahad was one of those athletes that could do a really high receiving position to where she just had to barely lock out her elbows. And I'm going to call that the Sam Briggs style because she was the one that was doing that. And that's actually where they brought in the you must push through a dip at some level so you can't come up to it just a straight locked arm. Um, I really didn't think that she was going to be able to hold that pace and that movement the whole time. I really didn't see her have that much deeper of a dip at all. That was an impressive setup and, a, and a, a great way to present to everyone, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. Lifting back to the ring, starting her third set, just underneath that two minute pace. So right around at 56 to 57 seconds around. As Manon Agonies is sitting side by side. So those are your two athletes that are really kind of head to head. But when you're thinking about pacing, if your time to beat's 10.42, you 
That's really just over a minute in four seconds per round. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I don't want to speak too soon, but that they're almost nearly off they're pace already, off already pace. after the third round. They're already off pace. And, and again, I think that this event, it will allow the gymnasts to showcase their abilities, but I don't think you're going to have everybody just blowing doors on this one and making it look silly. Um, I think that at least at least in these the, the earlier rounds, when we get to the top rounds, I think you'll see many more athletes being able to finish it. But this just showcases, because I think the, the average is going to be, oh, you know what, that's an EMOM. Eh, not so much, not so much. Manon Agonies is done with her third round, starting her fourth. Her shoes are untied. I don't know how that's going to fare over the next seven rounds. Well, come on now. We're not jumping rope. We don't need your shoes for anything. I, I myself never tie my shoes, <laughs> so I, I right on may know. Way to go. I like it. Hanging on to that unbroken set. Again, it's five unbroken muscle-ups. Fall by a 10-meter handstand walk. Now, the standard here is that the feet must start behind the line when they kick up for their handstand walk, and the hands must go past the line at right. the end of the 10 meters. So if you're used to the kind of hands behind the line standard, that's not what the standard is here in, at this competition. And I mean, whatever the reason is for that, there's a lot of handstand walking that's happening. So it's not like we're, you know what, you really don't have a handstand walk. No, you're doing all kinds of handstand walks, it's fine. Four minutes in. Manon Agonese is still your leader. This is the second heat of three. And we're talking about keeping pace. If it was all even pacing, you'd have to average a minute. You'd have to average a 104 pace to keep track with Shahad Budeb's 1042. And again, I don't want to say it's over already in the fourth round, but there is going to be some tail Whoa. off. And All it right. might have started early on as, you know, she's in her fifth round of muscle-ups and struggled to get through those five reps. Well, okay, in her head now, she has to be thinking, okay, let us let me pull the reins back just a little bit. I know that that was close on that last one. So, okay, get through the handstand walk. I don't see any kind of struggling for her there. But she has to make sure that she doesn't jump up on those rings too soon. The l worst thing you want to do is fail on number, well, you don't want to fail on number five. Because none of those count. Things. Fail ever, but well, that's true. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like that's the worst place to fail if you're going to fail is on that last one. So take your time, take your rest, make sure you can do that. Make sure you can make all of those count. It, it, and that's a tough thing to do. As Carol Castellani, in the lane next to Manon Agonese in lane five, sitting in second, and a lot can happen once that fatigue starts to settle in because. You can be blowing everybody's doors off in four rounds, but if you have to start taking 15-second pauses yep. in your next six, yep. I mean, you've just lost nearly two minutes. Well, on the time. you got to look at what everyone else is doing. If you're ahead of everyone and no one's making up time, then you might be all right, at least in this round. And I think this is definitely one of the those Whoa. events. Whoa. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> one of those events where watching other people it's probably the worst <laughs> idea you should do and we had a lot of discussion yesterday about what's the difference between you know the com competition setting of staying staying in your lane and doing quote unquote the best you can or watching the field and using the field to kind of dictate your pace calling that audible right all on the floor for this particular event stay in your lane well because the, this is all about you all about you and your own personal fatigue and, it, and your own personal pace and that's what we were saying earlier about know thyself it doesn't matter that me and you are in a race because if i am going to shut down on on muscle ups guess what gymnastic movements are a classic for this you have a very short window of when things start to go bad and once they go bad you have no choice but to stand there and look at the rings or stand there at the line and wait for the handstands to come back so Know thyself. If someone gets ahead of you, okay, bye. I, I, I know where I need to be so that I can make these work. And I think we're starting to see the tide turn as Manon Agonese, who came out to a very early lead. Carol yep. Castellani is basically up in a tie. Now it's a matter of who's going to get up onto the rings first. Manon Agonese on the left, Castellani on the right. And after that last set where 
Agnes nearly missed her fifth rep. You know, what? Uh, Castellani, her, look at those muscle ups. Really smooth. Even though she's got, she's down into that deep dip position, she's able to keep those rings nice and tight. Agony's on the left is struggling to lock out that last dip, and she is not ah, going to get it. And honestly, you get one of those in the middle of the event, it, it's basically a death sentence. You're that, <laughs> well, and it messes with your head, too, because not you now, you wasted all of that time. I don't want to say you wasted. The t that amount of time was wasted. Now you got recovery time. Now you have mental issue that you have to think, okay, do I have the, did I lose all my confidence? Am I really going to do it? Now you're going to hang back even longer. Or you're worried and now you're going to jump in too soon and miss another one. Then it's like, well, boom. Well, I just threw a grenade in there. And to that point is that recovery time Huge. on an event like this, I don't think is actually possible. Because, no. you know, these are two movements that, you know, we like to call failure movements. Yeah. Is that once they're gone, they don't they're, come back. No. Especially ring muscle-ups, especially five unbroken ring muscle-ups. You might be able to recover to get another muscle-up. Not for five but unbroken, But I don't though. see the ability within this tight time cap to recover to get five in a row no. after missing a round. Unless you're just going to take take your L and the, the rest of the workout. <laughs> and you, you know, you're going to have to rest a, a minute or more. Oh, or, well, you have to think about the amount of time. Because it's, it's getting to five unbroken. Let, that's, that's the trick. Let's look at what Manon had to do into that set. So she rested before she hit that set when she stepped up to the rings uh, with Castellani at the same time. Did the set, failed the set, had to recover the set. Castellani, now they're going up at about the same time. That's a full round that she lost. For one rep. For one rep. Oh, man, that's, that just And sucks. that's that if hurts, she gets this set that. of five. So Manon Agonis is still trying to navigate oh, no. that unbroken set. And so she'll get it. But, Bill, as you said, she had a rest over a minute and a half. The time to beat was set in heat number one. This is heat two of three for individual women's event number five. Was set by Shahad Budebs at 10 minutes and 42 seconds. And we are nearing that time here in these athletes' eighth round. I tell you, Carol looks great. You can see her there in the in the green shorts, legs nice and straight. That's saving a lot of energy. And Manoa hasn't had any time, hadn't, hadn't had any problems with her handstand walks, but she's kind of all over the place. You can tell she's fatiguing in all areas, not just in the, the muscle ups you need for the muscle up, the muscles you need for the muscle up, but kind of everything is starting to break down. Two minutes to go before we reach that 12 minute time cap. Your two athletes in the lead have a round difference between them as Carol Castellani has moved ahead of Manon Agonis. Castellani is in round number nine. So she is a full round of the rest of the field. But with 90 seconds remaining, she's probably looking at maybe getting just this round in because it's going to be a tall order to hit these five in a row, walk the 10 meters, and get another five reps in a row with only a minute and 15 seconds to do it. But I really, I really am impressed with the way Castellani is uh, attacking the round based on her abilities. She doesn't look like she's being rushed. Ooh, ooh. Not expecting that. Well, now here's the thing. That opens the door back right. open for Manon Agonies because if she can at least get the handstand, handstand walk, walk done right back within the there. next 50 seconds, barring that she gets her five reps, which I don't think she did. She failed her last rep. So Castellani is still around ahead. Manon failed her fifth rep. So the door was swung back open, and that's how fast these ways can swing. Well, and we've seen that across the board and any sort of muscle-up uh, uh, event, whether it's been in the games or not. You remember the, like, the muscle-up biathlon, same type of thing between uh, uh, Camille LeBlanc-Bazinet um, and some of, the other, uh, some of the other ladies on the field. Julie Fouché, same issue. You're in, you're out. Sometimes you're back in, sometimes you're way back out again. And that was another failed attempt. Ten seconds remaining. You're not going to get five reps in ten seconds, but it depends on how the reps will be counted towards the time cap for these athletes. If they're going to get the number of muscle-ups that they finished within that time frame. But Shahab Boudab's at 10.42. Well, that's how you do it so far. 
That time is still going to stand after two heats. We'll still have one heat to go. But we saw kind of a tale of two heats with Shahad coming out hot. We, we didn't I think was she was going to be able that. to hold on to that. We, yeah. We've really never seen her compete with this style of event. You know, five mu unbroken muscle-ups with the speed that she was going. And she rode the line. I couldn't do that. She rode the line. And you know what? That was, again, know yourself. She knows exactly what her strengths are and the tempo. And we didn't see it break. Or when it started to get a little iffy was in the last round. And that's exactly when you want that to happen. And, and her technique. Beautiful. A, a good chip in her favor oh, again. Yeah. Her ability to catch high on the rings with just that little bit of a lockout. Yep. Whereas that full depth catch position that a lot of these athletes that have to do. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> to get that done. So it's kind of neat to see is that now the technique right. for, def for a lot of these athletes is coming into play. Not just their ability to do the reps. Because they all have the ability. But with this style of unbroken, it, it changes the game. One athlete that has an ability to do that that we've seen in before is Sam Briggs. Sam Briggs, and currently sitting in second place. Not far at all behind Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Um, and with that, an event that plays to her favor. Now, the muscle up, yes. The handstand, the handstand walk might be a little bit of an issue. She's obviously good at handstand walks now. Um, but I think that she's going to be so fast on the muscle ups that she has, she'll have plenty of time to relax herself, get herself ready to go for the handstand walk. Well, so those are your top 10 athletes after two days of competition and four scored events as we move into the, the bulk of the weekend here at the Dubai CrossFit Championship, starting day number three off with event number five. Ten rounds, five muscle-ups, 10-meter handstand walk. That unbroken piece is the game changer for both movements. Uh, you're right, and it's, it's where all these athletes can do these reps unbroken but again we're talking 50 muscle ups and we're talking 100 meters of handstand walk so if you are pushing the limit and you're pushing your tempo i think everyone is going to be fine around that 30 and we saw that even in the last heat 30 is easy everyone can handle it but how hard are you pushing it and the range that you have to decide that like maybe i need to slow it down just a touch is with literally within one muscle up so you have to know know thyself know where you are so know when to rest so you can make those unbroken so the top of the leaderboard you got sarah sigma's daughter sam briggs karn frey separated by just about 11 points 20 points ahead of but it's really the next seven athletes <laughs> are all within 10 points yeah. one of those athletes being jamie green who has amazing endurance when it comes to muscle up events so look for jamie green to possibly make a move to start off day number three in this event well and she needs this i mean we we currently we really aren't used to seeing her in this position ninth place coming into this event uh 285 points that's not something that we would normally be thinking that jamie green that that's where she would be i think she's she definitely is going to do well in this event uh, she just has to be very confident and aware of those skills so that she doesn't over push and then fail because this is, you're right This is a very all-or-nothing event and she needs it all athletes wasting no time with the first round Although it's a stark different of what happens before but on Whoa. cue Jamie Green Whoa. has moved into a quick first place position right around the same pace we saw your event leader Shahad Budebs come out in now, one of the things we saw, Jamie, was her jogging back. A couple things with that. Yes, that's going to get you to the rings faster, but why jog back if you aren't going to get right back on the rings? Take the rest if you're going to walk so that when you get back to the rings, you can get going. Round one done. Nine more to go. Five unbroken ring muscle-ups, followed by 10 meters of unbroken handstand walks. Jamie Green in the four part of your screen in the purple and green. Slight lead. Second place position. Looks like Karn Frey sitting in lane number four. So you have Green and Frey, your two leaders. It looks like Sigmund's daughter and Briggs. So 
Left to right, Green leading Frey. Frey's in the purple and white. Sigmund's daughter just to the right of Frey, coming off at the same time in the orange and gray. So J Green, who came out fast in round one, is quickly within a round and got reeled back in. As Sigmund, da Sigmund daughter and Karn Frey are up just about five seconds behind Jamie Green's pace. And this is always interesting when you are shoulder to shoulder with an athlete in a gymnastic style event like this, because again, how do you decide to push? And just like you were saying, you, th this is a, sp a specific event. Yeah, you want to know what you need to do and where people are and how you want to place, you know, relative, but you got to put the blinders on because if, it, if someone forces you to the rings too fast, that could be detrimental. One thing I'm curious to see is the game that Briggs is currently playing. We know yeah. she doesn't have the best handstand walk, but she might have some of the best muscle-ups and yeah. the best endurance with muscle-ups. She just looks completely relaxed. I mean, you see her back there right behind Sarah's leg with the sunglasses on, trying to, you know, just working through those muscle-ups. She just looks relaxed. She doesn't even look she doesn't even look worried at this, at this point. But again, a lot of reps to be had. We saw when, when did the time. event take place in the last seat? Six, yep. seven rounds in? And that's about, that's around the eight minute mark. Or past that traditional kind of volume of 30 to 35 ring muscle-ups. Like you said, will. 50 is a very unique <laughs> number to yeah. do in an event. We've seen 45 at the most ever program within at least a games event, 40 in the open this year but green sigmund daughter and frey are your top three and if you look on the right side green hustling too but sigmund's daughter has broken the tie she is currently in with car and frey trying to reel back in jamie green as they're done with four rounds moving through round number five impressive work by sarah i like the way that she came off the rings slowly walked to the floor Right when she got to the line, boom, right back on it. So I like that she's using that transition time as her rest. You don't see her rushing back. It's okay. And you, even though Corinne Frey is starting to move ahead of her, if Frey doesn't get on the rings and start to execute right away, what's the point? You're not ahead of me. Not, I mean, maybe you're physically ahead of me. Yeah. But you really aren't winning anything by getting to the rings and not executing immediately. Clock on the left upper part of your screen, as well as the time to beat, is 10.42, set by Shahab Budevs in heat number one. As Jamie Green is still holding on to that lead that she has. Now, they are below the pace set by Shahab. However, the time exponentially starts to increase as they... <laughs> They're going to be forced to rest because of that unbroken element of this event. Frey has actually moved ahead of Sigma's daughter, so a stark change what we saw between rounds four and rounds number five. So Frey has moved back up with Sarah Sigma's daughter. Well, and I really like that Frey did, did exactly what we were talking about. When she went back to the rings, chalked up, but she was on the rings first before Sarah was. So Sarah took a little bit more time, just a little bit more uh, rest. But then she was, uh, Corinne took a little bit more of rest before she went into the handstand walk. You saw her kind of shaking her arms out. So you have to think like, where is the, the, the hitching point, the catching point for Corinne? Is it the muscle ups or is it the handstand walk? Because it looked like she rested more in preparation for the handstand walk than the ring. Now the these two athletes are still chasing Jamie Green. Jamie Green's all the way over in lane number one. She is extending her lead on the field as she is already halfway through her handstand walk. As Sigmund's daughter and Karn Frey just got onto the rings, Sam Briggs has joined them. So Sam Briggs is a few reps behind. She's just on the edge of the right side of your screen. But as they're walking to get set for their handstand walk, green in the left back corner of your screen is back to the rig. So Jamie uh -huh. Green, who looked like she was slowing down just a little bit with Car and Frey and Sigma's daughter chasing her down between rounds three and rounds four. After round six and going into seven, she has extended that lead. As you can see, Frey and Sigma's daughter walking back to the rig. But Briggs behind them is slowly moving up. And I think that's going to be the time rest between yep. this net rounds for the muscle-ups. And Green looks like she is speeding up. 
yeah, at she, this point in time. She, she's attacking. And I think for her, it's like, again, if it's a skill that you have, if it's a confidence uh, element that you have, and you know you need the points because you're sitting in ninth, you got to push it. And hopefully, I mean, I think probably in her mind, she has the ability. So let me push the pace and see if I can pull some of these people along to make them blow up. What I think is interesting to, about these two women that's on the screen, their places have almost been identical up to this point in the competition. Sarah's had a third, a sixth, a tenth, and a first. Corinne is a third, a fifth, a thirteenth, and a third. So where they did great, they both did great. Where they didn't do as well, they're at the same. And then we're literally rep for <laughs> rep, step for step, all the way through this. Pretty impressive. It's fun to watch these two, these two women go at it. Frayne Sigmund's daughter still trying to keep pace with Jamie Green, who's on the left side of your screen. Your heat leader. In terms of pace, wow, she looks good. trying to keep up, I think she is keeping that pace between her and Shahad Budeb's time of 10.42 as we are just past the eight minute mark. Now we haven't seen very, uh, no other athletes have finished this event ne alone get past round eight. And Green is jogging back to the rings. And I think one of those is that navigating the middle part maybe she kind of let off the gas a little bit mm -hmm. unsure now going based off how she feels she is pushing the pace and, I, and that's great plus again it's you know we talk how important confidence is for an athlete you can ride confidence and do some really incredible things if you are fired up and you know that you're doing spectacular so ride that and i think that jamie is just doing just that you see that big pop there in the background big pop of the hips uh, now, we did have a little separation where Sarah is starting to push the pedal a little bit more. She got down there all by herself. Jamie Green is just past the nine minute mark. Whoa. And 10 meters are done. 10 rounds wow. are done, and Jamie Green decimates the time to beat by nearly a minute and a half. And she needed that, and what a way to put your foot down and go, oh, excuse me, I'm going to get myself back up on the leaderboard. She got faster as the event wore on. She was only yeah. done in about 55 seconds in round one. That yeah. was not the pace that she was holding coming in, so she had moved up towards that minute pace, and like I said, built up that confidence to come in. So it looks like Sigmund's daughter, she should be on her last handstand walk as she has moved well ahead of Karin Frey. And this is exactly what Sigmund's daughter needs to do to hold on to that top spot. Two athletes trying to chase her down. One being Sam Briggs, the other being Karin Frey. So Sigmund's daughter should see herself in that first place position even more solid with the two athletes chasing her down. And you know, we talked about Sarah yesterday in the, the competitive fight that you need to have. I think like that was a that was a great event for her because it's a very technical gymnastic -y type of an, of an event and I think that she was aggressive in her attack in this particular event. That was awesome. So Sigmund's daughter Green and Frey all under the time to beat. There's Sam Briggs. So your top four in heat two should be your top four in event number five. Jamie, Gr uh, Jamie Green congratulating Briggs on finishing. Now the hard thing for Jamie Green is, yeah, she got first, but all the other ladies that she had to jump were second, third, and fourth. Well, the big thing too is that she was also in eight, so that does put her It'll a little her bit up, closer sure. up to that podium position. But yes, the top she was athletes. For a little help. She's trying to beat. <laughs> she's hoping for a, a few people in between the two, as we have just one minute remaining before we hit that 12-minute cap. So Shahad Budeb's time from heat number one. Great should job. stand somewhere in a top five, top oh, six time great. overall in this event. Forty seconds remaining. Pacelli moving back to the rings. And as we're about thirty seconds to go, it's about when athletes are just trying to get as many muscle-ups as they can in if they don't have the ability to get five in a row. Julie Hugo moving up her 10 meters. She'll have another round to go with 10 seconds remaining. 
So it took two heats to get one finisher. And in heat number three, he's why these are your top athletes after four scored events. And it was all Jamie Green from start to finish, but a great finish to start the day for Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Yeah, wow. This was an event that takes a lot of pacing, a lot of self-understanding of what your abilities are, different from the rest of the field. So Jamie Green starting off day number three exactly how you would want to, sitting well outside the top three. This was one of the events, I mean, we said this looked good on paper for her, but it was great on the floor for her. So Jamie Green, event win to start day number three down with Nikki Brazier. Uh, Jamie, we've been talking a lot about confidence and how important that is for an athlete. You seemed to get faster as this progressed. I mean, how are you feeling toward the end and how did that affect your tempo there? Well, it's a bit like you start off the workout, everyone's got a bit of nerves and you don't want to like rush in and muck something up early. So you sort of just start off at a comfortable pace and then if you can build from there, yeah, your confidence grows and like, if your brain's there, your body's going to follow. Right. So yeah. now, last year at this competition, it was a real race between you and Sam Briggs toward the end. I mean, just a couple a couple points separated you at the final. Did that affect you going into this, or did you change your training knowing how deep the field was last year? Um, I think it's just motivation. Like, you know what the competition's going to be like. As you're training, you're thinking, I don't want to get out there and you know miss out on that push. So you want to keep up with those girls, and you know they're training hard, especially like when Sam comes to our house and you see her every day. Um, you're like, I want to keep up with their standards, so you push yourself. It's awesome. What would it mean for you qualifying for the season this early on? Um, it'd be awesome because, like, we're me and Elliot are getting married in January, so I'm going to take a bit of time off there. So it'd be so nice to know we're already qualified, and then when we come back in, it's just like start training for the games and go for it. Great job so far. Thank you so much. Congratulations to Jamie Green. That's the way to start off day number three when yeah. you have three scored events sitting where she was. But I thought it was unique to see how tight this race was last year between Green, Briggs, Sarah, and Karen. Yeah. And those here are we your are top again. four <laughs> in this event. You know, and there were two women that really needed this particular event. I think with Jamie Green needed this event. She did exactly what she needed to do. Uh, but again, we've been talking about Sarah. And this was something that Sarah had to have a good event as well. This I wouldn't say that this is a wheelhouse for her, but man, she looked good and she attacked it very competitively. I think that was a huge, uh, a huge placing for her. And I think a lot of events like this, when that unbroken element seems to be that center point of the movement, there's a lot of stress and pressure oh, yeah. that comes on to that because we can work hard, we can fail some reps and just push harder. If you fail a rep here, you get pretty punished. much the end of the event. So yep. I'm sure that's kind of a breath of fresh air for Sigmund's daughter to get through that and get through that so well coming off her event win last night. That'll do it for the individual women for event number five. The individual men are coming up next to tackle this unbroken set for event number five. For Bill Grunther, Nikki Brazier, live event continues here at the Dubai CrossFit Championship. Some days are tougher than others. But we see each other, what no one else can. We sweat together. We endure together. Every one of us, redefining ourselves. We achieve together. All of us.
Individual women are done. It is the men's turn to take the field for event number five. Ten rounds, five ring muscle-ups, 10-meter handstand walk. Anybody is like, oh, that sounds like a cool workout. It's but super cool. That unbroken element changes the game. It's not super cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember, it's 50 ring muscle-ups. It's 100 meters of handstand walking. And, you know, we have said this already a handful of times with the ladies. Everyone can do 30 muscle-ups. We've seen it in the games as an event. We've seen it as kind of the gold standard, but 50 is an entirely different deal. Landis Simons for heat number one, men's individual event number five. A couple athletes to look for are your Greek representative, Lefteris Theophanidis and Alex Katoulis. I want to give Badur Al-Nuri his credit. He actually won men's event number three, which was that 1,000-meter bike average time. Right. He won that event. Yeah. We thought Roman did. We went back and looked at the leaderboard. Al Nuri won event number three. Way to go, Badar. Now, that was one of those events that was it's hard to tell because you didn't know how to race anybody. You didn't, weren't really sure what everyone's scores were and what everyone's times were. But amazing job. It was a fantastic race. Heat one is off, and they'll start with five unbroken ring muscle-ups. If event 5A was the fastest sprint to the rings, it would go to Spencer Pancheck <laughs> over in lane number seven. <laughs> and now we'll probably see a much more aggressive pace set on the men's side than we did on the women's side, just in terms of that overall capacity for ring muscle-ups. Yeah, I mean, it, you. you Classically, it's a it's a pulling movement, and the men are going to have more strength there. Um, look where Scott Panchik is, or I'm sorry, Spencer Panchik is right off the gate, sprinting on his hands. Now, granted, this is round one, so I hope he knows where he is. That is a fast push. Now, for the men, I've talked to a lot of the guys that have, that have dealt with this event before, and he's got that nice high catch. Wow. Um, I think the classic look on this is going to be an Imam, and I think you can do that for the majority of the athletes relatively easily. It gives you time to get down there, get back. Um, but wow, these guys are uh, attacking these first handful of rounds. Spencer Pancheck trying to hold off Alex Katulis on his second round. Katulis just close behind him at the upper part of your screen. And, and it's kind of one of those things that if everybody's great at ring muscle-ups, everybody's great at upside down, even under fatigue, those transitions in between become the third element of this event. Yeah, and it, it's it's being very aware of where everyone is. Um, being aware, yes, you want to move because you want to cut that time down, but you need to make sure that you're able to recover at the same time. And again, it, we're only a two minutes into this event. This is a 10 minute time cap, yes, but we also know that where things start to go south is it like round six? And that's going to be around that five-minute mark. And the other thing, too, is we, we said this earlier during the women's competition, is that they got this event released well before a lot of these athletes They've all done came it. here. The one you think they would practice the most is the one where they have the most to lose if something goes wrong. Right. <laughs> Plus, it just seems way more fun than just doing a bunch of heavy squat cleans for, <laughs> for an event. <laughs> Katulis and Pancheck kick up at nearly the exact same time. So you have Spencer Pancheck on the left, Katulis on the right. He's actually a little bit quicker on the handstand walk than Pancheck is. Man, that attack back to the those transitions in between for Spencer is so fast. Alex Katulis, lane number two, left side of your screen. Spencer Pancheck, three oh. lanes over in the light blue shirt. And now the transition for Katulis jogging to the start line for the 10 meters seems to be the current difference between these two athletes. You know, Chase, you talked about the speed of Alex Katulis on the movement, but the handstand walk and on the muscle up, same thing. Even though they're both on the ring at the same time, Katulis was able to get through those muscle ups quicker. 
Um, even though the transition isn't as fast, the movement is actually much faster than, than Spencer. And man, he's holding, he's holding a very aggressive pace already, you know, being this is only heat one. And it's only halfway through the event. That's five rounds. A lot can happen in the next five if this pace lends itself to be a little bit too aggressive because of the unbroken component that is mandatory for both of these movements. But again, if you know you have the skills, you can push it. I mean, we've talked to some of the other athletes. We know that we have top athletes that have done this event in 730-ish. Um, I've had some of the athletes even in my gym that are great athletes, not nearly this this realm of athlete, but are good at the two events and you know finishing just at 10 minutes. So it, it, the push is, if you have it, man, go for it. And Catullus just looks spectacular. We already saw what Spencer Pancheck was doing. He already has started to slow down, not a little bit, but drastically. He was always running, now he's walking, shaking his arms out. We're at the halfway and point. And again, that's the halfway point. Six rounds done, but Pancheck, this is the first time we've seen a chink in that pacing strategy. Now walking to the rig, gathering chalk. Catullus is done with his seventh set of unbroken. So Catullus, now the one thing we saw in terms of pacing, we've seen coming out too fast, blowing up. We've yep. seen a nice conservative pace that we saw from, say, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. And we also saw the opposite where Jamie Green was conservative early, got the confidence built up and actually sped up her last three rounds. Which is crazy that, you know, she's saying that she was going slow because she was really <laughs> fast. <laughs> Spencer Pancheck starting to take a lot more breaks, but it is Alex Katulis in lane number two working into his eighth round. So seven rounds completed as this will be the start of his eighth round and still looking spectacular. My gosh. First time we've seen him take a rest. A rest First time. A breath. <laughs> Now, we said how important it is to really understand and know your abilities, know your limits. Um, I think like with Spencer Panchik, one of the things, one of the pieces that he might be lacking, even though his abilities are real incredible, is that he's, he's still young. And I think he's he hasn't figured out those exact limits of where to go he he kind of goes all out and then there's a shutdown we saw that you know when he was working on the bike kind of played the game a little bit but i don't think he understood where he should have been playing what limits he should have had and i think that's the same thing that's happening here and we had two athletes as the start it was spencer panchik and alex katulis you can see panchik in the back resting in that squat position as katulis now laps Lapping. him on the field and if Pancheck isn't careful, he's going to open up the door for a lot more athletes to move ahead of him other than Alex Katulis. Well, what he really needs to do is ensure that he doesn't miss any of those muscle-ups. I mean, he, he's getting, I think he's getting close to that fatigue level, so he has to really know where he is. Because if he jumps up there and he misses one set of muscle-up, that's going to be a minute, guaranteed a minute of time lost. Just past the seven-minute mark, it is a 10-minute capped event. It's not going to be needed for Katulis if he navigates through his final set of five ring muscle-ups. Talking about how good he's looked so far. As we are just at the seven and a half minute mark, so Catullus is just gonna need a 10 meter unbroken handstand walk to set the time to beat for men's individual event number five. Hands must go past the finish wow. line. Wow. And Catullus unofficial at seven minutes and 49 seconds. That was impressive. Now the big question goes to have the other athletes in the field caught up to Spencer Pancheck. Other athletes on their handstand walks, finishing up their ninth round. As 
As we're at the 8.30 mark. Now one to look for might be over in lane number one, but Theophanitis and your two Greek athletes coming in will be one and two in this event. Two athletes we were looking at to do well so far, and those a minute behind what Catullus did, Theophanitis gets second in this heat of right around eight minutes in 49 seconds. And with Lethris, what I liked about him is he had a nice, consistent pace all the way through. He didn't get concerned that these other guys were in the front. He kept to his tempo all the way through and just kind of kept clicking away all the way. Lane number five, Mahmoud Shalan done. So third in this event, and this is where we're seeing is what are these athletes Oh geez. What time they're making up on Pancheck ah. and he broke for the first time on muscle ups and with just 30 seconds to go, that, that's gonna be it for Spencer Pancheck. And it's seeing in lane number nine that Sam Stewart done with his ninth round. As we are just 15 seconds left in this 10 minute capped event for the individual men. Wow. Oh, oh, a second fail. Ah. Man, I guess you got to go for it, but ah, my goodness. So Alex Katulis will take heat number one. And at a time of 749, I wouldn't be surprised like the same thing we saw on the women's side with Shahad Budeb's time. This might be one that should stand up over the next two heats. Well, I mean, I don't want to say that this is a niche event, but it's all gymnastic. It's still very CrossFit-y. Uh, I, I like what it is, but yeah, if you have someone like Alex that has the ability and the skill, we may exactly see, just like we saw with uh, Shahad earlier. And, and the full test that we're having is that, you know, we, we're testing CrossFit across all the general broad domains, but as we get into more of those classic events, those triplets, when you're mixing in modalities and that this is one of those niche events and it's good to test those things individually right we got those collective things coming up but Alex Catullus great event for heat number one we'll see how that how that time stands or at least for the next two heats as this is just heat one of three well I really think that's a great time to put in front of everyone like you said we we've seen some of the top times that people have played with uh, but that's gonna be a great set and a great rabbit a great pace for the other athletes to follow. That pace is set, seven minutes and 49 seconds. Coming into day number three, Roman Karenikov sits on top of the leaderboard, 349. 16 points behind him is Brent Fikowski. And then you have Lazar Jukic sitting in top three. But look at the bottom four through seven, how tight that race is. We kind of saw the same thing on the women's side where the, the top three were pretty close together. The next six, we're back from them about 20 points, but they were all close together as well. Well, we're going to see that battle with those, you know, I mean, look at some of the names that are in there. You have BKG, you have Pat Vellner, you have Elliot Simmons, Travis Mayer. These guys all are very, very good at these events. But the fact that they are so tight, it's going to be important for them to get those wins. They need to have these wins. So I think it's most crazy, or the craziest part of this is the point spread between one, two, and three. The fact that those athletes have such padding across the rest of the field i mean we already said how you know how this today alone is almost like its own you know its own competition um when you come in with padding like that and protection like that that's a great place to be for those three athletes and realistically as we start individual event number five ten rounds five ring muscle ups ten meter handstand walk both must be completed unbroken in underneath that 10 minute cap is that we had four scored events over the first two days but re in reality they were just three individual efforts yep we have three individual events today alone for day number three <laughs> of competition as your lane assignments for heat number two and based on what we've seen willie george has got to be on the top of your list as someone that yeah. needs to do well but also has the ability to do well well i mean you know one of the things that i think Willie is such a great athlete, but one of the kind of the feathers in his cap is when we saw him beat Matt Fraser in a gymnastic -y type event where he was able to, you know, with the, with the, the, uh, the pull-ups and the chest to bar. So we know he's got that pulling power. Um, I think someone like him as well with Jonakowski, who's going to be right up above him. Um, that's a great, this will be a great race for those two athletes. Heat number two is off. 
Time in the upper left corner of your screen. Time to beat, unofficially, seven minutes in 49 seconds, set by Alex Gatulis. And I tell you what, after watching him go, there is not a lot of room in there <laughs> to try to make up just to beat that time. We said he rested one time and he took a single breath. Yeah. In fact, I think one time he had to put his shirt back on. <laughs> that was the longest break he took during that event. Yeah, th that's what I mean. It really sets the stage for what it needs to look like. And if you're trying to beat that, uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be the transition in the beginning. Are you able to run and do what Spencer Pancheck did, but without stopping? And right off the bat is Yona Koski. Now, he had a tough finish to day number one, suffering from cramps during that track run and bike couple. And I tell you what, that's not an event you want to do when you're suffering from something no. like that. However, he did win the first event of the competition is, was that swim sandbag clean. So we have a lot left to go. And Yona Koski is definitely one of those veteran athletes that has the ability to make big moves on a big stage. Well, and, you know, he'll know if he needs to, and he knows when he can. Wow, he is attacking. Did you see how fast he jumped up onto his hands? My face would have hit the ground so hard. <laughs> I think he was just hoping to, you know, fall forward and, and get to the end on that, which he did. That was so quick. Koski done with two rounds, currently at a 45-second pace. Now, what's crazy to think is that you're going to have to keep that pace just to match Alex Catullus' time of 7.49. But what did we see? We saw Catullus for at least five, maybe six rounds, running from rings yep. to handstand walk and handstand walk to rings. So though Koski is moving very quickly during the implements, that even walk pace is not going to get him the win if he doesn't able to keep that pace without resting whatsoever. Well, you, you're right. He is at the point now, and this is what we talk about when you talk about pacing. Once you pace or decide to pace, if you fall off that pace, you fully you committed to that. You missed it. Yeah. Um, I do like the fact, I mean, there is zero break. I mean, he's, he's walking, yes. He is moving quickly through the movements. Uh, but he can't go any slower than what he's been doing on those transitions. He, he just doesn't have that time. If he wants to win the event, he doesn't have that time to give up. And that's kind of the third element. There's the unbroken on both ends for the handstand walk and the muscle ups, but then there's the pressure of keeping that pace and not blowing up. And we said earlier is that when you got everyone who's good at muscle ups and good at handstand walks, that third pace, that third deciding factor is your transitions between the two. <laughs> yeah. Do you need when, to rest at all or no? When did that 15-meter no? run become the third element <laughs> of this Wait, event? Wait, I think it was written down on here somewhere, <laughs> uh, the transition element. Jake Berman going back to the rig, all trying to keep pace with Yonikowski as he's done with four rounds moving into five. Now, a lot can happen in the middle part of this event and especially the last three rounds as we are not even halfway through. And as we see Yonikowski working into his handstand walk for his fifth round, we'll get a pretty good idea of the pace that he's currently on. So Koski will cross. He's done with five rounds at about three minutes and 25 seconds. Now, if he was able to match that pace, that's just under seven minutes. However, barring the <laughs> ability to not get actually fatigued ever. It looks really great on paper. But he's bought himself a minute buffer to get through that. So you're talking about, you're adding 10 seconds of extra rest that you've afforded and let, well, for the last half of the event. Let's think about where that can happen. A little bit slower walk, a few seconds of waiting to get on the rings, chalking up two or three times. That minute disappears really fast over the course of five minutes. So An aggressive sneeze. If you will. Maybe a wipe down of your face, <laughs> wiping the sweat from your brow. Pace still looks good. Yeah, he still looks 10. aggressive, though. He's going for it. That's that, awesome. That actual round was a bit faster than his last one. So it might be a, might be able to hold on to this pace. In second overall, that's in lane number one, Jake Berman. You have Evan Morris between the two. You know what? Those as well as Foldis Upenix. We saw him on the left side of your screen. But Koski. Beautiful movement on those muscle-ups. Feet are together. Feet come up nice and high. Nice pop of the hips. Catching the rings nice and tight. Now, in terms of the standard of the handstand walk, only the feet must be behind the starting line. But the hands must clearly go past the finish line. And that's seven rounds down, just wow. under the <laughs> five. Gosh.
minute mark. Jake Berman in lane number one for part of your screen. Still holding on that second place position. We saw Willie Georges in the background as Upanix and Koski come off the rings at the same time, but not the same round. Man, look at that. No, no break. Koski. Now we saw Alex Katulis. This is when he took that break. He sat, he took that breath. Tuna didn't. Two rounds remaining for Yona Koski as he will get to the ring starting round number nine right at the six minute mark yet to really take a break and as we said before is if you're gonna run it doesn't matter if you rest once you get to the rig but if you're gonna walk and you start right away yep. you could actually save some time and that might have been what we've seen that perfect tempoed pace out for Yonikoski. wow he doesn't even he doesn't even look like he's been involved in a race at all. It looks like he's just walking around the tennis stadium right now just just relaxing. Yonikoski, one round left remaining, time to beat 7 minutes and 49 seconds. And if he can maintain the pace he currently has, he has 1 minute remaining to get the time set in heat number 1 by Alex Katulis. That's kind of the first break we've seen. I don't even want to call that. I don't. I don't want to call that a break. It's chalking up. <laughs> it's just a chalk up. That's not a break. That's chalking. Five unbroken muscle ups for Yonikowski. Man. And he'll be done. So he has just over 30 seconds. One final 10 meter walk to go. And from start to finish, Yona Koski looks more like Yona Kosti. Coasting his way through an event number five win. Incredible finish by Yona Koski. That was, I, I mean, I want to say picture perfect. Picture perfect setup. Berman one round behind him. Willie George is on the right side as well. And what more can you say is just, not, I want to say effortless, but made it look so easy out on the competition floor. There wasn't any, there was never an ounce of concern on that entire event. Not on the transition, not while he would kick up to his hands, not when he was getting under the rings to go for the muscle ups. Not until the very last one. And the, I think that was more of a, all right, it's the last one, just don't mess it up. But other than that, like, I, you could not have made that look any more perfect. Two minutes left, about 90 seconds. Katulis' time is good for second. Now left Darius's time about 8.40. 8.45 is coming into play for heat number two as Berman is resting just before his handstand walk. You can see Willie George in the background. He'll be done, but he still has another round to go. As Berman will run across the floor, just under a minute remaining. Nice. So unofficially, Koski taking first, but your top two times from heat number one look to be holding on to second and third after two heats. Evan Morris gets across the finish line. Over in lane number eight, you have David Sharon. So only two athletes finish in heat one. Oldest Upanix crosses the finish line, so it looks like we should have about five in heat number two as we have just over 20 seconds to go. Fabian Benito Celis, who PR'd his clean and jerk last night in individual event number four. All the while, Yonikoski has completely recovered from his event before we even <laughs> reach the 10 minute time cap. <laughs> Two seconds left to go. 
one athlete left on the competition floor. And it looked like we only had one athlete out on the competition floor during the event because Yonikoski absolutely destroyed event number five. That's what you call putting on a seminar. Oh, you have an event like this? Here's a seminar for you. Here's one of those things. We saw Alex Katulis work hard to go that fast. Koski didn't, didn't look like, we know he was, but I feel like that might be a dangerous thing to see if I was in that third heat. Like, oh, Koski made that look pretty easy. I'm a pretty fit dude. Maybe I'll do the same thing. Well, uh, don't do that. Well, again, it depends. <laughs> Unless you are that guy. You, you got to have those skills. You got to have those abilities. They definitely know that they, they know what they can do. So what it's going to look like then. Very impressive finish for Yonikoski, kind of picking up where he left off in heat or event number one, where he won the swim event for the first event of competition. Fell off the pace a little bit in the next two, but seeing him bounce back in a big way to start day number three, one of those veteran athletes that seems to be in good form, in good shape, just had a little hiccup in events two and three. But Wow. I mean, you give you give Yona an event that he is confident and has the skills, and the guy knocks it out of the park. That was the classic, the seminar setup. So if you're in heat number three, do it like that. Um, at least that's the way, <laughs> that's the way it's going to look if you can do it what's, perfect. What's the problem? No, no challenge. Just do that. No worry. So Yonikoski takes so far the best time we've seen after two heats. We still have one heat remaining. Your top 10 athletes coming into today for day number three after four scored events. We've swam, we've run on the track, we've got on the bikes, we lifted some heavy barbells, and now we're moving into that pure gymnastics component. Roman Karenikov still on top of the leaderboard with that 16-point edge on Brent Fikowski. Lazar Jukic sitting in third. Now, of these top 10 coming into this particular event, though Fikowski's in second, I'm not sure how Roman's gymnastic endurance is. It's kind of one of those we kind of need to see him right. a bit more in front of the camera as we do that. But of these top 10, I'm kind of curious of how, really kind of looking at Vellner over there uh, uh, well, let's in see. seven. Let's see, a gymnast, and we have a gymnastic movement. And mm. actually two gymnastic movements. So uh, if you had to pick someone to look at, absolutely Pat Vellner, I would be choosing to, to put him up at the top for sure. He's one of those athletes that has played with this and kind of has an, a, a, a time of around a 7.30, 7.40. So he's in the ballpark. Um, he knows what he needs to do now, and he, he saw how to do it. So, again, 10 rounds of five unbroken ring muscle-ups and 100 meters, or sorry, 10 rounds of 10-meter handstand walk, all unbroken. The, the champions of this event are the ones that have the capacity and are able to feel comfortable and can attack the workout rather than trying to hold on and trying to recover on those transitions. We saw what it's supposed to look like. I want to see if Velna can do the same thing. Two heats down, one final heat left to go as heat number three for men's individual event number nine. I think one of those athletes that we may not give enough credit in the gymnastic arena because he is so strong is the athlete in the center part of your screen, Tola Marquino. Well, I mean, I've, I've seen him kind of come through some of the other events like Wadapalooza and events like that. And I've talked to him and, you know, hats off to him. He's a wrestler. That's what, that's what wrestlers do is you're just good at all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> I know that he can be upside down. He can move himself around. He's moving himself pretty fast across the floor. <laughs> Marquinho might just set the record for the fastest 10 meter handstand walk of the day. Vellner up to the rig. He's in the gray shirt. A couple lanes over is Lazar Jukic. Jukic playing that nice role of always sitting in second behind the best guy in the heat, you know but what? he stays on his heels the whole time. Just, just hang out in that position, hang out. And so when you have the ability to attack or it's time to attack, you can go for it. Jukic has moved ahead of Vellner, moving at a pretty quick pace. And I'll tell you what, even if you're comfortable with these movements, I think that Vellner would be a tough person to race here to where you want to, yeah, I want to be ahead of you, but again, we're only in round two. so. I don't want to try to just stay ahead, just stay ahead. Just like what you were saying, stay on his heels. Then if you can make the attack, make the attack. But let Vellner be your rabbit rather than you trying to stay ahead of him. You know, Vellner's one of those athletes that was really looking forward to this event, having a practice time nearing the times that we've seen so far between Yona Koski and Alex Kutulis. Koski setting the new time to beat in the previous heat. If you see in the upper left corner of your screen, seven minutes 
in 32 seconds, but Catullus was 7.49. So those are the top two times. No one else has been within a minute of that. No, I, you know, and we're, we're seeing Pat Vellner, he's running, and a little, little intelligence there, putting some chalk down at the end so that he's able to chalk on that transition, still jogging. Now, we, we talked about, like, with Yona, he didn't run. He just was moving consistently all the way through, and we talked about the the difficulty of when you decide to pace. If you fall off that pace, it kind of it kind of screws you. We are seeing Pat pushing the pace. Uh, again, he knows what the time is that he has to be. He is an athlete that is always aware of that, so he knows that he, if he's going to choose to run, and if he if he has the area to make up any of the time, it's on those transitions. That's why he's moving quickly. Vilner still leading the rest of the field. Jukic. Holding on to second. Close in that third position might be Jason Smith. But if he's finishing his fourth or his fifth, but Vellner done with four, working into five. And we saw Yonikowski right around that three minute and 30 second mark at the halfway point. Took him another four minutes to come in, so only a 30-second difference between rounds so one through good. five and six through <laughs> ten. So good. Like, oh, 30 seconds. Like, no, 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 that's six seconds slower per round. Per round. And like you said, that time can go quick. You chalk up, <laughs> six seconds. You wink to your girlfriend, six, six seconds. seconds. Man, he is still running on every single transition. And it's interesting to see that because we saw Koski only walking. Yeah. But for him, it was those transitions from, I don't say the transition from the transition. <laughs> oh, you mean the handstand walk. <laughs> turns out there's 150 <laughs> transitions in event number five. Bjorgen Carl Goodmanson, definitely one of those athletes we need to keep our eye on to keep pace with at least your second and third place position. But Vellner, We've had one athlete in every heat just walk away with the event, and Vellner currently is looking like an athlete with BKG nipping at his heels slightly. I think there's something about a gray shirt that makes you good at this <laughs> event. Pat Vellner sitting in seventh place overall after two days. Could use 100 points in his pocket to start off day number three. We still have another day of competition. We got a long day today. A lot of points up for grabs. A lot of things can happen. When you talk about your top two athletes, we haven't said two names specifically. We haven't said Roman Karenikov's name yet. We nope. haven't said Brent Fikowski's name yet. Nope. And that's because they are in the midst of the rest of the pack where you have athletes like Vellner and BKG both on pace with Yonikowski's time of 7.32. As athletes are working into their eighth round. Vellner looks very good on those rings and Again, still wasting no time. It, you got to think the speed of maybe Koski's handstand walk has now become the difference. It's, it's uh, one thing maybe. to go unbroken, but to go unbroken fast is all these elements that really don't come into play until the rest of the field starts to execute this particular event. I'm just so impressed with the way that Pat is quickly moving. I mean, he, he runs back to chalk, but right after the chalk, he gets right up on the rings. There's uh, the transitions are so fast and he, he it's, he's there is zero concern. He doesn't look like he is remotely fatigued. Like I think he could go on and do another 10 rounds is how comfortable he looks. And, and you said it yourself is this is an event like no other where you know thyself is Vellner is working into his ninth round. And we see this workout take a few different elements. We thought Oh, if everyone can handstand walk and muscle up unbroken becomes a transition event. Well, if everyone can do those three things, now it becomes maybe the speed of your handstand walk event. It's not just the fact that you didn't fall down, yeah. but how fast could you do it without falling down? And Pat Vellner 
to the rig for the final time as he is just 40 seconds away from Yonikoski's time of 7.32. Now what we did see Koski do is gather himself a couple seconds to make sure he got that last set of muscle-ups unbroken where Vellner didn't waste any time. And if he can get that last dip, he will. And Vellner has just under 20 seconds remaining to try to beat Koski's time of 7.32. Wow. Five meters left for Vellner. And wow. Vellner will get 10 meters. Now he needs to sprint <laughs> across the floor. Oh my goodness. That was cutting it pretty close as BKG just behind him and maybe just behind Koski's time as unofficial around 7.34. But if it stands as we see it, Vellner could have got himself an event win with Bjork and Carl Goodmanson just behind with I, Koski's time in I'll between. I'll tell you what, BKG was creeping up on Pat. I mean, Pat was out there the whole time, but BKG was able to pick that up. I mean, just a handful of seconds. That was an impressive finish by, by uh, Goodmanson. Vellner is done, BKG is done. Just can see Fakowski, gray shirt, orange shorts, finishing up a handstand walk, going back to the rig again. And those second place scores from the previous heats starting to come into play as Mayer is trying to finish his handstand walk. Whoa. Roman Karenikov kind of hiding in the middle of the pack the entire time, and that might be good enough for a fifth place finish oh, unofficially wow. for Roman Karenikov. Now the question is, is what is Jukic doing? Where's Fakowski on the floor? I didn't think this would be a good one, particularly for Fakowski, just because of the sheer size. Of, and, and you know, this isn't one that you put him in. There's a foot race to the end between Jason Smith and Tola Marquino. And one minute to go, Jukic in the orange shirt trying to finish his 10 meters. But over up in lane number one, Elliot Simmons will cross. Haven't said Jeffrey Adler's name in a little bit of while, but here's Jukic sitting in third coming in. Adler will finish. And we only had a handful of athletes. I think it was about seven finish in total. We had nine finish in the previous heat with one left on the floor. Fakowski will be done underneath that time cap. And that's gonna be tough. We'll have to see that. That's gonna hurt Fakowski's standings. Not too much. Not too much no, overall. I, well, he's, he has that 26-point lead over third place, and it's 34 points over fourth place Jason Smith, so it's all right. And, and talking points is that this point system doesn't really hurt poor finishes as no. much as it rewards good ones. So <laughs> it looked like Mayer might have had one round left to go. And that is not the finish that Mayer wanted sitting up there in about 10th after two days of competition. But someone who needed this win greatly was Pat Vellner, who is sitting in seventh overall coming in, but got himself an unofficial win for this event here in event number five. Yeah, that was just an incredible, incredible showcase for, for Pat. But I mean, even Roma Krenikov, I was not expecting that and having the cushion to start and then be able to get that placing. I mean, again, that's just going to bump him up there because we said the scoring system re rewards good finishes, and he had another great finish. So, I mean, that's just going to bump him up there even more. And I think for Roman's sake, and not to diminish what Vellner just did, but I think it's now it's time to start talking about Roman in oh, terms yeah. of being someone who's capable to win this event, not just being good at things we didn't know to be good at, but someone who is great at this <laughs> event. Pat Vellner takes event number five down with Nikki Brazier. Pat, I think one of the more impressive feats that you had in this event, not only obviously going so fast on both of those movements in the couplet, but keeping really fast runs on your transitions as well, not wasting any time. Did you know that that would be important for you in this event? I think well, I had tested this one, and obviously whenever you do events like this in a big stadium, people forget how valuable that is. I mean, it could be 10 seconds every round. Yeah. And a lot of it comes down to discipline. Everybody's fit enough to do it. Right. But, you know, a workout like this where you're flirting with failure maybe for part of it, you really don't want to get your heart rate up and really want to push that line. So I fortunately have this skill level that allows me to do that. So it was just it was just being willing to push a little. 
We're seeing a lot of traditional CrossFit today and coming up in the competition as well. A lot of single modality things on the first couple days of competition. I mean, how does that affect you moving forward now that we're seeing this sort of more traditional, practical type of functional movement here? Well, I hope this is a sign of things to come for me, but I think I'm obviously, I'm a great CrossFitter and some of the single modality stuff, I can hang in there, I'll be top 10, whatever, but I'm not going to win events when those sort of things are out, at least not yet. So, um, I mean, I think today and tomorrow will hopefully play more to my strengths and I'll be able to show what I'm good at. So we'll see. We've got the next one's a fast, fast sprint. So seconds will matter. And then we've got a longer one to finish today. So it should be exciting. So great job so far. Thank you very much. Vellner unofficially taking individual event number five. And as he said, is that it's important to test those individual modalities in a full encompassing CrossFit event, especially when you're talking about sending people to the CrossFit right. games, because yes, some people might not be good, but the best will always be the best at all of it across the board, where your outliers usually take those top three positions. Well, yeah, it's okay to have those events in there, and I think that those are important things to test, um, even in a qualifying setup to get to the games, because the games will have the same things. However, once you get through, once you get into those CrossFit style classic couplets, triplets, that's where the true CrossFitters are going to shine, and you know that's just like what Pat said. He's going. He is very good at those. Fun to watch him do those and just crush them. So, I think he's excited about the next two days. Well, that'll close out the first event for the teams, women and the men. Up next will be our next team event for team event number seven. Earlier, Nikki Brazier sat down with Rich Froning, who programmed the team events here for the Dubai CrossFit Championship. So the team competition this year at the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship was programmed by this guy right yep, yep. here, who knows a little something about team dynamic. I mean, just give us some insight into your mentality when you were looking at these events and, and what you wanted them to look like. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to kind of step back and look at them from, you know, 30,000 feet. But a lot of the events, most of the events are, I've said before, our workouts we've either done and I was like, man, that was a good test for mm -hmm. a team. or man, that was really bad, so hey, let's make some other people do this. So uh, there's a bit of that, you know, in the, the overall dynamic. Uh, there's a couple different, this one right now going on, the echo bike and uh, worm squat, that was one of those that was like, wow, that hurt really bad, let's let's make some other people uh, go through that, so. Well, how do you decide when it comes to workouts that, that are really painful or that, you know, are really difficult? I mean, how do you decide how much volume should go into an event overall, how crushed the athletes need to be by the end of it? Yeah, it's a little bit different. Um, you know, now with the way teams are and how we're in the super team era, I right. feel like you have a bunch of really good individuals, so it's hard to really, you know, you want to have an event that pushes people and pushes teams um, but you don't want it to get too long and boring. So there is there is a little bit of battle with this. And some of these are a little bit longer, I guess. But there has to be uh, some separation that has to happen. You know, you're going to see some of these top teams that um, are going to finish. But there has to be, you know, there has to be that separation in most of these events. So, um, yeah, they do have to have to have that piece in it. So it is a, there's a balance. And what do you do when you hear someone come to you and say, like, man, that was too hard or that was too much? I mean, I mean yeah, we've had a couple of those this weekend that, you know, yeah. a lot of the teams didn't finish. Um, but you saw the top two and three teams that finished them and finished them well under the time cap. So um, I say, hey, uh, if you're going to be the, the team that goes to the CrossFit Games, you should be a good team. And, and we're seeing that with the top three teams. Definitely. Well, it's awesome having you here. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me.
Seeing the part of your screen, that's Team Tractor from heat number one for the second team event for day number three here at the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. Bill Grundler, Chase Singer, we got Nikki Brazier waiting in the wings as the heat one of event number seven for the teams <laughs> has gone down, but no one was able to finish this particular in the time cap. However, we have four more teams to come and you're looking at four very dangerous teams in an event that has something like heavy cleans and rope climbs. Well, if you need strength and uh, gymnastic prowess or just overall power, the next four teams are those power horses. And, and at the top of that is Misfit uh, P10 Performance. Those guys have dominated everything. Granted, two, two, two second place <laughs> finishes. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, but everything else, they've won. And when they have taken second, it hasn't even been by that much. So those guys have been up there crushing every single time. And they came in this morning with a 15-point lead. That is extended and doubled to a 30-point lead as we got Cake has actually moved up into that third, play, third place position, but only five points ahead of team prepares. So we have basically what it looks like to be a three-horse race, possibly through the rest of the week. And although we still have three team events left to go today and we've already had one moving into event number seven now the men will work in pairs first followed by the women as they are going to do rope climbs and cleans now one thing that has been told is that they can power clean or squat clean although when you look at those numbers you're getting all the way up to 140 <laughs> i mean that's that's a, uh, over a 300 it, pound clean after what they just had go this morning. And, and even though we see legless rope climbs for the guys, regular rope climbs for the girls, it is a lot of rope climbs. However, the sticking point becomes the clean. Those are heavy, very aggressive weights going from, for the men, 100 to 140 kilograms. For the women, 70 to 95 kilograms. It's heavy. And if we saw what happened last time, the men of Team Tractor did well on the cleans, but everyone else was struggling with that weight. So it really comes down to, that's great if you have them or don't have them, but we need to get those cleans underway. So let's dive into this event just a little bit more. You got 108642 for the legless climbs, and then you have 128864 for the cleans. So those numbers look a little weird on the screen, but that's okay. The weight will increase for the clean portion for both the men and the women. Now the women get to use legs for the climbs and their weights will range from 70 all the way up to 95 kilograms. So you have something well over 200 pounds finishing on the women's side. For the overall best score, no one finished in the previous nope. heat, nope. even with that 24 minute time cap. In fact, the closest team was Team Tractor where they had gotten three cleans in the round of six. So nine reps were still left on the floor as we have our Top four teams coming in after six scored events, this being team event number seven, the second of four scored events today. And, Bill, with this type of event, you're looking at Team Misfits in the center part of the lane to dominate this one with Travis Williams and Roy Gamboa. Well, 100%. I mean, you have powerful men on the floor. I mean, but you, you can't knock out team performance though as well. Phil Heskis, we saw what they did in the lifting portion with the snatch. We know that they're strong. Um, so I think this is a good event for them as well. I think that it will be a race. However, I just think that the just the reckless strength, and I say reckless not in a bad way, but in a good way of uh, team missing. I'm talking the guys and the girls. They're going to be absolutely, I, I think they're just going to smoke this event. And you might think the heavy-handed advantage is actually going to the women component with Andrea Nissler and Taylor Williamson of the second half of Misfits oh, yeah. performance. And you're talking about being the better half with athletes as Travis Williams <laughs> and Roy Gamboa. Now, one thing that is unique to the rep scheme throughout the entirety of this event is that athletes must alternate reps including the rope climbs and the cleans. So what you'll see is athletes will pass off back and forth one for one. And the only way the downside for that is, I mean, obviously it's going to be your worst person because you have to now have to wait for that person. If they, if they hang you up at all, that hangs up the entire team. I don't see any of those two teams, uh, Misfit. Well, actually, I don't see any of the teams on the floor really having that much of an issue with either of these movements. Now it's just a matter of who's going to be, and I don't think the, the rope climbs are going to be that much of a problem for any of the teams, but I think that the clean, it's going to come down to the cleans. First team to move on. It does look like team prepared. And as we said before, team prepared's men. These guys are very small guys. Very small guys. Lifted. <laughs> 
outlifted Misfits men in the one rep max snatch yep. event. So you know these are two strong athletes. Look in fact, this beasts, though. Come Alex on now. Alexander Elebro that just went snatched this weight for a heavy <laughs> rep on the first day of competition. No, he's, I'm sorry. He snatched the last I, weight, I, 140 kilos. These guys are really making that weight look so light. Granted, you know, it's the first one, but that's no... It's not a light weight. It's 225 pounds. It's 100 kilos. Again, as we said before, the must alternate single rep. So though I'm sure Travis Williams would love to touch and go 12 reps in a row at 225, they must alternate. So that does slow them down. And I think for some teams, that's actually kind of a nice thing is that it limits the speed of everyone else and it's just single rep at a time. Well, and you know, you see everyone that are doing the power cleans. For the guys especially, we're pulling from the ground in a power clean to make it work. You have to pull that bar up even higher. So you go from pulling to legless rope climb pulling. That's a lot of pulling over the course of that. Yes, the reps are going down, so you aren't necessarily thinking about the volume that's happening, but reps going down, having to carry your body weight, having to, again, keep pulling heavier barbells, it is gonna increase. They are gonna feel that. And let's not overstate the difficulty of a legless rope climb. You started with 10 reps split between two. That's still five legless rope climbs between, and then you have to move to four. I mean, the compounding effect yep. of the total volume of this event, because you know, you start pulling heavy weight off the floor. Some big boys out there on the floor, <laughs> they're, they're pulling some heavy weight up the rope as well. And exactly, I was just gonna say that. Yes, they can move the weight off the floor very easy, but now it's just bicep and lat trying to move up that big body up that rope. And that's gonna be, that. I don't say it's detrimental, but that's the part where they're gonna have to work. Judge's hands in the air, designating five less reps to go. Prepared, got to the rig first, and it looks like in the back screen, they will be getting off the rig first. As team prepared, men athletes, Phil Hesketh and Alexander Ellibro. And joining them, it's actually the athletes from We Got Cake. And now it's no surprise to see Cody Mooney and Alex Smith making some headway on the legless rope climb totally. portion. Although I would like to see how they handle the weights moving forward towards the heavy clean, but uh, Alex what, Smith what is a issue? <laughs> pretty strong dude himself, and so is Cody Mooney. So a lot of stellar individual athletes here in the team setting. I, you know what? I have to say that I'm kind of surprised that the Misfit team is coming off and being on the floor with the, with the cleans in third place. I would have thought they would have pushed it a little harder. Uh, the only thing I could think is that maybe the rope climbs are slowing them down just a touch. I mean, with... Team, perform, uh, team prepared, these guys, zero problem on the rope climbs. They have looked unbelievable on the rope climbs. The bar, this barbell is merely a formality for them. And uh, the formality is a 110 kilo barbell. It's about 200, close to 245 pounds. They oh, must split, done, by the way. split the rep scheme <laughs> in a total of 10 as Roy Gambo and Travis William in the light blue are working through their cleans as Hesketh and Ellibro work into their third round of legless rope climbs. They will split six total reps. And here come Alex Smith and Cody Mooney of We Got Cake. Wow, these guys look great on that rope. That's hard to see on that rope. Now, they must touch the rig before the legs can come back down. But on the descent, there is a black line that designates nine feet that they must go below before they drop down. So in case we see some type of no rep understand is that the range of motion standard is beam to touch line to finish coming up in the six minute mark just over halfway through six legless rope climbs split between the two athletes one more rep to go as alexander elebro works up for their sixth and final rep and this is when you kind of see the the total volume taking its toll that last one looking a little labored as they just got matched up with We Got Cake on the right side of your screen. Man, now, now, the you, advantage, now you have to add the pit crew speed in there as and, well. And I think the advantage on the legless will go to Smith oh, and doubt. Mooney, whereas the advantage on the bar, even though Smith and Mooney can handle their own, are going to go to these two guys for team prepared between Hesketh and Ellibro. Well, and we saw both the teams get to the bars at the same time, but uh, team performance is already two reps up 
on We Got Kate just because they're able to get on the bar and make that switch and get you know from one guy to the next guy quicker. This barbell's moving up to 120 kilos, about 265 pounds. They must split eight rips between each other, going one for one. Travis Williams and Roy Gamboa. And it seems to be really the, the legless rope climbs tending to slow them down. Yeah. Now this is still a combined event. The women's pairs will come in once the men done for one total time. So it's not two separate scores, but you don't want to start your women too far behind the other teams. Well, I mean, and obviously the initial strategy, whether you have good females on your team or not, is on the men's side, I want to get up as far ahead as I can so that, you, so that the ladies have as much time as possible to get through as much as they can. Team prepared on the left side of your screen. We Got Cake is still in the mix. They have not backed down whatsoever. So this is shaping up to be a very neck and neck race between Phil Hesketh, Alex Elebro versus Alec Smith and Cody Mooney. And so what we have is four reps between the two of legless rope climbs. Middle part of your lane that's starting to speed up the pace. And Bill, as you said, is that there's legless rope climbs, there's cleans, but then there's that weight change in pit crew <laughs> style. Again, one thing I kind of like about, actually one thing I really like about a lot of these events is the organic change of the event based off how athletes are competing. Because who knew coming in that we would actually look at a weight change or transition as a massive key component of this event. Well, I mean, I think for any team event, you're going to have that element. It's just it's never really thought of or spoken about, but it's always there. Whether you're moving people from one thing to the next thing or it's time in between the actual movements or how far they're spread apart or having to move the weight. I know myself, whenever you're in the open or you're doing any of those, if you have to change the weight, that always is a factor. One last rep to go for Team Prepare. That weight was 130 kilos. You're talking about 286 as Gamboa and Williams just got their bar loaded. Cody Mooney and Alex Smith are slowed down for the first time at these heavier weights, something we thought we may see as we got to the heavier weighted. As we move into our final set, a couplet of two legless rope climbs, so one each and four cleans at 140 kilos. And this was the massive stopper we saw yep. in the previous heat on the men's division. Well, so far, the guys of Team Prepared, <laughs> they virtually laughed at every bar that they've had to pick up. I mean, it, it looks the exact amount of difficulty from this bar to the very first bar. And I think that that's a huge feather in their cap and it's keeping them uh, in front of everybody else. Four reps at 140 kilos, 308 oh pounds. Hefkes makes quick work <laughs> wow, of his first rep. And now you have Alexander Ellero walking up to a bar that he snatched two days ago. No big deal, no big deal. Alex Smith in the background will hit his rep at 140. Cody Moody chalking up, as you can see, Hes Hesketh. Wow. Will get it, and that will do it, and so they will pass it off. Two minutes faster than the previous seat, and I tell you what, when you're talking about heavy bars, and you're passing off to Mia Akalin, now Hesketh, and Amelia Lampanen. That's a pretty good pass off when you're talking about <laughs> some heavy barbells, so. They, they did very well in the strength biased event we saw in day number one. And a couple times, this is what we've seen from Team Prepared. They have a event win or top win, and, and then, then they have like struggle. a bottom, they're almost in the top two or bottom two. Yeah. They've been alternating events for the last seven. We saw the same thing last night. They had a great event, and it had a heavy Mishap box jump that. overs and GHDs, and then the next one, not so good. Now, the difference for the ladies when they get to the rope climb is they're going to be doing regular rope climbs. We know the rep scheme is up a little bit, so we bump up everything by two. Um, but for the, for the girls, they get to use their feet. So the, the strategy on a legless rope climb versus a regular rope climb is different. Yes, you want to jump up as high as you can, but you want to use your legs as much as possible. Um, they are going to have to pull heavy bars off the ground. 
But again, they should be able to keep those arms as long as possible and make as few pulls as they make their way up to the top of that beam. So team prepared first to the rig. We got Cake anchored by Danny Spiegel and Jessica Griffith. By the way, they can twist some steel <laughs> there on their own. <laughs> and then you hand off the two female athletes of Taylor Williamson and Andrea Neisler. I mean, this is going to be, should shake out to a great finish as we are just 12 minutes in to a 24 minute capped event. These teams are far and away ahead of the times we saw in heat one. Team prepared, done with their 10 rope climbs. They'll oh move to goodness. 12 cleans at 70 kilos. It's about 155 pounds for the women. Now we just keep looking at the clock in the upper left corner of your screen as how far ahead they are of We Got Cake. Now a lot of things change as the weights go up. Holy cow, team prepared. Powerhouses, look at, they're making that weight look so easy. 20, 12 reps at 155, 70 kilos. Spiegel and Griffith in the back part of your screen, also in the gray and black, are working into their 12 reps, as that should be the final rep for Mia Hesketh and Emily Lampanen, as they will slide their bar forward. So they're done with their first section. You'll drop two reps on the rope climbs add some weight for the cleans now they do have to alternate single reps that is part of the standards in this particular event taylor williamson up to their right andrea neisler making quick work 70 kilos they still have some they have room to make up but they also have some time However, they need to make their move earlier when the, the longer sets. But we have someone like Andrea Nissler and Taylor Williamson. You, you think they could probably make a hard charge to keep back well, up the and, pace. And I think they have the ability to do that. Well, once, one of the things that I'm seeing with uh, uh, the Misfit ladies down in the bottom corner there is the transition on that barbell can be a lot cleaner. They can be saving some time there. They don't need to rest. So there's a little bit of a bobble as they try to make them a way around each other to get to the bar. And that, that would save them a lot of time over the number of these reps that these girls have to do. Bottom right side of your screen, looks like one rep left to go for Team Prepared as they will advance to the bar. So that's two reps left. So Mia Hesketh and Emily Lampinen got one rep apiece to go. Coming in at that 15 minute mark, we're not gonna have to worry about that 24 minute time cap with these teams. This is heat two, team event number seven. Already had one event earlier today that dealt with a rogue echo bike and some some worm squats. Some. Only about 150. Just about. Uh, one of the things that I really like what Team Prepared is doing on the ropes, and I, they didn't get a chance to say it as they made their way to the bar, but the way we talked about the transition, did you see how fast they were coming down that rope? So they would do that, that speed drop. Um, where they come down, lock their hands just below that mark you were talking about earlier, and then drop in from there. That saving, that descent is saving them so much time. And as we have these reps where it's 12 and 10 and 8, it's a lot of reps. So you're saving a second on every single one of those. That's a lot of seconds to be made up and to, to be to their benefit. And I think the hidden key to this event is that when you are forced to alternate reps, and there's so many different transitions from rope to bar, and bar to rope yep the hidden element in here is just like you were saying is those seconds that you can lose without even thinking about it, is I that know. going from one athlete to the next i mean if you don't especially like even on the barbell work if you don't have to rest if your athletes have the capacity to be okay then they should be directly behind each other and the bar drops you step out of the way the other one moves right in and we got cake has matched up with team prepared as jessica griffith gets to the rope at the same time as mia hesketh so we got cake and bill as you said is that their transitions between lifts are making up those secret seconds up here on the clock six rope climbs as we move into the third portion of this five rounded couplet between rope climbs and cleans. Team prepared on the right side of the rig. 
You know, and I'm seeing all these ladies, there's a, they're starting to hit a point where that pool is starting to fade just a little bit. They're all doing great as far as like pulling their knees up very, very high and trying to reduce the, the number of, of pulls that they have to do on every single rope, but you're seeing them start to slow down. And a lot of that is because when they do jump up, they're bending those arms, which again, is just wasting energy. I mean, they, they're all they're all fighting on the barbell, but this is where they're starting to slow down. And we got Keg has officially passed Team Prepared, and though pre Team Prepared was having that struggle, yep. there was no struggle whatsoever on We Got Cake's side. So Danny Spiegel and Jessica Griffith loading their bar for this third set of cleans. They have eight reps to complete at 85 kilos. That's about 186, 187 pounds. They're making look like 87 pounds. <laughs> and there in the middle lane, Misfit oh. Performance is moved up to challenge that second place position. And prepared, they've only hit one rep. You saw all that time of trying to get the belt on. They're only two reps ahead of Misfit. Now, we got cake. These guys are smashing this event. They look so good on the rope and on the barbell. They, I have yet to see them really show any signs of fatigue as they're moving away from the rest of the field. But prepare needs to be very careful because they are slowing down drastically. Danny Spiegel moving her bar forward as Griffith gets their first rope, clean, rope climb done. Four rope climbs to go. And in these last two sets, it's really where we start seeing the separation between the teams, not necessarily on the rig, but on those heavy weighted bars as they will move to 90 kilos on the bar. Team pre prepared is only a matter of seconds ahead of Misfit Performance. So Misfit Performance is fighting for that second place position as We Got Cake is off the rig and to the bar. They have six reps at 90 kilos. That's just under 200 pounds. And they have some very fast loading transitions. As I said before, the devil's in the details. Oh man, totally. Well, I mean, and it's, you know, we talk about transitions, and in this particular one, just like you said, the, with the you go, I go, every rep is a transition. And just like that, on the right side of your screen, though, We Got Cake is leading Misfit Performance by Andrea Nissler and Taylor Williamson has moved into second ahead of Team Prepared. Final couplet to go. Jessica Griffith running to the rig from We Got Cake. Two climbs one each Danny Spiegel just about to come in perfect timing and now it's up to Griffith to sprint across and possibly load the weight for her team and they have four cleans at 95 kilos waiting for them what I like is that these two ladies I there's no issues with belts they're not trying to get all that kind of stuff set up they're just grabbing the bar and moving it and knowing that they have the ability and the strength and they're just snapping to it. Every single movement is, I'm right behind you, I'm ready to go, it's my turn, let me go. We got cake loading their bars. Team prepared still on their cleans from the previous set as Misfit Performance done with one rope climb and Jessica Griffith wow. making these weights look easy. Spiegel <laughs> is done, one more each. One more clean to go. As Misfit's performance just gets to the bar, but it's too little too late because We Got Cake has jumped in and got an event win. Wow, that was impressive. You know, and I, I will say this, even though Cody Mooney and Alex Smith did great on their end, that was all to the ladies. They smashed that from front to back. Every single rep, the transitions were smooth and fast, and then they're just so dang powerful on that bar. Nistler and Williamson, final clean to go. So they made up quite a lot of ground to move themselves up into second place. That was the last clean above in your screen for Misfit Performance, so they'll take second overall. Now, no team finished this event in heat number one, so if team prepared can at least get through these last four in the next two and a half minutes, they'll secure a third place spot. I tell you what, if you're on Team Prepared and you have 
Mia Hesketh that is, you're having to go, you go, I go. She doesn't give you a whole lot of rest. Yeah. <laughs> she goes right away, and then she becomes your coach for the next 30 seconds. 95 kilos on the bar. There you go. It's about 210 pounds. Hey, guess what? You're up again. Just wanted you to know. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Go again. Coach. <laughs> Two minutes left before that 24-minute <laughs> cap. Emily Lopin in, trying to get that last rep at 95 kilos. <laughs> and that'll be good for team prepare, so they'll get third overall. We still have one team left on the floor, Team Finland. And their male athletes had quite some struggles on the heavier barbells, as this is just the 85 kilo portion of the event. You can see how how heavy the weight really, really is. is. Let's make it, let's when, get the reality here. When you don't have these just strong athletes out there <laughs> tossing this around like it's a beach ball. Now the one thing that, it's good that Misfits brought it back into that second place position. Now they fell quite behind in the third. But the way this scoring is, is that, you know, we said before there's you don't lose a whole lot right. down the leaderboard. We're talking about, oh, a struggling performance of second instead of first. <laughs> no, but with only eight teams, not a lot of separation. Well, and then again, I mean, if you're going to hold first and second only across the board, like, how dare you? you <laughs> bad, a bad, fin quote, unquote, bad finish in its second? That's not bad. That's not bad. Team Finland. Oh, good fight. Ten seconds remaining. Got Laura Isopusu and Pateri Pionen. Just trying to get as far as they can because the other teams in the previous heats did not finish this, yeah. and it kind of matters where they did. We may have a different top four coming in, but it really is this three-horse race between We Got Cake, Misfits Performance, and Team Prepared. But in this event, it was all We Got wow. Cake. I mean, there was cake all over the place <laughs> on that one. All kinds of cake happening. Men did well, but the, the, the amount of work that they caught up on the women's side between Danny Spiegel and Jessica Griffiths. They smashed it. They looked so great. And just like we said, the transitions were amazing, but the speed at which they're able to make the transition on the barbell was key. And then that strength is just unworldly. We got cake first place in team event number seven down with Nikki Brazier. How do you get to games? So our plan right now is everyone kind of wants to go an individual route this year, and we're just having some fun. Team events are always great, a great way to kick off the season. Plus, we love each other. It gives us the time to travel together, so we're just kind of having some fun to the year, get ready for the games, but individual is the route to go this year. All right. Well, great job so far, guys. Nice work. Thank you. Team event number three in stellar fashion yeah. for for those athletes, but as you said, is that, you know, they got a loaded team, they're here to compete, they're here to have fun, their individual track is the goal, but, you know, if they end up getting the win, it doesn't help to have that in your back pocket. Options are always great. You know what, options are always great, and if you have that, why not keep it? You know? So we went from the longest team event with some heavy barbells, moving into one of the fastest individual events we may ever see, because we got some barbell sprinting coming up next on the individual side. So keep it here for live coverage of the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. For Bill Grunler, Nikki Brazier, I'm Chase Ingram. Individual actions coming up next.
Shahad, you were tearing it through that entire workout, the muscle ups and the handstand walk. I mean, what is it about those gymnastics movements that put this event right in your wheelhouse? Uh, this, this too is the best movement I have. Yeah. So I was so happy, like, oh, there's muscle up and handstand walk. So I have, I have to win this. I'm trying. My time is. I did it before. My time of today was worse because I, I was a bit nervous. Of course. And it's like my first competition, big competition. So I was like uh, a bit nervous, so can I do it or not? Yeah. But I'm happy that I went with my heat. Absolutely. Now you uh, are, um, you're the hometown girl, fittest Emirati woman. I mean, what does it mean for you to be representing UAE out here? I, it means a lot, like it's my honor to, to represent my country. Uh, the, I, I just, I, I'm competing here just to represent you, Aggie, yeah. in the best way I can. That's awesome. Yeah. The CrossFit is a growing sport here in the UAE. What do you want to represent to the other women who may be interested yeah. in getting into it? I start from failure. No one starts like from top. Everyone starts from zero. Yeah. And now I'm, I'm learning from my failures. So this is like, it's the beginning of my experience now. Yeah. Uh, I'm just hoping to get up uh, soon, inshallah. I'm trying my best. I'm working my, Hard. Like every, anyone, if you want, anyone can come. Anyone can join us. Anyone can compete, unless you, if, if you put your, your effort, all your effort, and like if you train hard, everyone can do it. Nice job, girl. Thank you so Way much. To go. Thank you Thank so you. much.
competition floor for their second event of the day, sixth event overall. And if there was a Talladega Nights of CrossFit events, it would be this one, as those numbers are not a mistake. 21 total reps of yeah, three different rounds. versions of, of snatches. Yeah, there, it's not rounds of this. It's one shot, seven hang snatches, seven snatches, seven squat snatches, all the same weight start to the end it's gonna be fast in lane number one we have multiple heats because we're trying to move as fast as we can a couple yeah. athletes in here you know eight guilford daughter is one of those that have been to the games before the events haven't worked out in her favor so much just yet they will do a sprint across the floor and move to the bar five hang snatches they can choose power or squat 50, 50 kilos, you're talking about 110 pounds. And you can see the speed that Laura Kuna is doing in lane number three. She's in the dark blue shirt, and they'll have to advance forward between every set. So seven hang is done. Now they'll move to power. They must touch the ground and pull overhead. They are not allowed to catch this in a squat. Early leader in lane number three, dark shirt, dark pants. Laura Kuna out of Brazil. Takes a short little break. And she will keep that lead position. And we move into our final seven reps. All reps must be caught in a full squat. Two minute cap on this sprint event. Kuna is Brazil's national champion coming out of the open. And she will set the time to beat in heat number one. And just 30 seconds remaining. And we're gonna see a lot of variance from heat to heat between these athletes just because it is so fast. And so few. Wickstrom will finish. Gilfadotter. Now Shahab Budebs, who absolutely destroyed that gymnastics <laughs> event. Yeah, that was all. That was all Shahad. Coming back to earth a little bit when it comes to this high skill barbell movement. Well, I mean, you know, the, okay. Let's go back and look at what this event is. We know it's supposed to be fast. It's not one that you want to rest, but one of the things that I really liked that Laura Kahuna was doing on the first element was she was rebounding off her legs. That's going to save a lot of time. I think she actually looked best on the second part where it was the snatch, but I saw her stop with like one or two reps left to go. If she knew she was going to stop, you know what, go break it, break it up and go to singles at that point. And then on the end, I liked the fact that she was able to hold on to that last set of seven and get through it. I think that as we get higher and higher in skill level and strength with some of these ladies, we're going to see this whole thing being one full stream where those hands are never going to come off the bar. Heat one is do done. Kuna has the time to beat in heat one. We have five heats total as we'll have some quick turnarounds and some quick heats for these individual women. Heat number two making their way out on the floor to tackle individual event number six. Lena Simons, Christy Hollard, Andrea Pinheiro, Laura Clifton, Hannah Short, and Christina Agerbeck. Again, we have five total heats for this event. And one of the faster events we've definitely seen here at the Dubai CrossFit Championship. Now, in terms of standards and rules, the, the first one has to start from the hang position. Right. Power squats up to them. The second one must start from the floor. Again, power squat is quickest up to them. <laughs> in those last seven squat snatches, but 
122 is the time to beat, set in the previous heat from heat number one. This is heat number two as we'll start for seven hang matches at 50 kilos at 110 pounds. Over there in lane number two, left side in the orange top and black pants is Andrea Pinheiro. Wow, super fast. Done in about 20 seconds, but on her heels is Laura Clifton. Coming up in lane number one, you have Christy Hollard. Now this must go from the floor, caught in an above squat position, so that power snatch. Lifting on the right, Pinheiro on the left. Now Pinheiro flew through those hang snatches as Clifton has moved ahead of her by about one rep. Pinheiro still taking a short break. In the final seven reps must be a squat snatch. Time to beat, one minute and 22 seconds. Set in heat number one. Two reps left to go for Clifton on the right. One rep left, but just six seconds, so she's gonna have to sprint across the finish line. And it's gonna be real <laughs> close between Kuna's time at 122 and Clifton's time. Again, these times are all unofficial. I mean, if it comes from me or Bill, it's unofficial regardless. It's, it's always unofficial with us, man, I tell you. <laughs> The only thing official is that it is unofficial. We're officially unofficial up here in the desk. 10 seconds remaining in this two minute capped event. And if you think these two heats are quick, we've got some sh sharks waiting in those deep waters as we move from heat two to heat three. Five total heats for individual women event number six. And it was Clifton who takes heat number two right at that 122, 123 mark. And I have to say, the, what Clifton did, I didn't really see her in the beginning. I really liked the way Pinero came out on those hang, on the hang snatches. A very strong rebound. She looked completely strong and confident. Uh, they, uh, Pinero and Clifton both came to the, the regular, the power snatch, at about the same time. Clifton decided to go for broken singles on the squat snatch, which I thought was slowing her down because Pinheiro was actually going touch and go, but she shut down at five, and that's when Clifton was able to make that advance forward and, you know, and, and cross her at the, at the finish line there for the 120, unofficially 123. You have to know your skills, you have to know your abilities, and you have to know that if you are going, you, you don't want to stop, so if you have to go to singles, go to singles. Two heats down, three heats to go. This is heat number three. Your lane assignments in lane one, Taylor Howe, Michaela Norman in two, Marty Sykes, Carol Castellani, and Manon Aganis. 1.22 is the best time we have seen so far. If two athletes get right around that time between Clifton and Kuna. And if it's about to seize, maybe Carol Castellani will do well in a <laughs> <laughs> this heat as well as heat three is set and ready to tackle individual event number six. Seven hang snatches, seven power snatches, seven squat snatches, 50 kilos for the women. Heat three is off, short sprint across the competition floor to their barbells, 50 kilos on the bar, 110 pounds. First to the bar, Castellani. She's in lane number four in the all black. Manon Aganese on the far right, however. Wow. She knows a little thing about starting quick. And she will slide forward, so Aganese on the right in the red and black, now moving into the power snatch portion of this event. And one of these, Bill, you were saying earlier, it's not necessarily about technique. It's all about speed and power. And it's all about using those hips. You can see the way that uh, Manon is really popping those hips when she works that bar up overhead. I didn't see any slowing down on that. 
Alone in the third portion of this event, seven squat snatches must start from the floor, finish in a squat. Has yet to put the bar down. We haven't seen any athlete do this so far after two heats. The time to beat is 122, but Manon Agonis oh. fails a rep, and that's the danger we can see in such a high speed event. She's able to recover, and last rep is good, so Banan Agonese will get across the finish line and set the new time to beat at 118. In lane number one, Taylor Howe will finish. Thirty seconds remaining in that two-minute cap. Michaela Norman, Marnie Sykes, Carol Castellani still left, finishing up their seven squat snatches. Castellani will be next. Final rep for Marnie Sykes out of New Zealand. And with ten seconds to go, Michaela Norman's trying to just get her last snatch done. Ah. New time to beat. As we have two more heats remaining, Manon Aganiz right around 118. And I tell you, from start to finish, she looked so good. And on a sprint, she did exactly what you're supposed to do, which is ride the line. You want to be done. Granted, she went over the line just a touch, but that was a great show of what it's supposed to look like. Came out on the very strong, very fast rebounds with the at the thigh. Dropped the bar, rolled it head, and then it was fast touch and go for the hang the hang snatches. And then fast touch and goes on that last part with it. That one fail, dropped it just a little bit, but a great finish, way to, way to recover, and a great time to start off with. Now with three heats down, we have two heats remaining, and that will have our top 10 athletes. Now these are your new and updated scores after the previous event. Sarah Sigmund's daughter has extended her lead on Sam Briggs and Karin Frey has inched just a little bit closer, just two points behind. Jamie Green, after that event win, has vaulted herself all the way up in fourth place. However, seeing as how they haven't receded the heats, and Jamie Green is in this heat for heat number four. Your fourth heat of five for individual event number six. Jamie Green in lane number one, currently sitting fourth overall. Julie Hugo, Emily Rolf, Emma Tall, and Kalarina Notori. That's one athlete you want to keep your yeah. eye on in this event. Yeah, it's going to be a race, I think, between Jamie Green and Notori. Notori had that, that also that 112 with the clean and jerk that tied with Sarah Sigmund's daughter. So she's got the power. I want to see if she's going to be able to hold on the bar the whole time. Notori is in the bottom left side of your screen in the dark shirt and shorts, whereas Jamie Green is all the way up on the far side. So your top two athletes that should do well are bracketing this heat. One, heat number four off and underway, and as we advance in heats, we should decrease in time. The time to beat is now 117, set by Manon Aganese in the third heat. Athletes will start with seven hang power snatch at 50 kilos. Jamie Green, top left side of your screen, looking very smooth, and she will advance forward at the same time as Kalarina Natori moving up with her seven power snatches in the middle portion of this event. Natori looking a lot more smooth with the power. She is a kind of out of control in the hang portion. And she has moved up ahead of Jamie Green in the top part of your screen. And it is Kalarina Natori Ooh. forgetting that it has to be a squat snatch. And I'll tell you what, this look a little high uh -huh. from this angle. Oh! And Natori is having a hard problem getting below parallel. That ain't going to cut it from my eyes from up here. So look for Jamie Green possibly. Or in that middle lane, Emily Rolf is making a charge. And 117 will survive, but here comes Julie Hugo just behind Emily Rolf, Jamie Green. And it's going to be close between Hugo and Rolf. Green got third, and Natori oh. is just completely. Missing the mark here on that squat snatch. Well, I just, I, 
I'm, I'm, su actually, I'm surprised she got the reps that she got. I mean, from our angle, granted, we're not down on the floor. I'm but surprised from our she angle, can't it looks catch a, very catching a full snatch. Very, ah, those look way well above the that that parallel mark. Wow. So in this heat, it's going to be a close tie between Hugo and Rolf. However, Manon Agony's time of 117 will stand as we have one final heat remaining. Now keep in mind that time of 117. And she missed a rep in that final seven, so there is still plenty of room. Although I, I, I don't think that's going <laughs> to st stand too much longer. You got some... Uh, you know, you got Car and Frey, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. I can't wait to see what she does with this barbell. You kidding me? Uh, it, I hope, I want to see her just hold on to the bar. I want to see her prove that she can hold on the bar and do that. We thought that Notori was going to have, was going to make this look like playtime. Um, and we didn't see that. So the fact that she was breaking so much, you know, I, the fact that she wasn't able to go down to the full squat, I, I'm, I'm a little bummed out to see it that way, but I want to see the big dogs play. And the big dogs are in heat number five. Now let's not count out Gabriella Magala. Sam Briggs, this is going to be one of those that... <laughs> Come on, Sam, hang play in there. ...to her strength, and she's still hanging on the second, but that two-point lead on Karin Frey, who is one of four athletes in this heat. I mean, you're looking at Magala, Sigmund's daughter Frey, Pacelli. These are some strong, powerful athletes. And we have a heat now where the women are going to be pushing themselves against people all the way across the board. I don't think the other heats had that. Here we have athletes that they all know that they're strong. They all know that they should do well. So I think it's going to be interesting to see them really push the limit. Heat five, the fifth and final heat of individual event number six. Seven hang snatches, seven power snatches, seven squat snatches at 50 kilos. Fifth and final heat underway. Sigmund's daughter and Frey in her center two lanes. Sigmund's daughter on the left, Frey on the right. Pacelli to the bar on the right side of the screen. Seven hang snatches at 50 kilos, 110 pounds. And look at the cycle rate of Sigmund's daughter and Frey. Other. Sigmund yeah. daughter is running <laughs> forward with the bar over her head. The only athlete to do so. We're talking about someone that is itching for a heavy barbell. She didn't get the heavy part, but she just got the bar itself as Sigma's daughter is running away with this just after the first seven reps. 40 seconds in, 37 seconds until we reach that minute and 17 time cap. Sigma's daughter has a one rep lead on Karin Frey just to your right. Pacelli in the mix as well at the bottom part of your screen. Magala up in lane number one, working into her squat snatches. Sigma's daughter has yet to put the bar down, approaching the one minute mark. Sigma's daughter ran forward with the transitions from seven hang to seven power. Seven squat snatch, no problem. Event win, Sarah Sigma's daughter. Wow. Pacelli, Frey, Magala, all under the time to beat of 117. Wow, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. You talk about one of those events just straight down the middle. Yeah, seriously. And that was exactly what we wanted to see. I wanted to see the aggressiveness. Uh, the aggressiveness of Sarah Sigmund's daughter, the way that she just attacked that. And I love the fact that that was, and we talked about it yesterday. I want to see your competitive spirit. I want to see you go, bring it, because this is mine. And holding that bar up and being the only female to do that and being able to do that yes and having the confidence to do yes. that that's that is the element of a champion not the element of a good crossfitter but the element of a champion and we've talked about what is she missing she's not missing skills it's the mental game does she have that that i want to cut throat i want to kill i want to take you out that was it Sarah Sigmund's daughter destroying individual event number six. If we had to rename this to anything, I think Sigmund's daughter is a pretty good title like for I individual like event number six. She's down with Nikki Brazier. 
Sarah, yesterday we talked about kind of staying in your lane and not necessarily paying attention to what the other ladies were lifting around you. I think this was the opposite of that. You knew everyone was going to be flying. So what did you have to do to make sure that you got to the finish line first? Uh, the only thing I thought was like, fast reps, fast reps, don't fail, fast reps, fast reps. So it was uh, like I just had a strategy of just counting always instead of thinking about where everybody else was. So I had no idea if somebody was uh, in the same rep as me. I was just like, go as fast as you can, come on. It's such a strong performance from you in these last few events. It's been a little while since you've been able to come to the competition floor fully healthy. Yeah. You've been dealing with injuries for yeah. the past few seasons. I mean, how are you feeling now? I've never felt so good. And I'm just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> nice job. Thank you so much. Siren Sigmund's daughter takes event number six. And these are the things we were talking about after the clean and jerk event where she opted to tie the best time. And we wanted to see a bit more of a kind of stamp. I'm here to win, not just to kind of take points. Killer and instinct. That is one of the things we were hoping to see and we saw it in a big way. Oh, my gosh. It was so good to see that because that is... Let's just talk about someone like Matt Fraser. That's what Matt Fraser does. That's why he's the best. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, we've been waiting for that. And that's what well, we just saw a glimpse of it. If she can continue to do that, Tia's got to run for and, her and money. And that's the one, that's the thing we know that's in there. That's the thing we want to see. And it's yep. not just, I'm going to try to take some points, but I'm going to try to <laughs> do so well, you don't even want to try to match me on the competition floor. Individual women are done for event number six. It will be the men's turn to tackle this sprint style event here at the 2000 Dubai CrossFit Championship. For Bill Grunder, Nikki Brazier, I'm Jay Singham. The individual men are coming up next. I'll never forget where I started. I'll never forget my failures and disappointments. I remember them as stepping stones. There are no secrets, no shortcuts, only hard work. I know all my strengths, but more importantly, I know all my weaknesses. I surround myself with those who help me unleash my full potential. I give my body exactly what it needs, then I put in the work. I test, improve, and retest. It just has to be done every single day. I am Matthew Fraser. I don't want to think I'm getting better. I want to know it.
individual women took the stage, and it is now the men's turn for individual event number six. Same format, same movements, different weight, although I'll still say it's the same lighter weight for the caliber, caliber of athletes we have here on the competition floor. 75 kilos, that's about 165 pounds for the men. It just is not a heavy weight. Even for the even for the first couple heats of these guys, I, I we are going to see some blazing speeds across these heats. Your four athletes in heat number one of six, Sam Stewart, Karar Magrinder, Alex Katulis, and Lefteris Theophanidis. Short sprint across the floor. Seven hang power snatches into seven power snatches and seven squat snatches. Wow. Wow. Would you uh, like to expand on that a little bit? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, it looked to me that he was going a little bit too low, and that weight is looking way heavier than I was expecting it to be from, from uh, Leftheros. I just didn't think that that would be an issue with those hang power snatches. Now, they said on the first two at least is that the starting position is the mandatory one. They can opt to go power or full snatch depending on what they prefer. But I think he just dropped that bar down past his knees, so it went uh, past the hang position into just below hang. Up in lane number one is Sam Stewart. He's moved ahead of the rest of the field. Tell you what, 165. Well, keep in mind, this is event six. This is completely fresh inside your Philly. It might be a little different story of how fast these guys can go, but yeah, I would have expected a bit faster pace set well, with I, that weight. Yeah, I, I absolutely. I mean, I, when I heard the weight, I wasn't, as a master's athlete, I wasn't necessarily afraid of that number. Lutheris Theophanitis. Alex wow. Kudelis has moved ahead of him. Right around 142. Two reps to go. One rep each between McGrander and Theophanitis. I tell you what, we're just not seeing um, <laughs> the caliber of live competition that we've seen seen him do, okay. right? No, absolutely. Seen his videos, seen what he could do in those open events. That I, across this field, now I would have thought someone like maybe Alice Katulis would have had a, a tougher time with this weight. It's a, it's a decently heavy weight, but not. it should not have leveled the playing field that, like this as much. Now, I think the issue with the judge talking about not no open up all the way, C. I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely going to add to it. Uh, but I wasn't expecting to see uh, Theovani Theovanitis struggling that much. I just thought he would have been able to move that barbell way easier than that. I Actually, uh, across the floor, I would have thought that. We saw Sam Stewart, who won the heat, struggled on the, struggled on the last seven of those, event, uh, of those reps, and I was not expecting to see that. Six total heats in this event for individual event number six. Heat one is done. Heat two is coming up next. Heat two making their way onto the competition floor for individual event number six. Spencer Panjek, Badir Al Nuri, Mohammed Shalan, or Mahmoud Shalan, Dylan Martin. I think, you know, this is one I feel would push more towards something that Spencer Panjek should do well. I mean, 
It's amazing how strong these kids are. These dang pan chicks. Actually, these dang kids nowadays. But you know what we've seen? We've seen that we know the strength that he has, and what's play, what playing to his favor is that he's kind of been doing this all out, go for broke at the beginning, and this is a short one. So this could play in his favor because where is, where is he going to go? I don't think he's going to be. Able, I don't think he's going to get shut down in a two in a two minute time frame. Heat two, individual event number six. Seven hang snatches at 165 pounds, 75 kilos. Bit stronger of a start we saw than heat number one. Pancheck at the top part of your screen will move into his second section of seven power snatches. Going for that touch and go, something we thought we would see more of in the first heat. Just below him, Badur Onuri. He'll break for the first time. Pancheck, who started out real hot in the previous event. In fact, the exact opposite scope of what this one is. <laughs> and he's moved into his final seven reps, seven squat snatches. Start from the floor, caught in a full squat. Still hanging on to the barbell. Just over the minute mark, best time we saw was 126. Three reps to go for Pancheck. One final rep, 10 seconds before that time to beat. Pancheck will get it. Short hop over the bar and cutting it kind of close around that 124, 125 mark. Still better than the time to beat coming into this. So Spencer Pancheck will have the new time to beat coming out of heat number two. Dylan Martin will finish right around 147. Al Nuri, who actually took a first place event win in that thousand meter bike, average pace. And just one rep left, but not enough time to do it in. Mahmoud Shalan getting last place in heat number two, but a new time to beat set by Spencer Pancheck, unofficially right around 124. Yeah, he looks great, and I think this is a great time frame for, for him. He didn't have, the, didn't have the opportunity to really, like, put himself into the pain cave and bury himself, but we saw those very fast rebounds at the beginning of the first set of seven. Uh, he went into about the first four or five of the touch and go on the on the actual just power snatch and then fast singles and what I liked is that he looked around to see where everyone was to kind of a, you know, adjust on the fly and that, I think that was a little a sign of his even though he's young a little bit of experience in there where he wants to know where everyone is so how hard does he need to push I saw him look around uh, was able to keep that bar from bouncing around too much getting those singles getting them done and then getting across that floor at the 125 mark he do his Heat two is done. New time to beat right around 124. Heat three coming up next. Heat number three making their way out on the floor to tackle event number six. Our sprint event of the weekend for the Dubai CrossFit Championship. Two heats down, four heats to go. The time to beat set by Spencer Pancheck of 124. And we have five athletes ready to tackle this one. And if we're talking about strength, power, and speed, maybe coming off the clean and jerk event, 
Lane two, Evan Morris might be one of those athletes. Yeah, I mean, Evan has looked great when it comes to that power and that explosiveness, and this kind of plays right into that. So I'm hoping for him having that strength that he's going to be able to make something good come out of this for him. Heat number three underway. Evan Morris in lane number two in the orange and gray. David Sharunke just below him in the gray and black. Two of the stronger athletes in this heat. As Morris will toss the bar forward, just behind him is Sharunke as they move from seven hang snatches to seven power snatches. And a little bit of a strategy for her Sharunke moving just in front of that oh, line. I saw that. I saw that. I and see what you're doing. What that would mean is he would just have to step right ahead of it. One step. And again, this is going to the fact of seeing the, the changes of the event organically as we see it unfold based off the uh, competition as it goes on. And that right there just played into that where he was able to get started before Evan was just above him. Got a no rep for his second rep, however. So Sharonke in the middle lane in the gray and black working into his final seven squat snatches where Evan Morris is trying to keep pace, but Sharonke has yet to put the bar down. And he will go unbroken all the way through and smash the time to beat at about one minute and 15 seconds. Morris just behind him. Right at that 124 mark set by Panchek in the earlier heat. That 115 by David Sharunke, lowering the time to beat by nearly nine seconds. Alexander Caron just finished as Kyle Bernier trying to get underneath that tight two minute time cap. Three seconds, and squeaking just underneath is Kyle Bernier, but 45 seconds ago, this man, David Sharunke, may have set out the blueprint on how to tackle this event, not just from a speed, power, and strength perspective, but from a strategy perspective as well. You know, and, and what I loved about what he did is he looked strong in the beginning. So we're talking about what he was doing. He's got the power. Uh, there were those quick rebounds. He threw the barbell into the next section, which I don't think if you're gonna if you're gonna walk the barbell, okay, that's one thing. Don't put the barbell straight down and then try to shuffle it across. Throw it out there, let it get out there. But then the fact that on the last set started his lift literally one step out of the next box, so he could just get right into it. If he felt good, he could step right into it and go for the snatches, the touch and go with the squat. But he was able to get right on the bar. Evan Morris, it took him a whole four seconds on his transition from one box to the next. So great idea. I want to see. I don't think anyone in the back really saw that. So I don't know if anyone would be thinking that way. I think the fast thing that everyone's thinking is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk with the barbell overhead. We saw Sarah Sigmund's daughter do that. Um, the strong people, I think, will opt to do that. Or they should really throw that bar into the next box as far as you can. <laughs> Three heats down, three heats left to go, and a new time to beat. Set by David Sharonke at 115. Individual event number six, heat number four, making their way out on the competition floor as individual competition rolls on here at the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. Seven hang snatches, seven power snatches, seven squat snatches at 75 kilos. Time to beat set in heat number three by David Sharonke at 115. 
And you have your five athletes in heat number four. Zach George, Fabian Benito Celis, Willie George, Yonikoski, and Oldis Upenix. Yonikoski had a great bounce back event earlier this afternoon in our gymnastics couplet event. Heat number four underway. Koskeen, the four party of screen in the light gray. Just to his right is Willie George. And we know he can cycle some snatches fairly well. He did so at the CrossFit Games two years ago in that gymnastic barbell couplet that dealt with snatches. Now, there's a unique strategy up in lane. Number two, Fabian Benito Celis opting to put the bar on his back and run it forward. Brilliant, by the way. Willie Joris on the left, Koski on the right. Fabian will drop the bar yet again, but Koski is matched up with him, and now the benefit there is that that bar stays on the floor. And so we'll have a tight race. Fabian on the left side in the blue, he's going to break. To his left is Zach George, but Yonikoski on the right side in lane number four in the gray has two reps remaining. Yonikoski at 110. It's going to be close between him and Sharunke's time, and it may be a tie between Koski and Sharunke as Fabian will cross the finish line. Again, a new strategy. I just love the creativity. <laughs> Whether or not it was a good idea, I applaud you for your creativity, sir. You know what, sir. man? You know, Sometimes you got to throw caution to the wind. And, and throw you, a bar on you, your back. That's right. You know, you got you, you come up with your plan, and then you go for it. And I will say this. I think that it was a good idea to do that if you have the capacity to be under that weight the whole time. What I saw, the, the, the downside to that was he, on that last set, going into the last set of seven, is he's walking with the bar on his back, but does not immediately go right into the squat snatches. He put the bar down and then sat there. Yonikoski rolled the bar forward, so no tension, no time under tension, nothing on him. He could breathe, everything was fine, and then he was able to go right into his, his work. So... If you have the capacity and the strength to do it, then do it. You don't do it just because if I was, if I was a super strong guy, it would be great. If you're not that guy, don't use that plan. Well, it'd also be great if we were doing back squats, but unfortunately we're not. Yeah, well, you know. I, again, it's, it's smarter to move it that way over. If you're going to walk the bar overhead, put it on your back instead of holding it up overhead. So it's, a, it's an improvement over that setup. But if it doesn't allow you, if you're not going to be able to just get on going, it's not that it's a transitional race. It's a race. It's an overall race. And it was Yonikoski that won the race, and he has a bested tie. He tied the time to beat with David Sharonke. So 115, new score to beat. Number five making their way on the floor. We got 10 athletes left in your top 10 after five scored events. Roman Karenikov sitting well ahead of wow. a new second place athlete. Patrick Fellner has vaulted himself from seventh to second with a three point lead over Fikowski. And look how tight the leaderboard has gotten from two 
to four. But Karenikov is now extending his lead over the rest of the field in this heat. You got your potential winner in lane number four, Tola Marquino. But don't count out a lot. This, is, this entire heat stack. We got Vellner, Bjorgen Carl Goodmanson. Heat five underway, seven hang snatches, seven power snatches, seven squat snatches at 75 kilos, 165 pounds. Tola Marquino on wow. the right side okay. in the light blue. Cycling that bar with some reckless abandon as he will move forward ahead of everyone. Seconds ahead of Vellner and Mayer. Mayer's on the bottom part of your screen in the red. Vellner up in the light blue. Tola Marquino hanging onto the bar. Power snatches. It's almost too light. Look at that. Just kind of <laughs> bounce back up into his lap as he'll push the bar forward at 40, just under 40 seconds. 115, the time to beat. That is tied between Sharonke and Koski, but Tola at the 50 second mark. One more rep to go. And Tola Marquinho wow. right at 101, 102. Jeez. 13 seconds ahead, and here comes Vellner. And this is going to be big for Vellner underneath the time to beat coming in. So Tola first, Vellner second. Goodmanson just crossed the finish line as Mayer and Simmons navigating their final snatches. Is there such thing oh. as too light for Tola Marquina? For Tola? <laughs> ah. <laughs> Uh, no, it's all too light for Tola. <laughs> Simmons will cross the finish line underneath the time cap by about 12 seconds. Wow. But just about a minute ago in a two-minute race, Tola Marquino has set the new time to beat right around that 101-102 mark. But here, okay, so here's, here's what I saw with Tola. Very powerful rebound, very easy to move that bar, not a problem. Threw the bar first, so he didn't carry it up overhead. He figured he didn't need to do that. Not a bad move at all. Did the next set of the, of the touch and go power snatches. And then what I liked is he was aware enough to take one step into the next box. He didn't roll the bar and continue to try to get to the middle or anything like that. One step, got into that box, was able to go touch and go on the squat snatch, got himself over that into that finish line. If you have the power, Saving then seconds. you can do, yeah, you save seconds, man. And, and when it comes down to a two minute time cap, one second, not is a that, lot of time. A 60-second race. Yeah. That was, that, was a, that was a great show. I love that. That was fun. Tolo Marquino, new time to beat. 102 unofficially as we have one final heat remaining. Five more athletes before we close out individual event number six. Five heats down, one final heat left to go, and a new time to beat dropped by 13 seconds by Tolomar Aquino, unofficially 102. Five athletes remaining, and you have your top athlete, Roman Karenikov, coming in with a substantial point lead over second place. Event number six, seven hang squat snatches, seven power snatches, seven 
squat snatches. And a couple of athletes in here. Want to see Roman Karinov keep coming out. This guy is legit. He's for real. He's dominating the field currently. Let's see what Jeffrey Adler does over in lane number five. <laughs> we know that Jeff's got the strength. I just want to know if he's got that explosive amount as well. Final heat underway. Karenikov getting across the floor first. Seven hang power snatches at 75 kilos. Just above him in the light blue and orange is Brett Fikowski, who moved down to third place, three points behind Vellner, who actually had a very good finish in the previous heat. Up in lane number one, Jason Smith. And then you see Fikowski move his bar all the way up to that line, so he only has to step forward one time. That's a classic That's Fikowski move. <laughs> But Fikowski cycling that bar, but look in lane number five, right in the bottom of your screen, Jeffrey Adler charging through these power snatches as he will move forward with Jason Smith, Fikowski, and Adler all at the same time. Seven squat snatches to finish. Fikowski's looking pretty good in lane number two. Just above him, Jason Smith. Judge is telling him to get a little lower. No, he's just counting out loud. Adler below. That's going to come down to the final part of this. Time to beat 102. Tallest time will stand. The next time to beat is Vellner as Smith should outrace Fakowski for second and third overall. And an athlete that is in dire need to get across the finish line, we just said was dominating the field, and that is Roman Karenikov as we are approaching that 130 mark in an event that only took a minute and 15 to do. Wow. That is going to hurt him because you have Fikowski, who got third overall in this event unofficially. Vellner, fourth or fifth overall. Jason Smith snuck up in to kind of spoil the party. Adler should have gotten third in this heat. Fourth overall. And just like that, the entire shape of the event and the leaderboard can change. Well, again, even though Roman didn't have a great showing in this particular event, he had that gigantic cushion. And we know that, you know, depending where you fall, you can afford to have a fairly bad showing. So, I mean, if you, he, what did he have, 40 points? He was ahead of the field, 30 points, somewhere around there. So he had the cushion. Well, it's not as much of a cushion as you might think. The difference between first and ninth is 31 points. Okay. And we're talking about someone who just, he well outside the top 10. Well, that's what we have to see where they were. But I, I tell you what, real impressive with Jason Smith and with Brent Fikowski on, on that event. I wasn't expecting to see Brent in there as much. I knew Jason would be strong because he's got that power. He just, the guy can go for it. He's so strong. And he, you got a power athlete in Jason Smith and just a smooth, efficient, and strategic cognitive strategic. athlete in Brent Fikowski. Foot race at the end. They're standing side by side with Nikki Brazier. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It came down to that foot race in the end, but you look fired up. I think you, you got a foot over the line first. Maybe it's all unofficial for now, but I mean, how did you manage to kind of pull through on the run? I don't know. My legs weren't working, so how I got to the end, I don't know. But uh, yeah, it was close between myself and Brent. I knew he was right there, so just kind of had to give it my all to get to the finish line. Sure. We still have to see how the entire leaderboard shakes out here, but I know you're the man with a plan, so to speak. Uh -huh. How does a top finish like this affect you moving forward? That's oh, good. I mean, regardless of the finish, you got to kind of calm down 30 minutes later and just focus on the next one, whether it's a good one or a bad one. But that was nice and trying to ride that positive energy into one more event tonight and probably a lot of points tomorrow. I can only imagine what they've got in store. So, nice. Great good. job, you guys. Thank Go you. ahead, rest and recover. Thank, Thank you so much. Individual event number six is in the books on both the men's and the women's side. Now, Marathon Moving Day continues on because as we close out individual competition, we're going to have to see how that shakes out on the leaderboard where Roman Karenikov finished. We're not sure, but we just talked earlier that in the top 10, you're going to lose 35 points from first to 10th, and I think he was well outside that 10th place position. Well, he... We talked about the cushion. I think that the cushion was important. He needed it. The The bad thing is where Brent, well, for Roman, is where Brent Bukowski finished. He had a great finish in that. So that, you know, he's going to get those upper points. And we already said that the way the point scale is set up, it pays to have good placing. 
So if you do that, that is going to bump you up. But that's exactly what he needed. That's exactly what he wants. Because, I mean, I was honestly coming into this event, I was shocked that Roman was that far ahead of someone like Brent Fikowski and Pat Venlo. So I think that now we kind of get into, oh, these guys are for real. And that's why we've seen them on the podium, you know, at the games. We've seen them winning so many different events. I still want to see Roman be consistent, and that's where I think we're missing. He's got those big flashes and those big fails, and for him to really be able to lead with that with that reputation that he has, he's got to be consistent across the board more. Two athletes that banked on this event in particular were Brent Fikowski, who was in third, three points behind Pat Vellner, who both finished up in that top five right. position where Roman was out of the top ten. What do we have coming up on the final individual event? Classic CrossFit chipper. <laughs> the problem is all three of those guys oh, they're all excel both really good, yeah. in that. So we are in for a wild finish on the individual side as we move from individual six to team event number eight. Oh, by the way, there's another one before this is all over. Marathon moving day will continue here live from the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. Stay tuned for more action for Bill Grunler, Nikki Brazier, I'm Chase Ingram. We'll see you guys in a little bit.
30, 30 seconds, seconds. that leads my line. We're still to see one of the teams now proceeding for the birdies. 50 birdies over the world. And now the guys from Spain and also our Supreme from Denmark. Klaus Vidyas now compete. 30 bar muscles and go for the birdies. Two rounds left for Cross the Ass, two rounds left for All of the Supreme. Cross the Ass and All of the Supreme and the Tractor are done with their burpees. 
they, they begin, begin their cleaning jerks, jerks and cleaning jerks, jerks using the war.
Team competition, heat number one of event number eight is done, and it was Team Tractor that didn't finish the event in its entirety, but got about eight burpees into the final set. As heat one is done, heat two will be coming up. Again, it's a, kind of a marathon day for these teams. <laughs> it is a marathon, but I also like some of the ways that it's being just twisted a little bit. The thing with the burpees, it's a synchronized burpee. Most of these teams are used to synchronize where it's like it starts from the ground. Now the jump also has to be synchronized so it really is causing everyone to have to slow down just a touch and be way more cognizant of where everyone is so that may be what's slowing down some of these teams it's amazing we have seven scored events already and we're just nearly uh, we are halfway through the day for the third <laughs> day of competition on the team side coming up next will be heat number two of team event number eight and from this spot we got Cake actually won the last event. Yeah. So it narrowed the gap a little bit between them and Misfit Performance. The only problem is that Misfit Performance decided to take a second place finish, so not <laughs> enough points they. in between, although the gap has narrowed. 25 point lead on We Got Cake that extended their lead over Team Prepared, who lost a lot of points on that position. So those are your top three. Again, pulling away from the rest of the field, now it's the order of their finishing places going in, knowing there's one spot up for grabs for the games. You know, and it's one of the things that we talked about with the knowing, you know, the We Got Cake team was asked, are you guys going to go? And they're like, they want to go individual. They're just having some fun. So they don't have a lot of pressure on them to do well. Misfit wants to be there, so they need to continue to do what they're doing. Cake is just out here to have a good time. And the eighth event for the teams coming in is four rounds, 30 synchronized muscle-ups in male and female pairs. Now that's a combination in total, not each. 50 burpees over the worm and then 10 
Worm Clean and Jerk sent a time cap of 18 minutes. No team is finished in the first heat. The closest team was Team Tractor. They got eight burpees into the final set. Well, you know, if I think with Team Tractor, their split time was around four minutes or so, four and a half minutes. So if you're planning on making it, you're going to have to be faster than that. And if that's where you are in the first round, guess what? You're not going to, most of the time, we don't see people, you know, negative split their rounds when it comes to these types of movements. Your top four teams in this second and final heat. Top on the leaderboard is Misfits P10 Performance. They have a 25 point lead on We Got Cake in lane number four. Team prepared in third place. And we've seen a lot of different things happen between these three, but they're they're so well matched. Now it's coming down to just execution and performance on the floor. Yeah. Heat number two is off for team event number eight. And they'll start with 30 synchronized bar muscle-ups in male and female pairs. Now the synchronization just needs to be at the top. Two people working at a time to total up 30 bar muscle-ups. And the prettiest group that I could see is up there in the blue and the green, the We Got Cake, Jessica Griffith and Alex Smith. I tell you what, if I had to do any gymnastic movement synchronized with Alex Smith, I'd be really bummed out because everything that he does looks so effortless the entire time. And to be able to keep up with that's pretty impressive. Now, in terms of game plan and strategy, it comes down to, I would say, the not as strong of the two pairs kind of dictating the pace and the tempo in the rep scheme the one big thing here is that see where the back pairs are staged so far off the rig is that that time in between does take its toll over the total of four rounds and however many breaks you do well and again you, you always want to know what the abilities of your teammates are because that's going to kind of dictate what you need to do but you know, you don't want to have any failed reps. You need to make sure that you keep your reps as consistent as possible. So, yes, they do have to have that run of that transition. But what's going to be more important is that you aren't pushing someone well past their limit because then that's just going to slow the entire team down. Look like all teams transition at the same exact time. Teams are going to have to average 4 minutes and 30 seconds just to make this 18-minute time cap, as we said before. Team Tractor had the best score. They actually didn't get a time. They had eight burpees in the last round. Following these 30 bar muscle ups, as Misfit Performance moves ahead, just ahead of We Got Cake, will be 15 synchronized burpees. Now, what's going to happen here is that the burpees must be synchronized at the bottom and the jump. Because who doesn't want to make synchronized burpees harder than they need to be? Let's even make them more fun. Team Prepared has moved up. They're actually sitting in fourth as Team Finland over on the left side of your screen moved up ahead of them. Real impressed with Misfit and we got cake right in the middle of your floor. They're not, you don't see anyone looking around to see what's happening. I mean, obviously we can't hear them because we're not out there on the floor. They need to be able to have some sort of communication for sure. But what's great is that I don't see anybody moving. I mean, they're, if so, whoever's, whoever's the coxswain of the team and yelling at the go is doing it, but they can all hear it. But I don't see anyone looking around to see what's happening. That's, that's pretty impressive. And a lot of that can be predicated on the person you put in front. Is like nobody moves until they do. Right. Moving from 15 synchronized clean and oh, jerks geez. and out of sync is We Got Cake as that worm comes crashing to the ground. They're trying to keep pace with misfit performance. And the one thing about being synchronized with the worm as they move to clean and jerks is that everybody should be moving, but there's really no reason to move fast. They no. don't need to chance a no rep. You don't need to be out of control like we saw what happened to We Got Cake. Well, and it's, it's a matter of don't just try to get the rep. You have to try to stay in sync. And yes, we already know it's sync. That seems like kind of an obvious question, but everyone's just trying to go, all right, together we'll get this rep. No, stay with me. The rep number will happen. Let, let that happen. Just stay in order with the rest of the team. Wow, Misfit looks great. Moving forward at 345, the fastest split we saw in the last heat in round number one was 430, which is exactly what you needed to average just to get underneath the time cap. So Misfit performance 
extending that lead they had coming off the first set of synchronized bar muscle-ups, now moving into their second round. Roy Gamboa on the right. Taylor Williamson, you can see her calling out the reps at the top of the movement. We got Kate Moose Ford. They're still in second. However, they lost a lot of time once they got to the worm portion of this event as Andrea Nistler and Travis Williams move ahead. Totaling 30 synchronized bar muscles between the pairs. Now, another thing is they don't have to actually stay in those fixed pairing. As right. long as there's a guy and a girl going at the same time, and we have Jessica Griffith moving with Alex Smith they can switch that up anytime we need. You just can't have two guys and two girls that are going at the same time. I mean, if I could have Alex Smith do the whole, all of them, that would be cool, you know, if that was kind of a plan. But I haven't seen that strategy being utilized, at least by We Cake, or We Got Cake. Those guys are keeping their teams together, letting everyone get their rest. All teams back to the rig for their second round of 30 synchronized bar muscle-ups. Your leader in the center lane in the light blue shirt and dark blue shirt, Travis Williams and Andrea Nistler. Hand in the air. Looks like four reps to go. They'll decide to switch out one more time. Taylor Williamson and Roy Gamboa will look to finish their second set of 30 bar muscle-ups. Alex Smith and Jessica Griffith on the left. Back on the rig for We Got Cake. Wow, misfits. These guys look so strong. And I think, you know, classically you would say that the, the weak point, on, at least on the bar muscle-up, is going to be your girls team. We're not seeing that with Misfit. They look so precise all the way through each of those movements. And here, you know, even on the uh, on the on the uh, burpees, everyone's down, everyone's moving, everyone's jumping, and they're clean movements too. I don't see anyone, not a one foot little shuffle step that you usually try to see or usually end up seeing on burpees over an object. These guys look so good. Misfit performance. We're talking about keeping a steady pace so you don't get a no rep, but that is actually a very fast yeah, it is. burpee over the worm pace for misfit performance. And again, you know, we talk about the communication that's needed. We talk about how are you training and what are you training. These guys have a great feel for each other this early in the season. That's so amazing. Approach the seven minute mark, miss of hit performance, done with the burpees over the worm, moving into their clean and jerks, and we see some communication or positioning issues and team prepared in the four part of your screen. Second place is just to the left with We Got Cake. They're working through their second set of burpees over the worm, and it is all misfit performance. As we're approaching that halfway mark, finishing their second round of four, Five more reps remaining. And there's that steady tempo, making sure everyone's in the right position, hands in the right position. And you don't have to move fast to go fast. I know that sounds a little silly to say out loud, but a lot of it is timing and tempo and consistency. One thing we see a lot from CrossFit Mayhem's team is that in the first two rounds, they're never moving quickly, or at least doesn't look like nah. that. The deal is, is that they never slow down. Yeah, and so it's that tempo, and the, and the volume is high enough to where it's not a matter of just try to blast this set of five. It's you have these large sets, and it's as long as you're not stopping and you just keep on moving like a metronome through it, you're gonna end up in the front. You're just not slowing down. And with Misfits, they're just so clean. Every rep looks exactly the same. And even when I was watching how they were setting up to pick up the worm, Every rep looked identical, all the way to the timing to getting the the uh, the bag up and over their head. Everything was just right on the money. One rep to go for We Got Cake, and you can see in the background, Team Misfits are already 10 reps into their 30 synchronized bar muscle-ups, but they extend their lead on We Got Cake by about 45 seconds. As we are halfway through team event number eight,
Nine minutes in, so halfway to the time cap, although it's not going to be needed at the pace Misfit Performance is going at for team event number eight. Four rounds complete of the 30 synchronized bar muscle-ups, and they still look so smooth. Yeah, this just so... Every single rep, and here we are, you know, so far, so deep into this event, and every rep looks like it was in the first round. You see team event number eight, four rounds. They're into the third round currently of the synchronized bar muscle-ups. Burpees over the worm and clean and jerks. Travis Williams and Andrea Nissler. Back to the rig, and you see Team Finland just struggling to get through that second round. I mean, and it, what's crazy is if you get off sync with that worm, I, it isn't a little bit harder. It doesn't make it a little messy. It's exponentially more <laughs> devastating for each of the members on that team. One final rep to go for Misfits as Gamboa and Williamson will close out their third set, moving back to the burpees over the worm. And the thing with the worm itself, we said a lot of things, you have comfortability with familiarity, mm -hmm. whether that's the Echo Bike, the Concept 2 Bike, even unbroken sets of muscle-ups and handstand walks. But the worm specifically is a fantastic test of team communication because really that worm isn't that hard to move in terms of weight. No. Right? It's a heavy object, but when four people are pulling at the same time, it's really not that challenging. The problem is it's very challenging to stay in sync because if you are not, then it becomes a heavy, awkward, hard to control object. And with, with that heavy, awkward movement, it's, it's just so weird to have one weight all of a sudden change, get heavier and get lighter, move you forward, move you backwards, and then you're constantly adjusting. So with the moving parts on that thing, like if it was just a straight log, totally different, totally easier because that, that's going to be spread out. But as you as that worm starts to just get wobbled all over the place and hanging on one side or doesn't stay straight, it's like you said, it, it's, not, it's not just more difficult. It's extremely difficult for every single person that's on that bag. But look at how pretty that, that worm is kept by misfits. Look at how straight that thing is. All those different... All those different angles and knuckles on that thing and folds, you don't see that happening. You know, there's no bend. And that does come with training. It does come with practice at a near nauseam. It's like right hand under left, left to go right. We get it to the shoulder. The big thing on the tempo is not just the clean, but some people forget that it's the drop. Oh, yeah. That has its own. Watch the pause on the right side to establish everyone knows where they're at. And that worm drops straight flat straight in front of their down. feet. When some people start dropping it early, it'll start to twist. It'll start to turn. Some people will be out of sync. Well, and I think you have to find a reset point. A lot of times people will do the clean to the shoulder, and that's the reset. And they remember when everyone was trying to do that rebound off the ground <laughs> sort of thing? Yes. You know, not the best movement. That's why I think with, with Misfits, they reset on the opposite shoulder so that it drops up together. So they're able to take a good, a good clean lift off the ground. Now, Team Finland is working through their third set of synchronized bar muscle-ups as Misfit Performance is moving into their fourth. Team Finland in danger of getting lapped in just a four-round team event as Misfit Performance is putting on quite a performance here for event number eight as we are just 13 minutes in, five minutes until we reach that 18-minute cap. Now, you know what? We just did see a switch here between Roy Gamboa and Travis Williams for Taylor's partner. Now, t of all four characters on that team, I do see that Taylor has a little bit more. She's struggling most on the bar muscle-up. But what I like that she's doing, once we get back to seeing her on the screen here, is that she lays on that bar to push herself up. So she's giving herself just a little bit of a break before she gets into it. Roy Gamboa, Andrea Nissler. Andrea Nissler and Taylor Williamson were the second half of OC3 Black's team over the last couple of years. A team that's always been pushing CrossFit mayhem, yeah. whether it's the Central Regional or the CrossFit Games. Well, you know, we actually saw them beat them 
in the in the uh, Rogue Invitational. So I think that that kind of, you know, again, being that you could have a win like that that early in the season, that was a huge lift for those guys, which probably pissed Rich off just a little bit. <laughs> I'd say it, it definitely poked the bear, and we saw that. he's not here right now, we, so we'll talk about that. We so, saw yeah. that come to fruition at the CrossFit Games this year when Mayhem just absolutely walked away with that competition. It wasn't even close at the CrossFit Games last year. Nissler and Gamboa on the right. Moody and Spiegel on the left. Both teams into their final set, but it is all misfit performance. And no team in the first heat even got to the last set of clean and jerks. We've kind of seen that as it's gone on over the last couple of days that your top three teams are far and away the best teams here as misfit performance with three minutes left to go, we'll move to their final set of burpees and clean and jerks. Wow. And I, I tell you, I'm trying to look to see who's doing the call, and I think that it's they're just It's not the calling, it. so here's what's happening. Well, no. Taylor Williamson is told to do her own pace on the burpees because I, she is I, struggling the most. I get that, but and they're just going to go off her call. But you know how you know how that is when you have all those people in front of you. Watch the way they come up. They come up identically, and it's not like they're watching to see Taylor move first. They feel when she's about to move, which I think is a little bit different than just her moving. I mean, look at everyone's butt is coming up at the exact boom, same time. That's impressive. Smith and Griffith left side. We got Kate currently sitting in second overall, 25 points behind Misfit Performance. On the far right side is Team Prepare. They're in third, holding third in this heat, but was a three-team race. It's starting to look more like a two-team race between We Got Cake and Misfit Performance. Less than two minutes before we reach that 18-minute cap. Misfits definitely not in danger of that, but if we got cake needs to at least secure that second place position they're going to have to do at least on to be on the safe side for an official score at least 10 burpees over the worm to beat team tractor score from the previous heat well that's the first time we've seen and look at Roy Gamboa was the one that called that out i just told everyone to stop great job on communicating but i'm kind of shocked that i saw that I mean, if I had three cleaner drinks left to go, and I was looking around, I was like, you know what, guys, let's uh, let's come off the <laughs> throttle just a little bit. And, you know, we were what? talking to Rich Earler, and he said the same thing, is that you know what the score is to beat. You know where you're at in the heat. There's no reason, especially with one more event left to go tonight. No, absolutely. To bury yourself in an event. And a well-deserved walk across the finish line as Misfit Performance We'll take yet another event win this weekend. And I, but I was wondering if that was if there was something that was going on with Roy's legs. You could tell he was, it was a little bit of a not the normal comfortable walk across the field as they went across that finish line. Still, I mean, strong finish. They smashed everybody in that one. Thirty Smash, seconds left everyone. to go. We got Cake trying to finish. Ah! And again, there comes the you know communications easy round one. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit harder in round four. I can't hear you when I'm breathing so hard. Still should be good enough for second overall as we're 10 seconds away from the 18-minute cap. And uh, amazingly enough, only one team completing this event within the time cap, and that is Misfit P10 Performance. You can see that the total volume of this particular event is not just the skills and the weights and the synchronization, but, I mean, that's they've done a lot of work. You're talking about they started this day off <laughs> with, you know, 50 cows on the bike, 50 squats for three rounds. I mean, 50, 150 worm squats. There's a whole lot of leg it's a whole work lot. going on, you're right, across these events. But I, I just have to, I have to hand it to this team that as a team that's just come up this year, all amazing athletes, we've all seen them on team and individual pieces, but the 
absolute synchronicity. And this was one that I have never, I mean, we know the synchronized movements and everything, but the way that the synchronization has been put together in this particular event and the way that they looked was unbelievable. You would have thought that this team has been together for years, the way that they were moving, literally like shadows of each other. That, that was impressive. And that's cool to see. And, and it's pretty interesting to ha see that come to fruition on the competition floor. But Misfit performance with a, another event win is down with Nikki Brazier. I think your your synchronicity and your flow and your communication was just so impressive that entire time. I couldn't even quite tell who exactly was calling on the burpees. I mean, what was your strategy there? How was you? How were you able to, to move so quickly? We actually didn't have a call on the burpees. Um, figured it would waste time. We know I'm the slowest, so we put me in front, and okay. I know everyone else can keep up. So, pace is on me. Great. And in the end, also, I saw you switched off one of your pairings for the bar muscle ups. What was the thought there? Uh, I was tired and she wasn't. <laughs> in that case, easy. Now, it's been a long day. It's been a rough day. You guys look a little banged up, but there's still another event here to go. So how do you attack it considering what you've already been through here today? Oh, well, we go all out. Oh, I mean, right. That's what we plan for every workout. We're fresh. We're fine. Totally cool. Yeah. Totally cool. Great, Great job so far, guys. Thank nice you. work. So Misfit Performance takes event number eight. Still one event left to go on the team side, and a lot less volume than what they've had to do. We got ourselves a little dumbbell snatch relay coming out. So it should be an exciting finish about the teams. But Misfit Performance, I think with that win, they're looking like they're looking pretty solid. Pretty, yeah. They're looking pretty solid. Pretty good. Pretty good. So the individual <laughs> competition will be coming up next. It'll be the last event for the individuals for the day. We'll still have one more day of competition after this. But the individual women in that long chipper style will be coming up here to close things out for the individuals for the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championships. For Bill Grundler, Nikki Brazier, I'm Chase Ingham. Live action will continue here in Dubai.
I'm not short. Sure. I'm not tall like you.
Heat one of the individual women are done for event number seven as we are joined with your two-time fittest woman on earth, Katrin David's Hi. daughter. Bill Grumler's <laughs> over there on the right, but I'm, I'm sure. Hanging, I'm just hanging, hanging out over here. All of us are now <laughs> hanging out at the desk with Katrin. And as you know, we close out the first heat of this, Katrin, you were supposed to be here this weekend. I know it was billed, and I know you were super excited, you know but what? unfortunately, I out with you guys, but <laughs> other, to be on other circumstances floor. come into play. <laughs> yeah. And so Kind of walk us through it. I got to talk to you a little bit before the event. You were talking to something about your, your back was kind of acting up, but at the same time, you're going to see how you felt game day. Yeah. And game day, you had to make a tough decision. Yeah. Um, I'm actually, this is the first time that I've ever had to pull out an event because of an injury. And my back tends to be tight, and it was a 12 hour flight over here. Training was going super well, but um, it just flared up exactly a week ago, and I was like unable to move Friday, Saturday, and it's happened before where it kind of just like flares up, and then as soon as it can just calm down, I'll be just fine. And the training was done. Yeah. I kind of I missed. I would have missed Saturday of training. Besides that, like we were ready. Um, so just if if we can get my body healthy, I was like we'll be ready for game day. And um, Wednesday morning, um, couldn't pick up the sandbag cleans and. We're not here to compete, to participate, and I want to compete. I love competing, and I want to do my best. I want to be able to, those sandbags, like you feel people pick them up and flick them over and, and go really fast, and I wasn't able to do that. So that was one of the hardest decisions. I was still, you know, I think I was like, I, I was hoping to have the right answer in my head, and I think I did. I just didn't want it to be this one. Uh, and it's, yeah. I, I can't imagine how hard that is for you, because like you said, you, you are an amazing competitor, and we, we know your love for competing, so a tough decision to make, but we are we are happy you are here with us, <laughs> at least for this event, as we move into individual event number seven. And, you know, you look at that chipper style, I know you are talking earlier about how much you would have loved that oh speed snatch event, but another long-listed kind of just true good test of classic CrossFit yep. fitness right here. This is fitness, this is grit. And, you know, you, you look at that, and... For you yourself coming in, and you're saying you like the front rack lunges, mm -hmm. and <laughs> you, I would prefer not to do those myself. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, no one actually got to finish that. They were one rope climb. It was actually a Gilfa daughter that got one rope climb in the last 10 seconds. Yeah. Coming into an event like this, how it kind of drops from half the reps through. Mm -hmm. What is your approach? To one of these longer style chippers. Yeah, so actually I did this one in training before I left when I was still in Boston. What was your time? And <laughs> so I did them with box <laughs> overs completely. Like we did a rows. Yeah. Um, and I was around the 15 minute mark. So I don't know if that slowed it down at all, but um, it was a really good workout. But the way that I thought about it was that it looks like it's a long workout. It's a big workout. And once you get through the first half, there's 25, there's 20. 15, 10, 5, it's so little. Yeah. I know it's a lot. You can't go, you can't have nothing in a tank, but it's still, the girls at the top, they're all going to be going unbroken at the end. They're all going to be going at a pretty set speed. So if you can hold that, you have to make up your time on the first half without going over. Right. So this is where the treat, I, I really like this workout. It's fitness, it's grit, and yeah. Heat number two underway. We do have one heat remaining for women's individual event number seven. It is going to start with a 50 cal row. Now, that's a con considered amount of time to sit on a rower. And I think a challenging way to pace when you think you move from that row to the wall ball shots. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough, I feel like, a little combination of moving from one kind of like leg pull to a leg push right. with a heavier ball. Yeah, I think that's the one part of this workout that I think is very deceiving. Like there's going to be a lot of adrenaline and you're going to want to go out and get those 50 cals done fast. That's going to make your workout suck if you go out too fast. You have a lot left. But that's the one thing that I, at least when I did this in training, I went out at a sustainable pace. Like not hard, but not easy either. Like you you make time up on, when it's calories row, but you have to feel good going with those wall balls and get those 40 in a big set. Um, with not too many breaks, and then it's just box overs, lunges, and you have to be, those rope climbs are also a very important part to even win or lose time on those. 
It's really amazing how whenever they throw a row into an event, it's always that, okay, I can choose to literally go <laughs> seven seconds faster, yeah. and that will smash me for the rest of the event. Yeah. Or I could just reel it back just a little bit, and then you feel so much better going into something like the, to the wall balls. I mean, the wall balls is going to jack your heart rate up anyway. I mean, it's a heavier yeah. wall ball. Granted, it's to the nine-foot mark, but it is a heavier wall ball. So you can see already that some of these girls are starting to just, let I me mean, just be relaxed here. We'll just kind of bring yeah. it down just a little bit, get into the event, and then start to let the heart rate go up after that when you get to the wall balls. We'll probably see some of the stronger rowers come off around the three minute mark, is what I'm guessing. Well, right there, Michaela Norman is in the red. I think that's someone, I mean, we know her capacity when it comes to any sort of a, an yeah. endurance type event. So I think I'd expect to see her coming off the rower in one of the first positions. Now, what she does with some of the other movements, I'm not really sure, but off the row, especially, I think she's going to try to push that. Do you think you have your bigger, stronger athletes on something, you know, like a, a monostructural row? Like, same thing you see with kind of the, the bikes and the skiers is like the bigger athletes have a, a little bit easier time yep. of navigating this, I would say, at, at a more conservative pace. Bill, like you said, I think the hand in the air, it looks like it will be Michaela Norman. Now, I'd be curious to That's see is that this is it's a good one for her. And I mean, that looks like it's going to be a fast row, something south of three minutes. And right off the row, just ahead of her, will be in lane number nine, Laura Clifton. And then up to her left is Marnie Sykes. So we move Those from a 50 cal rows. row. I'm excited and that's to see if they hold pace. this. Yeah, yeah. And moving those 40 wall ball shots with a 20 pound ball to a nine foot target. So you know, you know we have all these reps. Would you look to do smaller sets on a short rest or would you try to go a big set being that it's only 40? I mean, would you um, try to go, all right, I'm gonna bury the 40. I'm gonna take all yeah. of them. Yeah, so when I did this in training, I asked to do this to a 10 foot target. Okay. And in my head, I was like, oh my gosh, it's a 20 pound ball, it's a 10 foot target. And I think I got in my own head a little bit about it. And I, um, I think I broke the first one up into three sets, but at the second one, I'm broken. And then in training, Ben had me do some rowing and some wall balls with like 30, 20, 10, and then up and even do some 30 pound wall balls. So I was training with heavier to get some more confidence on that. So I don't think like, I don't think it's bad to break that up into two or three sets on the first one, as long as they're super short. Right. But I was trying to gain confidence so I wasn't scared of them. So if I, if, <laughs> yeah, you should be, some of these girls will definitely go 40 unbroken. Coming up after these wall ball shots will be 30 box jump overs. Now, be curious to see how that first box jump over goes after the 50 cal row, but just on cue, it looks like it was near 40 unbroken as Clifton and Sykes side by side. Now, these 30 box jump overs, I haven't seen the wood box in a while, so <laughs> yeah. the, the, uh, the freedom of fear isn't exactly clear because we're used to those the old foam box where, you know, a little shinning there is not going to hurt you. <laughs> I'm actually surprised to see them. We saw them in the first seat, too. Everyone stays kind of low on the box, which for me, at least, it's harder for me to flush the legs, especially with coming off the row on the wall balls. Michaela Norman has moved herself back in the top three. She was actually one of the slower ones off the row, but did very well on the wall ball shots. One thing I like from Nor uh, Michaela's technique is she gets pretty close to the far edge and gets that leg off fairly quick to step off the side of the box where some others are getting jammed up in the middle of the box. Well, then one of the things that we, we already talked about how much of a quad dominant element the first two movements were. Yeah. You could kind of take that element out by making it be a calf element by rebounding on the top if you had yeah. that ability. Now, I'm a master's athlete, so you would never see a master's <laughs> do stuff like that will blow our Achilles out. But you could have these athletes standing up and just that quick rebound yeah. Oh. and ending up on the top. You know, it's only 30. It's going to be fast you, if you have that rebound. That's uh, that's definitely what I would do. That's the first one is always the hardest one. And yep. then it's basically just if you stay tight, you're going to – it's it's not as – it's a little, it's harder on the cardio, but it's definitely a lot easier on the legs. And, and Michaela Norman has actually moved up in about a three-way tie between Sykes, Norman, and Clifton as he moved from 30 box jump overs to a 20-meter front rack lunge. 60 kilos on the bar. These are those shorter competition bars, so it's not the uh, 65 that we might think this is. <laughs> Man, legs, legs, and more legs, and then some more legs. How about that? 
20 meters down. They'll make the turnaround at the 10 meter mark, so they'll go back for their full 20. And Michaela Norman, maybe that conservative start kind of played more into her game plan is row at an easy pace for the thing that I'm good at and just kind of save myself for the later part of this event. Well, I think definitely her strength is her aerobic capacity, so there's no sense to try to empty the tank in the beginning. Uh, but you can see she's already starting to pull ahead just by having that consistency in, yeah. in, her, in her ability, in that, in that cardio ability. Norman, in the middle part of the competition floor, gets passed by Sykes there at the end as Clifton, to the left side of your screen, is finishing up her last step across 10 meters. As Sykes, Norman, and Clifton will move to the last part of this chipper, and it's the 10 rope climbs. Now, after this, they're cutting everything in half down the middle. Sykes on the left in all black. Norman in the blue and orange next to her. In the gray and orange is Clifton. So you have three ladies all within one rep of each other. I actually feel like this is the point of the workout where you can win and lose the most time. Just like if you look at them, some of them are going to back away from the rope in between, and that's a couple seconds here and there. Um, getting set at the top, the speed on the way down, that's a big part too, because it takes time to go come down also. Um, so I think this is where if she is a little bit fresher, she will be able to move faster through these. Well, and 10 is a that's a healthy number of rope yeah. climbs. I mean, there's a lot of time <laughs> to be spent right here. So I, I, I agree that you, there's a lot of transitional time that you can save where you're really not even using a whole lot of, not using a lot of energy. When you come down, I mean, if you go to speed rope it down, yeah. that saving time allows you just to kind of keep that heart rate down so you can rest at the bottom rather than being held and trying to anchor your foot on the rope and lower yourself down and just wasting energy yeah, that way. Yeah, being efficient, like you say, with each pull and each like foot clamp. Yeah. And, and to both of yours point is, watch Michaela Norman, is that it seems like she has a very slow tempo and high grab, but she's the only one doing these climbs in two pulls, yeah. where Sykes and Clifton on the other sides are doing it in three. So saving yourself for that one makes those little differences as you're talking about when you're thinking about 10 rope climbs. As I think she does a great job of not stepping away from the rope. She comes yeah. down, she fixes the rope, and she jumps right back up. Another thing that I really like that she's doing is every time she goes to reset her, her, her feet, her arms are dead straight up and down. She's not holding. There's no bend in her arm at all, so she's not blowing out that grip and blowing out that bicep. Oh, wow, that was fast. And Michaela Norman will advance ahead of the two women she was tied with between Sykes and Clifton. The cutoff time in the previous heat from the halfway point was 10 minutes and 40 seconds. So she is currently a minute and 40 seconds ahead of the pace set in heat number one. Now we saw her have a bit more of a conservative row pace in the first round. But catching like you were talking to, once you get to the second round, regardless of how you feel, everything's in half, so you're gonna have to push it's that only pace. 25 calories. It's not, it's gonna be just maybe like a minute and 20. It's not gonna be much more than that at this point. And then she's gonna get 20 wall balls. She can do those pretty easy. 15 boxers is so fast after this. Michaela Norman alone on the rower. And you know, it looked like she was moving so slow on the rope climbs, but really, it was wasting zero, zero time. time. Two pulls to get the touch, and Katrin, as you said, never stepping away from the rope between movements. Wow, she made up so much time on that rope climb. <laughs> My goodness, she's going to be off the rower before anyone even else even gets there. We're waiting to see who the second place athlete is going to be. We know Sykes and Clifton got there before everyone else, and it looks like Sykes will come off the rope second as Michaela Norman is getting <laughs> off the rower. Take some of them. <laughs> and we know she wow. had a great first round of wall ball shots that put her back into contention with these top three. Seems to be running away with it right now. Norman back on the rig, 20 wall ball shots, 20 pound ball to a nine foot target. Marnie Sykes, 
the only athlete on the rower. Catherine, how often do you work with the heavier wall ball? How, how much do you put that in your training? I do it a fair bit. And then, um, my actually, like, at Rogue, I, I, I had this thing in my head where I thought it was just a capacity thing, like, like running or rowing, like, wall balls was just a capacity thing. And then I get to Rogue, and it wasn't as good as wall balls as I thought I was. <laughs> and it was like, I was looking at my wall balls, and my arms are flared out, and they're not very efficient. So we actually went back down to a 14 pound wall. I'm doing a lot of wall balls these days, but they've just, they haven't been heavy. Um, but he does that a fair bit sometimes and put him in so that when you finally pick up that 14 pound again, it's like, all right, this is an easy day. <laughs> well, it's been interesting. We talked to uh, Rich yesterday about with the team stuff when they were doing the uh -huh. wall balls. Same thing. And it was interesting when I asked him how much of the 30 pounder are you using? He's like, well, I use, I use 20 also because you can go fast yeah. with the 20. The 30 is about let's smash your legs. He's like, I feel it in my shoulders when I do the 20. I yeah. feel it in my legs when I do the 30. So it's interesting to get that different response on, on whatever it is. And it's not, a, and oh, it sounds sexier to put a 30 pound in, but it's the same as with like weights. People yeah. want to put more weight on you. Like, look, you're kind of giving yourself a break oh, there, yeah. you know? I have it's to like, rest because yeah, I'm tired. you got to rest. <laughs> the, the bar weighs so much. If you take, it doesn't look as good, but like, you get, you get to work so much harder and yeah. you go so much faster when it's lighter. Well, you, you know, it's, it's hard to post work capacity on a 15-second Instagram story. I mean, That's come on. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Michaela Norman is absolutely destroying this entire field. This, she has executed this very nicely. I think this is a this workout should look like this. Just that controlled effort, yet it looks it looks slow, yet the the pacing within the, the entirety of the climb is so fast. Sykes, you can see she's on her second round. Her and Pinheiro on the left, so Pinheiro over in lane number three has moved up into third as Sykes moves to the box. One more rope climb for Michaela Norman as she has 90 seconds before we reach that 15 minute cap. I'll say one thing we've seen all weekend is these, these caps aren't messing around. <laughs> 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 and in a little bit of a sense, they're pushing the tempo and pace of a lot of these events. As Michaela Norman, that you have to nice do, uh, and that is her last set. I mean, Michaela Norman, Okay, <laughs> I, we, and I, we've said this earlier. We know how Samantha Briggs works. Yeah, she's almost identical to that, but a younger version kind of coming in. So yeah. we, everything that Samantha is good at, Michaela is good at. Not quite as good yet, but I'm, I'm starting to see her move into that position. I, like I see, Samantha Briggs doing this event just like that, looking exactly like that. Um, I mean, that second back half that she just did, wow. Yeah, very impressive. that second set. She didn't fall apart. She held a good pace. She upped her pace and yeah. everything. Yeah, that was a very well executed workout. That's fun to do workouts like that. When you come across, <laughs> you're like, damn, I did that right. Yeah, I was to say, it's like, that was meanwhile, awesome. back in normal athlete land, <laughs> Marnie Sykes is finishing her 10 meter walking lunge. Let's see if she gets this rope climb. That's what eight Gil daughter got in the, in the heat before. Sykes trying to sneak in that what one rope yep. climb. We saw I Gilfadotter do the same thing. So a tie for second place in terms of reps completed with one rope climb. But Michaela Norman was in a league of her own. Wow. During this entire event. And it's so funny is that you know, we thought we she would do well off the road. We're like, oh, maybe, maybe not. not. And then she started the rest of the event. And I go, and there she is. Just look composed all the way through. I mean, even when she was pushing, you didn't see her looking. She did not look like she was hurting yeah. at all. And as heat two comes to a close, the new time to beat set by Michaela Norman, right on that 13.45 mark. And your top 10 athletes yet to come, sitting in this third heat. And Sarah Sigmund's daughter has extended her lead on Karin Frey, who has moved into second. Briggs, who was, was in second, has dropped all the way to fifth, only the points are a lot tighter from third down. However, Sarah's looking very good after that 
speed snatch event. Well, we talked about wanting to see her have that attack that I'm going to smash, not I'm going to win or I'm going to get the right points, but I want to blow it up, and that's what she did. We were hoping to see that yesterday. We saw it today. It's impressive. I'm very excited to see, see her on this workout. It's a good workout for her. And with Sam in the same heat, too. I know. Only, There's going to be a lot of good push race. Here, Yeah, sure. They definitely have different strengths on this, but a good workout for both of them. So two heats down, one more heat to go for the final individual went for the women tonight. We, st I mean, I feel like we've been here, well, we have been here, not even all day, but it's just been a long <laughs> moving day, a marathon moving day for both teams and individuals. The final heat is coming up next. After two heats, Bill, what have you seen has kind of been the, the ch turning point in the middle of this event? Well, you have to know, and we've said this already a couple times, you've got to know your body, you have to know your limits and where to push and how to push. With Michaela Norman, we saw an endurance level athlete kind of reel back just a touch so that she could smash that second half. That's exactly what Catherine was talking about, going, making sure you can do those, that last set unbroken. We saw the other women trying to push that first half, and they got buried on the rope climb. So you have to be able to play your game as you kind of make your way through it. Like and really it came through was those 10 rope climbs. But she, she was fast. She did, she did do a great job. And then she did them fast, and she came off feeling good, able yep. to smash in that second half. I think, yeah. you know, and this is a question I want to pose to you, is we talk a lot about how game plans can change from heat to heat to heat. Do you guys kind of look and see how maybe a game plan got switched based off the performance of a couple athletes? It's hard. It's really hard to both stay, like, focused on what you were about to do and focus on another game plan and then you might get like drawn into like what if that girl is running faster but that didn't end up being a better plan so normally it is better to stick with the game plan and how you are feeling right you know yourself so that normally ends up being way better for me but if it's something like the snatch event where you think that like yeah i'm gonna do fast singles like oh no like if someone's <laughs> doing touch and go well, you gotta go touch and go so yeah. you can do that if you'd like to get last yeah. Yeah. you can go for eight how about yeah. that all you right you do singles i'm gonna go <laughs> No, but Kayla Norman flipped the script on, a, I would say, at least maybe how to take out the pace of this event. And we have a nice long chipper for the final action for the individual women for day number three. 50 cal row, 40 heavy wall balls, 20 pound ball to a nine foot target. Box jump overs, front rack lunge, and then those 10 row climbs that you know, Katrin, you are saying earlier, can be kind of the dividing line for the success or failure for a lot of these athletes. Then you cut it in half, and Michaela just told everybody, like, oh, by the way, it's a race at the end, <laughs> starting, with that, starting with the row. I'm just so fast. I'm I feel just, like we, we, we barely looked off the screen and she was done. Well, I just am surprised how much distance she put on the field in the rope yeah. climbs. I mean, that, that was the determining fact. We saw basically the group kind of all move together until they got to the ropes, and then that just... Everyone else just got blown up at that point. Saw so the athletes get off the row in the second heat, right around that 2.30 mark. And, you know, Katja, you were saying you think there'll be more along three minutes. That's the ones I, that got yeah. off really early didn't end up finishing the event very well, where out, Michaela yeah. Norman was close to that three-minute mark like you were, you were I guessing. will say there are some strong rowers here, so maybe, and they're very fit. You know, if you look at, at least I know um, Sarah and Sam are both very fit and very strong rowers, but I would think they're both very smart athletes too, so they shouldn't be coming up much faster than, than the three-minute pace. One athlete I, I like to see is Karn Frey on the far left. Is that taller athlete, strong athlete, super fit? I mean, she she made a name for herself here last year yeah. at yeah. the Dubai Cross the Championship, almost to where I was like Googling Karen <laughs> Frey. <laughs> I was like, where did you come from? Well, and where have you been hiding? And, and now she's here in the mix vying for a podium spot. Yeah. Well, and what's crazy is across all of the events, she has been, I, I, like I said, identical, identical to what Sarah's doing. A, a place or two off on almost every single event, but the same, all the ups were the same ups. The downs were the same downs. So to have these two right next to each other, I think it's going to be interesting to see them battle. And then obviously, Sam Briggs, Any if the weights are not heavy, the movements... Are, it's just like you said, Catherine, this is a grit event. And I mean, if we look at their grit, time, this there. seems a Come lot on. more the time domain that I was expecting for the 50 yeah. row. Yeah, they're being smart. Off the rower first is Karin Frey. She'll move into 40 wall ball shots at 20 pounds, and just behind her, the rest of the field Sigmund's daughter, Briggs, Megala. 
But you're right, this is a grit event. There's yeah, never, yeah. there's no point of time that this event is easy. There's no point that you catch your breath. It's all pure work capacity and the rope climbs, you have to stay so focused yep. and close to the rope that, you know, you almost gotta remember to breathe on those two. Um, so this is one of those events that I like that time domain. It's not, you can't go super fast for the 13, 14 minutes, but it's also edging into that endurance that you have to be smart. Time to beat, up left corner of your screen, 13.43 was set by Michaela Norman. As she was about nine minutes in when she finished the first portion of this event, since a kind of half-style chipper, 40 wall ball shots, 20-pound ball, nine-foot target. First off the rower, on the left side of the screen, the all-black was Karen Frey, Sigma's daughter, Briggs to her right. Right now, watching these girls, I want to be on the floor so bad. <laughs> yeah. We want you to be out there too. We want you to be out there too. Karen Frey not backing off the pace, but Sigmund's daughter and Briggs just behind her. Wait. Oh, <laughs> Sarah got Where's off the, the box. I'm pretty sure Briggs has I wonder a if she got the, the, I wonder if she got the box jump. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have to jump on your box or just any box? Oh, man. And this right here is what we were talking about, doing that rebound on the, oh, yeah. on the floor that Sarah's doing here. I, I mean, I, that, it may not look real pretty, but if you can use it where it's just your calves, you are able to save your legs just a touch. Well, Katja just made a good point. I, we have two athletes jumping on the wrong box. <laughs> yeah. Although Julie Hugo made a, a, a swift audible and just, you know, musical chairs, found the open one and just started jumping on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Sam Briggs. Now, this is one I'm curious to see how she handles because she did hurt her foot during the open during a split jerk. She said that position bothers her foot. And you think about a walking lunge and watching that back leg, that foot gets put into the same position. Well, and she didn't even do the split when she was doing the clean jerk. She went for that push, pre that push yeah. jerk. Ah, that was the foot. Sarah Sigmund's daughters moved ahead of the rest of the field. Keeping pace, Gabriella Magala below her in the blue and black as Sigmund's daughter drops the bar to make the turn. Magala moved in second. Rolf below her in the orange and black. Sigmund's daughter on her way back. Once they're done with this 20 meter front rack lunge with 60 kilos. We'll move into those 10 rope climbs. This combo is actually way spicier than it looks too. To hold that front rack, you're not actually like resting anything. Your no. upper body is getting so tight to go right into those rope climbs. I think it's that position and just being able to breathe. Look at, <laughs> look at Sarah put chalk in her sports bra. That's the way that we, we us girls do it, yeah. Use those transitions wisely. I'm gonna start wearing a sports bra <laughs> just so I can keep my chalk. You guys close have by. like pockets. It, it will look great. Yeah. No, 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 it will look no. great. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't like having chalk in my pockets. <laughs> the split time that Michaela Norman set after these ten rope climbs was right about the nine-minute mark. As Simeon Zotter's working into her rope climbs up to the right side, Emily Rolf has moved into second. Sam Briggs is to the rig as well as Magala and Frey. Up in lane number one, let's not forget Jamie Green has got her first rope climb in. So two minutes before that nine minute time check set by Michaela Norman, her time to beat was 13.43. Sarah Sigmund's daughter to the rig first. She's in the center lane. Briggs just to her right. We'll start looking at that tempo between sets, and it looks like Briggs is, is slowly moving up. Sam has a faster transition, or what do you say, like well, time you between, talk, yeah, you between. You talked about rows. like moving away from the rope. I mean, we, as a coach, we call that disengaging. If you if you move away from the bar, if you move away from the rope, the second you step away, it's it takes seconds to get yourself back to it. All yeah, you I feel do is like stay because it's that. like when you're ready, you're like, all right, let's go, let's go, and you're ready. Then you're like two steps away, and you're like, yeah. so you could have been on the rope, 
but you're not. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be far enough away from the the object, the rope, the wall ball, whatever, to where you can have a conversation with yeah. yourself. All right, we're ready to go. Let's do this now. <laughs> no, you, you don't need to have talk. Just get back on the rope. The one that you see this the most, with, the one that I catch myself doing this most with, is a heavy barbell. Like oh, you always yeah. step oh, away. Yeah. Like it's so hard to stand above the barbell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's really easy to step away for the bar from uh, on my end. <laughs> I was like, I think I need to check my phone to see if anybody texts me. <laughs> I think, are they equal? Yeah, I think it they looks are. Looks like he wow. could have one rep each between Briggs and Sigmund's daughter. Dang. Hey, yep. see it now. It's one rep across the board between Sigma's daughter Frey and Briggs. Sigma's daughter is in the red as she will finish her final rep, moving back to the rower and right on pace that Michaela Norman set at that nine-minute mark. Samantha Briggs and Gabriella Magala has moved into third. So we are past the nine minute mark. All three athletes are right there in tow. Michaela Norman set the time to beat at 13.43. And I'll tell you what, once she got to the row in the second half of this event, she started flying <laughs> through this. She was off like a light. My gosh, moving so fast. Pretty sure Karin Frey got on the wrong rower too. <laughs> what do you call it? Musical chairs? <laughs> Out. That dang wad Another drunk every too. time. You gotta climb when that's open. <laughs> that wad drunk Pace is a powerful leader, thing. Huh? It yeah. is. It's real, man. It's real. <laughs> Jamie Green up in the top part in lane number one. She's still hanging around in the top five. But as we came in, it was Sigmund's daughter, Briggs, and Magala. One, two, and three. Emily Rolf has moved in at the 10 minute mark. This is a 15 minute capped event. We've only had one athlete finish, and that was Michaela Norman in heat number two. The next best score was one rope climb in the second portion of this event. Hands in the air for Briggs, hands in the air for Sigmund's daughter, hand in the air for Magala. So Briggs might be pulling slightly ahead of Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Wow, she's such a good rower. Give me a break. It's not like Sarah cannot pull hard. And it looked like she was pulling harder than Sam, and still Sam is able to come I off like that rower first. I like how such a good rower. She is so freaking good at so many things. Well, that's true. <laughs> Rowing being one of them, yeah. I, when you take a crossfitter and you go, oh, I think I'm going to try for the World Indoor Rowing Championship. All right. She's, I'm going to go and smash Sam, people on that, too. I think too. is the most impressive crossfit athlete. Order in one, two, three coming in. This was Briggs in the center. To her left, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. To her right, Gabriella Magala. Hand in the air for Briggs and Sigmund's daughter. This will move from 20 wall ball shots to 15 box jump overs. I would like to see them. I think now the transition starts to matter if they can move. Because it's a big transition, too. Like, that was a big one, and another yep. one to the ropes. I think this pace speed. is going to be big for Briggs because she is not going to be able to front rack lunge as fast as Sarah can. Yeah, Sarah moved. That's where she made her move is on the lunge and passing Sarah on that last set. So Sam needs to get as much distance here between her and herself and Sarah on this before those lunges. Now, the benefit there is so that fast. it's only 10 meters versus 20. Yep. Especially if you need to All adjust right. your knees Sarah's like that so you don't hurt when you hit that. <laughs> you plant them into the ground. Heck, I know that. Always with the knee sleeves. Sigma's on her, wasting no time to get to the bar. Briggs is going to have to pick it up because she did make up time on the 10 row climbs. However, with half the reps, that's happy opportunities for her to move back ahead of Sigma's daughter. 10 meters complete with that 60K bar in the front rack position, and Gabriella Magala has moved herself back into second place. Five rope climbs stand between Sigmund's daughter and a potential first place, but she doesn't that have a lot fast. of time. It's one minute to get herself five times up and across the finish line. 13.43 was a time to beat set by Michaela Norman. One rep is done. Magala has got to the rope. We have yet to see Briggs. She's walked up. 
She has enough time, but not enough reps to try to make it. 43 seconds, three rope climbs for Sigmund's daughter. Briggs goes up just ahead of her. Magala still in the mix behind Sigmund's daughter. Look at that tempo of Sam, though. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. I think she's only one behind her now, right? Oh, my Here goodness. Here comes yeah. Briggs. But look at Michaela's time. I think Michaela's going to get the winning time. And we just have 13 seconds, yeah. though. Michaela yeah. Norman's time may stand, but Briggs just passed Sigmund's daughter. <laughs> Dang, this could be so tight. <laughs> so Michaela Norman will win event number seven, oh but Sam Briggs oh will take heat number two. Wow. wow. So cool. And Sarah. Great finish for Sarah <laughs> Samus' daughter. And how about Gabriella Magala? She is not backing off. It was a great race between those three girls yeah. all the way through. I love what I love is that they they were able to use their strength. I mean, when when it became a you have to be a strong athlete, and that was the lunge. Then Gabby and Sarah both made their move in that position. Sam took the took the hits there, but then really made her move on the, the on the wall balls and on the the rope climbs. Brilliant play on the with all three of those ladies. I think Sam did a phenomenal job of like her boxers were fast, her yep. roll comes were fast, her rowing was fast. Sarah did a great job of picking up the barbell. She got going on every move. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where that was really good. Ten seconds to go. Here comes Jamie Green. And that will close out the final individual event for the women for day number three. As Michaela Norman's <laughs> time <laughs> from heat number two stood. Sam Briggs just passing Sigmund's daughter towards the end, but yet another fantastic finish for Sarah Sigmund's daughter. The race we were hoping for, we got. And, and Bill, to your point, it was really fun to see with this, a lot of different movements, athletes take advantage of the things they were good at to try to keep themselves in those top positions. Yeah, you, you really have to try to buffer that as much as you can. And, and all those, all of those ladies did just that. They knew where they were, where they were strong. They knew where they weren't as strong. So it's let me make up some time here so I can buffer this over here. And man, that was that was a fun race to watch. That was fun. That was a fun workout to watch. A fun race to watch. <laughs> they did that nicely. Well, Sam Briggs takes heat number two. She's down with Nikki Brazer. Sam, it was really you and Sarah neck and neck there in the end, and you managed to pull through on those final rope climbs. I mean, what do you have to tell yourself after everything you've been through in this event, in this day when the body's tired, to get to the end like that? Uh, with a workout like that, you uh, need to play to your strength. Yep. Uh, like, the, the walking lunge was heavy for me, and then with my foot on top of that, yeah. not the best movement to do. So I just had to take my time, make sure I was set up on that. The last thing I wanted to do was fail, because right. then I'd get like knocked back. And then the idea was, like, keep with them on the row, try to get ahead on the box jumps. I knew I'd fall behind on the lunge, and then I was like, just go for it on the rope climbs. You have to, you have to. Tell me a little bit more about what's going on with your injury. I know specifically after the beach we talked about, when you bend your toe like that, exactly how you do in a lunge is when it really starts to hurt. Uh, yeah, it was the uh, joint at the bottom of the big toe. So anything that you go up onto your toes. So <laughs> that speed snatch event that we did yep. was actually the worst one of the week so far. And I didn't expect that because snatching's been okay. But I think because of the speed you had to do it, it forced you up to, onto your toes more. Right. I was like, oh, that was unexpected. But uh, definitely a good finish to the day. Uh, and then everything's play for tomorrow. Well, good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much. Sam Brick takes heat number two, but Michaela Norman takes event number seven as we close out the women's competition for day number three. Still one more day to go. So much can happen. It's been an exciting three days so far. I, I, I'm just, it's so fun to watch Sam work. 
Um, and I think the fact that she is in the mix still, you know, she got bumped out of the top three, but we know, especially after that, we're going to see her back in there. She's just out to play, and that's just, that's she's just doing what Sam does. It's not about a, I need to win or I'm trying to get here. Sam just I'm just working. I'm just doing my thing, and it's just fun to really see her go at it. She always does have a great attitude, and even moments before we compete on the competition floor, she does have great sportsmanship. She wants everyone to do their best. She's always there to support. Um, she's great competition. Yeah. I mean, Spirit of the Games Award last year for a very good reason good for how great yeah. she is and how long she has been doing it at the top level yeah. here just over the last decade <laughs> of CrossFit. Captain, thank you for joining us. We wish you a speedy recovery oh. and good health. But thank you for joining us and making thank this you. a much better looking broadcast <laughs> for here. But for Bill Grunther, Captain David Sauter, Nikki Brazier, the individual men for event number seven will be coming up. Stay here for more coverage of the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship. Two minutes.
Let's go. 
One heat down for the final individual event on the men's side for individual event number seven. And as we just saw, one Greek athlete is doing well, but not the one we would have expected. <laughs> and it's Alex Katoulis that takes another heat win with an unofficial time of 1320. You know, and he's a smaller athlete, but man, when it is his turn to shine, he does just that. We've seen him with some very nice highs handful of lows. That's why he's down there in that first heat. But, man, great job for Alex Katulis. He looks amazing this weekend. He's had a strong day so far for day number three as we move into the final two heats for the individuals. They've already had six scored events up into this point as we have individual event number seven. I mean, tack that on to two days of competition into the <laughs> third. And after six scored events, Roman Karenikov has been reeled back in just a 10 point lead. Brent Fakowski has moved into second. 
seven point lead on Vellner. But we've had a much tighter race from first all the way down. I would say even six and seven are in contention based off how things have been going. But with this event coming up, you're looking at a chipper style event. Fikowski doesn't lose those style events, although Karenikov and Vellner are just as capable as anybody else in this field. Well, we're talking about it being an endurance chipper style event, but look at the elements of the event. We have rowing, we have wall balls, we have box jump overs, we have lunges. All of those movements, well, and then even rope climbs, all of those movements, if you are a taller athlete, you're going to have the advantage in those particular positions. And again, the wall balls are only at nine feet, so that's lower than normal. So I think that even though Krenikov is up in the front. We saw that one, I don't want to say epic fail, but we saw that one bottom. Stumble. It was a, it was a trip. It was a good trip on the, on the snatch Also event. known as a stumble. Because <laughs> I think it's a little bit more than a stumble. It was a little bit more than that. It wasn't just, a, oh, I dropped the fifth. It was, a, you know, a, a, a healthy fall. But with that being said, he still has a 10-point uh, uh, cushion. But he needs to do well here because you're right. Brent Fikowski is primed for this event. He's going to do well in this event. So Roman, if he wants to keep that position, he has to do well. But between him and Pat, I mean, they're, they're chasing him. They're right there. And that action will be coming up in heat number three as we are getting set for heat number two. A couple athletes looking to at least kind of disrupt the system. You got athletes like Yonikoski. Yeah. Great start of the day for Yonikoski. Willie Georges. A couple of the athletes that are making a name for themselves just kind of overall with that. I mean, David Sharunk just came off a great performance in the snatch event. Well, and he's a taller athlete as well. You know, we, we were joking about it when we saw him that like, hey, gymnastics, you're, you're built like a gymnast. And he's like, yeah, a foot taller and a foot wider. He's like, yeah, <laughs> a football player. So, you know, starting off with a movement like rowing, having wall balls, being a bigger, taller athlete, I mean, they're going to play to his. They're going to play to his strengths. Uh, so he is out of out of the characters that are on the floor right now. He's a taller athlete. He's going to have the mechanical advantage to do well here. Now, the one advantage you think those bigger, stronger athletes would have would be on the wall balls, especially when you throw a 30-pound ball out there. However, the targets are now at nine feet. It did take for that the men, away so a little bit. <laughs> I would say that that has actually removed a massive advantage that these athletes, the bigger, stronger, taller athletes have on the shorter, more compact ones. Because, I mean, wall balls are wall balls to begin with, but when you jump to a 30-pound ball, we were yeah. talking to Rich earlier, it might as well be a completely different movement altogether. Oh, yeah, But totally. when you lower it to nine feet, that evens the playing field more than it would normally otherwise. Well, you know, we talked to, to Brent Fikowski this morning about the wall ball setup, and he said, you know, he would rather be tall, high because obviously it plays to his advantage. But even he was saying oh, he, it's, he it's wants a it wall to be ball more shot. Advantageous for him? Uh, I mean, how <laughs> dare he, right? But he wants it to be a wall ball shot, not a wall ball put where he can actually physically place the ball on the target. Athletes working into the first 50 cals. Individual event number seven. This is heat number two. The time to beat was set in by Alex Katulis. As we have one hand in the air, it looks like in lane number two, it could be Evan Morris. Evan Morris made a name for himself last night during the clean and jerk event. So Morris will be off the road just after the two minute mark as he will go right into the wall ball. And I tell you what, not just the nine foot target changing the movement itself, that might change the way you approach the first 50 cals on the row knowing those wall balls that normally would have been the massive component of this event, not quite as devastating as they would have been otherwise. Well, it's not going to be as devastating, but then, you know, even like when we, what we were seeing in the women's section, you have to be able to pace out this, this first half of the event because you want to be able to, to really put the pedal to the metal on that second half that you're coming through, all the reps being cut in half. So I think right now you're just trying to get in a feel, kind of get in those sea legs, uh, get that, get that, momentum underneath you as you get moving. Uh, I like the way that Evan went straight from the row right to the wall ball, but now he's going to try to feel that out, see how he does feel. I mean, 
it is totally going to change the event, the wall ball uh, element of that event with bringing it a foot down. And I think that that definitely is going to make you re reassess how many reps I should do unbroken. I mean, you would think is that at, at, it changes the rep scheme. And, and at that height, it's, it's totally doable. And the, the nasty part about this, you know, we say it makes the movement easier, but it doesn't necessarily make the event easier because that changes the intensity yeah, exactly. to where you can do more, easier. more than you would want to, <laughs> right. and you can keep going. So a lot of that is actually, we're not saying it has changed workout in a sense of being easier. Maybe it's more deceptively worse. Well, I, you know, and again, I, I think that what we see in a lot of events, whether, you know, it's the CrossFit Games or some of these other events, it's just that little twist on the movement or the weight that you're normally used to having. I mean, even when, like when we'd see in the open, if you're doing a Fran type event, you don't do 95, 65, you do 170, yes. you know, just to kind of mess with you just a little bit. A lot of different styles of box jump overs. We've seen the step off, we've seen the rebound. It's kind of hard to see Sharonke. He's third from the bottom, but he's landing kind of with the forearms low in the squat, trying to stay as low and as quick as possible. Well, the nice thing is, is that, he, again, he's not jumping up. You don't see his head going up real high. He's just pulling his legs up. But notice how he changed. So what that tells me is, oh, man, that hurt a little bit more than I thought it was going to hurt. So I need to really slow down. Now, Kyle Bernier, we've had about four different athletes change who's coming first <laughs> from one end section to the other. First, it was Morris, and then it was Berman and now it is Burner as they move to a 20 meter front rack lunge. 85 kilos on the bar. They'll go 10 meters down, 10 meters back. They're just past the five minute mark. Willie Joris has moved up, challenging for that first place position with Bernier in the bottom part of your screen. George in the center lane in the gray. So you have Willie George and Bernier. And we're kind of waiting for Willie to kind of take charge and put himself back into that top 10 contention. And we really haven't seen it yet. No, I, I, it just hasn't been his weekend yet at all. Um, not really sure why that is, but he just hasn't been able to have a very, I mean, the the last couple years that we have seen him, it's been so fun to be like, wow, this guy is on the scene. He's on the precipice of something great. And maybe it's just too early in the season for him. Maybe this is a, you know what, I just, with the fact that a lot of these athletes can come here and make some money, let me make some money so that I can travel to some of these other ones and hopefully make a showing in one of these other sanctioned events. And maybe that's the game at this early in the season. And that's one of the incredible draws of the Dubai CrossFit oh, Championship yeah. is the amount of money you can make just by winning events. You make money just for showing up oh, yeah. to this event, just for qualifying here. And then not to mention the top prize purses. So this event not only is one of the top sanctioned events in the world in terms of comp competitive field, yeah. But at the same time, this event can set you up for the rest of the season <laughs> in terms of helping you kind of navigate other sanctioned events and just paying for those trips. Yeah, well, last year when they interviewed Samantha Briggs, they said, hey, you just won. What was the goal? The goal was to make some money so I could go to Australia next weekend. <laughs> Athletes moving into the middle portion of this chipper style event, men's individual event number seven. This is heat two of three. The time to beat set by Alex Katulis at 13.20. That's at the upper left part of your screen. Willie George got to the rig first. And it's those 10 rope climbs that we saw the women tackle. And we were talking to Katrin earlier. And it's very important to force yourself to stay underneath that rope because so much time can be gained or, more importantly, lost in between these 10. It's The, the number is small, but the time duration is great. Well, and just like what you're saying with Willie George, and granted he was chalking up, but the time it took for him to go from rep number five to now rep number four was 15 seconds. So it's a 15 second break in between just those two reps. And in the air from six different judges designating five reps or less to go. George had a quicker break on that one, about 10 seconds in between.
We need to see which athlete will come off the rig first. And that looks like in lane number three, Uldis Upenix has come off. <laughs> Is any one guy going to just lead this event toe-to-toe? -to -toe? We've had a different person. <laughs> So basically what's going to happen is like he won't be off the rower first. Who's going to be joining him off the rower? Well, but let's think about, you know, what Oldis was doing earlier in the competition. When we looked at that long run in the bike, that was where he was really showcasing. So here we are in another, you know, endurance style event with the chipper and a lot of these pieces, not real, real heavy weight, but just trying to kind of the grit and how much can you hurt and keep yourself in that pain, that, that pain area. And he's doing, he's doing really well in showcasing that. And we, we've seen a different athlete lead a different section this entire event. It started off with Evan Morris coming off the rower, rower first. And then Jake Berman coming off the wall balls. Kyle Bernier getting to the boxes. Willie Shores finishing the lunges. Well, who, have, who haven't we hit that's leading in the front there? Let me, we, what, two well, more people? I'll say David Sharonke, who got to the rower second, might be our best option for our newest event leader. Okay, we can use that one. That'll work. Coming off the 10 minute mark, this is a 15 minute capped event. Now, when we watched the ladies do this event, we saw them really pick it up on the row. I haven't seen that yet with the guys. The guys look like they've all, across the floor, have all smashed themselves. You see Yonikoski, who's coming off the row first with a hand in the air, but every single stroke you see him resting. Now, Oldest, what he was doing, even though he was to the rower first, he had his, his elbows on his knees on every single pull of that cable. So we're seeing them not go as aggressive as the women did on that second half. Now the second half of this event, we are cutting all the reps in half. We are just past the 10 minute mark. So we finished 25 cals on the row, 20 wall ball shots with a 30 pound ball to a nine foot target. We'll have 15 box jumpers, 10 meter lunge, and a five rope climbs to finish. Wow, the way Oldest is doing that, that's all quad dominant. You can see his heels are actually coming off the ground. Now, if that was me coming right off the rower, my heels would be planted. This would be all a butt wall ball. <laughs> I'd be sitting back and box squatting every single one of these wall balls. Make a t-shirt, Bill Grundler. Bill Grundler. All butt. All butt. <laughs> all but butt. Oldest right. Upenix is starting to pick up the pace on these box shots. And we saw that on the women's side, trying to keep pace with him in the back. You can see David Sharonke. Also move as he has about two minutes and 20 seconds to try to match the time set by Alex Katulis in heat number one of 13.20. He has a 10 meter front rack lunge with 85 kilos. About 185, 187 pounds. Just over his shoulder, you can see Sharunke has moved to the bar. And Oldis. Oldis is picking up the pace on the back half of this event. Now he has about a minute and a half to get five rope climbs done, and he already's got one in the bag. So Alice Catullus' time of 13.20 is in danger of getting beat here in heat number two. Mind you, we still have one more heat remaining of our top athletes after six events, this being event number seven, the third event of day number three. Two more rope climbs ago. David Sharonke's moved to his last five rope climbs. As we are a minute out of the time to beat. And that'll be it for Ulda Supenix. And a new official time, 12.34. For Aldis Upenix. Is that Sharunke is done with his fifth rope climb. So that'll be two athletes underneath the time to be coming in. Right around 
All right, so on the second half, what we were seeing is that they were resting on that row so that they can hammer the back. Because all these guys did pick up the pace once they got to the wall balls and everything else. So that I'm glad to see that because they were all <laughs> going really slow on that row. I was getting a little worried for them. Caron just finished right near that time. Set by Alex Hatulis in heat one as Coasty crosses the finish line. 15 minute capped event for individual men's event number seven. And Willie George who got to the ropes the front. first yeah. early on and just really fell off the pace yeah. there in the middle. Well, and I, I think what this is showing is there's, there's a lot of deception in this particular event where even if you aren't just yourself not really aware of, okay, what that first half, that first round does versus that second round, um, you know, I mean, Willie definitely has some capacity, even if he's not on his best game this weekend, but that really dropped him down, really dropped him down in this, in this event. Jake Berman finishes his final event of the night. Below him, Evan Morris. Evan Morris might be suffering from that fable mistake of first off the rower, last across the finish line. Uh, it's so normal. It's, it's, it's so common. <laughs> you come off. It's like, oh, I'm only five seconds faster than I should have. Oh, now I'm way behind the rest of everybody. So can I just stay on the rower until someone else comes off? Just never be the first one off the rower. First Morris row on CrossFit. Don't we'll be the first <laughs> off the rower. He'll cross the finish line just underneath that 15-minute cap. But we have three left or two left stranded. And so a new time to beat set by Aldis Upenix as we move to the final heat. Men's individual event number seven, heat number three. And so a new time to be, heat two, one more heat remaining. Although the, the list of athletes we have in this, I, I don't foresee that <laughs> time standing within the next 15 minutes. But Aldis has done a great job of putting up a good, great time for everyone to see. Again, we now see, looking at the ladies and looking at the men up to this point, what this is supposed to look like and kind of how to play the game. We have the ultimate strategist in this game in Brent Fikowski. He's one of the taller athletes, so again, a lot of it should play to his favor. It's going to be a good race. I want to see what Roman's going to do. Is he going to be able to hold off these guys? I think this is going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle in this heat. Don't go anywhere because we have your top three athletes as our top three favorites coming into men's individual event number seven. And they're sitting not separated by much on the leaderboard. And you look at Roman Karenikov, 10 points on Fikowski. That's just two places when we're talking about the point system we're using. Patrick Vellner, just seven points behind that. And then you have Jason Smith in the totally capable of doing well in this set. So there is a lot that is about to take shape. And what the important thing here is, is that momentum going into the last day of competition, when it is this close, is vital, I think, not just to the athletes overall standing on the leaderboard, but their psyche. Their psyche, yep. And you know what, just like you said, I think that you said that there's only a two-place uh, uh, amount of points between Roman and Brent Fikowski. We have a lot of guys in this particular heat, let alone oldest to just put up his time and, and Alex uh, Katulis in the first heat, that can throw the wrench. And so now we do have that game where we have people that if I don't get the, my best time, you can very easily have three people slot in there and boom, I just lost that position. And, and let's put that into perspective as you see individual event number seven is on the board is that first to fifth, 20 points. That's all it takes. Yep. And when you have the time set by Catullus, Upenix, that are already in the mix of some of the top times we've seen, we've seen that happen all day. Yeah. These top times from the first two heats making their way into the top five overall. Your race should be there in the middle with Karenikov and Fikowski. Vellner is sitting in lane number two. But like I said, if you just look at, I mean, Elliot Simmons could do well in an event like this. Absolutely. There is a lot that can happen to set things up and to change things up coming after this event. Third and final heat, final action for individual men for day number three as the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship is getting closer and closer and tighter 
at the top of the leaderboard. They'll start with 50 cows on the row. And what we've seen so far over the women's side and the men's that this should be a bit of a buy-in setting yourself up for the rest of the, ev the event. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be on there for a little amount of time. But we have always, we see it so often that, you know, a mere handful of seconds can either set you up beautifully or destroy you massively for the rest of the event. And that, I mean, it is literally anywhere from three to seven seconds amount of time. If you're the first one coming off, you really have to understand how you are feeling coming off and what you're going into and by how much. Are you really racing to get off that first or are you just trying to check the box and knock off those 50 calories? And I think that you want to go into this event, check in the box first, push it on the other stuff. Right side of your screen, your overall leader after six event, Roman Korenikov, just to his left, Lazar Dukic, Jeffrey Adler, Patrick Fellner has moved into third place overall. Came into today in seventh. Elliot Simmons just to his left. Simmons had a great performance at the run bike event on the first day of competition. The fastest row split we saw, which I don't recommend, is right about the two minute mark that Evan Morris did in heat number two. But I think safely you'll probably see more of that 215 to 230 being a more of a conservative time, knowing that this really is just a buy-in to the rest of the event. Not yeah. much is going to be won here once he has so much work left to go. Well, and I mean, and I'm, I'm looking across the board, and the strongest character on the floor in Tula Mar Maricano, not first off the row. And in all reality, I mean, he's a, t he's a bigger athlete as well. He could be in a great position to throw a massive wrench into this because you would have thought on an event that he wouldn't do very well in the the muscle up and the handsome walk. He did pretty dang good. So he's got strength, he's got some capacity. He's gonna be able to move these objects. Well, what do we see Michaela Norman do? Yeah. Who set the fastest time for all the women in heat two. Yep. She was one of the last People athletes off the, off the row. And, and it, that, that to me is a Brent Vakowski strategy. I mean, I, I wasn't able to see where he was just by what was on the view there, but I could see someone like that going, you know what, I'm choosing to be the last <laughs> one off the road because you will all be more tired than I will coming out, you know, getting to the wall ball. 50 cal row is done. We'll move to 40 wall ball shots. Again, it is a 30 pound ball to a nine foot target. Vellner will break. He's in lane number two in the red and black. To his left is Elliot Simmons. He'll break for the first time. To his right is Jeffrey Adler. Hand in the air for lane four and lane five, Roman Karenikov. Now, if there is an athlete who can just put the pedal down and keep it down, it's Roman Karenikov. We saw that a lot during the Filthy 150 where he went five for six in event wins at the end of that competition. So Karenikov definitely has the capacity to do so. Now being joined by the rest of the field, Grinnikoff holding on to a 10-point lead. In second is Brent Fikowski, 10 points behind him. Seven point back from that is Pat Vellner. Now the benefit that Fikowski has is that he is right next to Roman, whereas Vellner is over there back in lane number two. 30 box jump overs at 24 inches. Karenikov is done and he'll move to a 20 meter lunge with 85 kilos. 10 meters down, 10 meters back. To his left, Lazar Jukic has moved into second. Jason Smith fighting for that second place position as Karenikov is one step away from his first 10 meter lunge. 10 meters down, 10 meters back, 20 meters total. After this is that 10 rope climbs. Well, we see everyone coming down. We know that Roman is pushing hard. And that's, I think we're rolling the dice here. Um, Krenikov is pushing, that's what he does. He just goes for it, pedal the metal type of a setup. All these other athletes are kind of hanging back. Now, 
Brent Fikowski was one of the last people off the box. Made his way, you know, was going pretty decent on the lunge. Uh, uh, Pat Vellner, same thing. Really seeming like he's holding back as they get through this lunge. And, and, you know, with the ladies, you didn't have to smash the first half. You just had to be consistent until you can open up on that second half. But you did have to do well on the 10 rope yep. climbs. And that's yep. where we saw a big difference between a lot of these athletes. So Karenikov, even after all that work, doesn't even have a full rep lead on Brett Fikowski. And look what Brett Whoa. Fikowski just did, is that he put his feet on the ground, but kept his hands on the rope. So Fikowski, he's in lane number six. Touched the top, feet at the bottom, doesn't even let go of the rope. Talk about staying engaged. You, when we had Catherine up here, she's like, you know, you don't want to move away from the rope. That's the ultimate right there, not moving away. The hands never come off on the ground, pulls his feet up, and he's also not wasting the jump. Not wasting that his, his, any kind of leg on his jump. He's a tall athlete, so we can get his hands up, you know, reach them up nice and high, and then he just keeps his arms straight, locks his feet, stands up nice and tall. And just like that, Fikowski has moved himself into first place as he has four rope climbs left to go. Karenikov is taking that break. And Look how tired he looks. He looks, he looks like that now this is starting to set into him. And the one thing I like is that Fikowski doesn't have to jump to get an advantage nope. on the rope climb, still doing it in two pulls. And that yep. actually saves a lot Tons. of energy. We were talking earlier about having a slightly higher box jump being more intense than a, just a shorter one, regardless right. of, you know, 30 inches or 24. Same thing for a bar facing burpee versus a regular. That little jump has a surprising demand on your fatigue level. Well, it's 10 extra jump, uh, 10 extra explosive movements that you don't need to do. So you're really able to save a lot of energy with that. Fakowski just blew the doors off those 10 rope climbs. Now Roman is just behind him, followed by Jason Smith, Patrick Vellner. So two athletes, Vellner and Fakowski, that are trying to just sneak away as many points as they can, not necessarily have to make it up all, all in this event. What Fakowski's going to need is he's going to need Vellner or Smith to sneak up between him and Roman. Here's what I think is going to happen. I think that Roman was blowing the doors off of the field, and he felt that. That was a good thing. He was feeling good about himself there. I don't think he realized how good Brent Vakowski was going into those rope climbs. The fact that Brent was able to pass him so quickly and right away, now Roman is, is having to deal with the fact of, okay, I can get ahead of Brent again, but what am I going to do on the rope climbs? Because he crushed me on the rope climbs. And if we still have five rope climbs left to go, and the way that uh, Brent Vakowski was operating, he will pass, even if he's two rope climbs ahead, Fikowski's going to beat him there. And in the air for Fikowski first. Karenikov just behind him. But Karenikov has now moved back ahead of Brent Fikowski, moving from 25 cals to 20 wall ball shots. Oh, I like what Brent Fikowski is doing. Do you see how he's putting the ball just to the side of his head? That's keeping that ball up higher, keeping it to his shoulder. And he's actually alternating, trying to not get one side fatigued more than the other side. Fikowski, just to Karinikos right. And these athletes are step for step as we move through for 20 wall ball shots to the box jump overs. Now, we know Karinikov was faster on the box jump overs where Fikowski was a bit more controlled, but yep. Fikowski picked up the bar and moved the bar quicker than Karinikov did on the walking lunges they have coming up after this. Well, the fact that Jason Smith just kind of peeked into the picture there as well, thats that I think is going to be a huge help for Brent Fikowski. We talked about those other athletes needing to kind of get up there and separate, even though Roman is at the bar with Brent. Roman knows what Brent is going to do on that rope, so he's waiting. Brent is waiting for Jason Smith to hop up there. Fikowski with the step through. He's not even pausing in the middle. Look at the difference between him and Karenikov. Here comes Jason Smith behind Fikowski. 
and Fakowski making a late charge. The time to beat was 12.34. Now it's just a matter of how much Fakowski's going to be under that. Wow. So if Fakowski takes first in this heat, as Smith and Roman get to the rig simultaneously, if Smith can get ahead of him, that will put Korenikov and Fakowski tied for first place coming into the final day of competition. Fakowski, two rope climbs to go. Korenikov, Smith going back and forth. Korenikov, two reps. Smith, two reps. Fakowski, one more. So the race for first is locked up. But the battle for second is going to come to a sprint finish at the end. But Brett Fakowski is going to win event number seven. And the professor wins another long chipper event. I tell you, that guy, his pacing, it's so incredible to see how he can, you know that he had rep for rep, how much time every single one of those reps was supposed to take because he lets everybody go ahead. And the, the longer the event, the more that that works in his favor. But that was executed perfectly. Here comes Pat Fellner. That's going to be good for Fellner, keeping him contention in the top three. Be over Carl Goodmanson. All athletes under the time to beat coming in from the previous heat. Now, it's good for Korenikov is that he only lost five points to Brent Fikowski, so yeah. he should still be in first place after this event going into the final day. Lazar Jukic. Another athlete under the time to beat. This is a fast, fast heat. Fast heat. Wow. This athlete showing why they're in heat three and in the top ten. Jeffrey Adler across the finish line. Yet another underneath that time cap. Edmonds was before him. Two athletes left on the floor. Travis Mayer, Tolo Marquinho. So oldest Ubenik's time has come into play. Some good gamesmanship between Fikowski and Korenikov. That was a great battle with those guys. It was fun to see how they were kind of chess matching it back and forth. And you know? to see Jason Smith come into play towards the end of that and Korenikov able to hold him off. Man, you really got a feel for Travis Mayer right now. He's just, we've seen him for so long. In the last couple years, he's had these ups and downs. It's tough to stay in the game when the whole, when the whole floor is off and finished like that. That's a, that's a tough position to be in. Mayer, four rep rope climbs left to go. Tola just getting to the rig for his first attempt. They have 90 seconds, so they have the time to finish. And it does matter in terms of what they get because the best time from Heat 1 was right around that 13.20 mark. So now Alex Katulis' time. Just over one minute and 15 seconds remaining before we hit that 15 minute time cap. Athletes coming to cheer on our final two just to show them that they finished before them. So at least that's how it feels to me. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Mayer will cross the finish line well underneath that 15-minute cap. Tolmar Quino is only one rep behind that, so he has one more to go. And that will close out the men's individual competition for day number three. Fakowski, who is sitting in second, 10 points behind Roman Korenikov. Much needed first place finish, although he could have used a couple people in between him and Roman, but Roman was able to hold off Jason Smith for that second place well, finish. And that was great awareness by Roman, knowing that Jason Smith was right there. 
Jason did a great job. I mean, he was he was inching his way up, but Roman was just able to kind of keep that awareness, keep him back, pick up the speed just a little bit. But man, the 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 strategic execution of that event by Brent Fakowski was ideal. And if anyone ever wants to think about how do I pace, how should I ever pace something like this, look at what he does. I mean, that he lets everybody go on the first. Just go ahead and win the first round. I'll catch you at the end. And it's, it's not just on paper. I have seen, I got to call an event with him for 20.5, and this man has Excel spreadsheets oh, I know. dedicated to pacing Rep raw balls. 37 height, is going to be this number of time. It's absolutely Incredible. He'll go and look through videos and just find exactly how fast you could possibly do things. <laughs> so Brent Fikowski, no surprise, but he did put in the work to get an event win for event number seven. There must have been some strategy behind that, not necessarily coming out and leading the pack from the beginning, but still being able to pull through to the end. I mean, how by design was that? Yeah, I had a strategy that I wanted to stick to, which I knew would start me a little behind everyone and then pick up. But honestly, with how fast everyone was going, I went even faster than I thought I planned to. It worked out, but I, I deviated from my game plan. I went faster because I thought, man, I don't think I can catch up that much. So <laughs> hats off to Jason, hats off to Roman. They pushed me so hard there. That was fun. And we know that you're like that when you plan and you always have a strategy. You always know basically what you're going to do. When it has to change on the fly like that, how much does that interfere with you know your mentality going through the rest of the event? I mean... Ideally, you just stick to your plan. I, I love that, but you know, like even that last event with Jason, that's the stuff you live for. I train, I train really hard. I dedicate a lot of my life to this, right? And so, like so much, my wife and I, and to, so when you get out there, there's no excuse but to give your best. And if your best is harder than you think it's got to be, you got to push that 105 percent. And they brought it out of me, and that's why I'm here to, to get that out of myself. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Brent Fakowski closing off day number three, as anyone would like to, with an event win and 100 points. And this is shaking up to be a fun final day of competition on the men's side especially. Well, it's great because last year we didn't really have that with Matt, with Matt Fraser being here. But it's nice to see that now we have that battle. It always makes it... I'm going to be totally selfish. It makes it more fun for us to watch is where every single event is going to count. You hear that, it's Matt? It's a good time. It's a good time. <laughs> Matt, you just stay home and watch this. You'll be fine. We'll see you next month when you do in yours. So Fikowski, 100 points, inches him a little bit closer to Roman Karenikov. Karenikov should still hold that top position, but it's going to be a fun last day of competition for the individuals. However, today is not done. The final event of the night will go back to the teams for their fourth and final event for day number three. Don't go anywhere because the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championship continues. Some days are tougher than others. But we see each other, what no one else can. We sweat together. We endure together. Every one of us, redefining ourselves. We achieve together. All of us.
My name is Brent Fikowski and I'm from Canada. For me, competing in the Dubai CrossFit Championship, I'd say it means a lot. It's pretty exciting. It's definitely the furthest I've ever traveled to compete in CrossFit or any sport for that matter. You know, it's a totally different world here. It's amazing, but it's, you know, it's a big leap and it was kind of on the list of places that me and my wife wanted to travel to. And we just decided, let's, let's finally do it. Let's do it this year. What excites me most about life right now is when I get a personal best or I sort of unlock a little new technique or movement I've been really struggling with, uh, that still just brings me like a lot of joy and I have to work a lot harder than I used to for those progressions because I've been doing it for so long. These days, most of my time is spent exercising, training for this sport, but uh, I, I do have a musical side to me. So growing up, I played guitar, sang a lot, did a lot of open mics, which is pretty cool. I have 500 or so um, count record collection, vinyl records at home. So I'm a bit of a music buff. I suppose that'd be something that might surprise people about me, but uh, don't pick up the guitar too much these days. My fingers are mostly spent uh, grabbing pull-up bars, but it'll be there when I retire from this.
One final heat remaining of the final event of day number three. We will finish things off with the teams. And after eight scored events, Misfits' performance is putting on quite the show as they have extended their lead to 30 points over We Got Cake. Team prepared 20 points behind them. And as we thought it would be a three-horse race coming in, which was our three picks, Misfit performance is dominating the field. Yeah, it's a three-horse race. It's kind of a one-horse race, and they're doing exactly what they need to do. And it doesn't matter what's been thrown at them. They have dominated in, in amazing fashion. But this one I don't see to be any different. 30 dumbbell squat snatches with a weight that's not really heavy. And already we've seen the teams in the last heat were basically going unbroken. So a time cap of 16 minutes, we were seeing all of the teams at about eight minutes. So this is going to be way faster than a 16-minute re uh, race. Nice little sprint to finish off the day for the teams as this will be the final action we have here for the 2019 Dubai CrossFit Championships. Final heat underway, athletes and teams can choose whichever athlete they would like to put first. Team prepared in the four part of your screen, that is Mia Hesketh. Up to her right, Roy Gamboa representing Team Misfits. Misfits, Jessica Griffith in the blue and purple for We Got Cake. And these are your top three teams. We have Team Finland up at the top part of your screen. So you have a kind of a mixed match. Men first, women first, split it 50-50 right down the middle. Well, and one of the things that I have to I have to have you guys look at is Roy Gamboa right there in the red shirt and the black pants. Look at the way he's moving that dumbbell. He pulls himself under the dumbbell rather than trying to use his hips to stand it up and get the big shrug and all that position. If I'm not mistaken, this is a Travis Williams movement <laughs> that he talked about way back in the day when we had to do what was it Randy, I believe it was, in one of the regional events, and he did the same type of a movement where he pulls himself under the bar. So smart move, and, the, and again, they brought the weight. They actually changed the weight of the dumbbell and brought it down. So the fact that you don't have to have a big hip explosion, if you have the ability, you can pull yourself right underneath that dumbbell. Now, I don't know if this is on purpose or on accident, but watch Jessica Griffith hop forward just a little bit closer and closer to the next box where that dumbbell would go. I think that's a pretty smart move. A little intelligence there for sure. Gamboa will pass off to Taylor Williamson from Misfits Performance as Griffith looks like she handed off to Alec Smith. Not separated by much. Now you see on the Four part of your screen in the red and white. Oh, look at that. That's what I'm talking with Taylor Williamson. Look in those in the purple leggings. Look at the how much distance she's putting between her and Al and Alex Smith. She's not standing up all the way. She's actually just sitting down. So she's only doing one squat on every one of these rather than everyone else doing two movements. So your two leaders are actually in the middle part lanes, Alex Smith versus Taylor, Taylor Williamson. Team prepared, still hanging on to third place, Emily Lampanen. So whereas Misfits and Cake alternate men and women, prepared, sending out their two females first. Hand in the air for Williamson, hand in the air for Alex Smith. And this event is blowing by fast than we could have imagined. <laughs> I mean, come on, 60 minute time cap, we're through two people in three minutes. Williamson will be done just ahead of Smith, so about a two to three second lead and she'll tag off to Andrea Nissler as Alex Smith will pass it off to Cody Mooney. Moody on the left in the red and black. Nisser on the right, Lampin it is done. Looks like Alexander Caron will be their third athlete. <laughs> I'm 
On to our third athlete. Again, this is 30 squat snatches, 80 pounds for the men, 55 for the women. Man, that is a battle for those two in the red shirt and the green shirt. Just look at the speed of those reps. It's like rapid fire. They're only separated by a few seconds after two athletes, so this is really going to come down to whoever can move that the fastest towards the end. And like I said, Bill, it's this. There is no issue whatsoever with this. It's merely a matter of not can you do it, but how how fast can you push this to the limit? And you have to make sure that, one, you get below that parallel position and that you're standing all the way up. The last thing you want is to miss a rep, because that would be huge. And it's a one-rep lead for Misfit Performance over oh We Got Cake. Oh, my goodness. And when it comes down to a race where it's who can move the fastest, not who can just do it at all, you have Danny Spiegel versus Travis Williams. And really, I think this is going to come down to any type of no rep that they can possibly get. Their cycle time is nearly synced up. Williams in the bottom, Spiegel just above him to the left. Uh, there's that short movement that Travis is doing. You can see him not even stand up. He's literally just pulling that dumbbell up overhead. Williams might have a half rep lead as Caron is done, and he'll pass it off to Phil Hesketh. Seventeen, eighteen reps for Danny Spiegel. And she has picked up the pace on Travis Williams, so now it's going to be a matter of oh, whose judge's oh. hand goes in the air. And it's Danny Spiegel oh my gosh. that has picked up an entire rep on Travis Williams. One rep to go ah. for Spiegel, for Williams, but it'll be We Got Cake. Wow. <laughs> and it's not just an event win and a five-point lead, but we just got word that the winning team for this event wins $10,000. Oh, my God. Gosh, that's a fun time. They're just here to have some fun and have a vacation, right? Oh, and come come with, you know, $5,000 and some more money. Oh, man, that's awesome. That is awesome. Event win. What a race between these two teams. They weren't separated by more than two seconds the entire time. Team prepared. Finishing out their final set. Five more reps to go for team prepared. Phil Heskett just trying to hang on to that dumbbell. And just showing the difference between these, what we thought was three, then it was one, but the, the difference between your top two teams I mean, I mean, they really are far and away above the rest of the field. And, but these, are, and they're making individual games athletes yeah. look yeah. like they don't belong on the floor with them. That's how crazy this event has been over the last couple of days. Yeah, the, it's. I mean, I mean it's it, not it a bunch of scrubs out there. No, it's and it's not, and the events haven't been biased to one side or the other. We've seen heavy. We've seen. Weird swimming. We've seen very niche events. We've seen a lot of squatting events. We've seen gymnastic events, and they're handling it across the board. It's it's really incredible. And that's what you want to see for teams that have it together, all around, not just niche athletes on the team, but athletes that can do everything, everything. well. And at the same time, and we've seen this at the games last year, mesh well together because yeah. it's not just about putting your best four individuals out on the floor but your best team that comes together. Well, and then I think, think it's, you know, the fact that we got cake, they're having so much fun. We know that it's not all business, whereas Misfits is all about business. But, man, I, the way that we got cake performed in this event, that looked all business to me. That wasn't about having fun. Uh, Danny Spiegel's speed at the end of that was insane. And they're also super competitive, right? So they, they love to compete. They're here to compete. You know, first place finish, 100 points, $10,000 going to We Got Cake. They're down with Nikki Brazier. I know you guys are just here to have fun, 
but we this <laughs> the speed at which you moved that barbell in the end, I mean, how did you even pull that out considering the day you guys have had? Uh, I heard that there was 10 grand on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it easier. Now, I guess my next question is, what do you do with 10 grand now that you got it? Food. All the food. <laughs> food uh, okay. and cake. Okay. <laughs> uh, and then probably to business class ride right home. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you've had one long day and a few really grueling events. Just take me back through it a little bit. How are you feeling? How's the body holding up after everything you've gone through today? A little beat up, not going to lie, but going to go and do that hot tub, cold pool thing. Feeling a little better. Uh, it's been a great day, though, so really can't complain. Uh, won two events today and just worked really well as a team for the other one, so couldn't be happier. Yeah. Well, congrats on your big win and on your 10 grand, you guys. Yeah. Go relax. Thank you so much. Thank you. We got Kate closing out the day any which way you'd love to, and that's finishing on on top <laughs> in first place. Uh, you know, you're going to... Sleep with a smile on your face after that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, it's time to celebrate. They got one more day, but, man, you know these guys are going to have some fun with that afterwards. And, and for them, as we, you know, they express that their sole goal as individuals is to make it individually. However, the team sitting on top, the leaderboard for the team side, Misfit Performance, is doing exactly what they came here to do. That's win the competition, send their cells to the CrossFit Games for the 2020 season. Now, we still have one more day of competition left to go. But the way they've been, they've been handling their business, I don't see them losing that spot. I really don't see. I don't see them falling out of a first or a second place in any event that gets thrown. So there's no way that anyone is really going to be able to catch them. So I, I mean, obviously you have one more day. You can't say never, obviously. But they're in a great position and they have a lot of great momentum. On the women's side, Sarah Simmons' daughter had a fantastic finish to the end of the night, a top three position. She was comfortably in first. And the way that shaked out, I think she's looking at a, a comfortable lead going into the final day. Yeah, and we were wondering where was the competitive spirit. You know, it, it's hard to hear as athletes ourselves hear someone say, well, I just want to do my best. We know that everyone wants to do your best, but we want to see people attack with confidence. When you, If you want to be a champion, you have to be able to attack with confidence. And today, we saw that, and that was real impressive and fun to watch. And that's exactly what she wants to be. She's made it very clear her number one goal is to win the CrossFit Games. And it's going to take events like this and performances like she's had today especially to do that. So I think that was a very good day for Absolutely. Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Yeah. On the men's side, Roman Karenikov held off Brent Fikowski. Now that gap along the top three is narrowing, and it's shaking out to be a very exciting final day of competition oh, for the men. Gonna, it is going to be really fun to watch tomorrow with those guys. The fact that it's, and I think it's only about a five-point spread now after the, the things have shuffled out, but Roman has looked amazing. You know, There's been a couple of those stumbles that we talked about, and you just can't af really afford to have that when you have such monster athletes like Brent Fikowski and Pat Vilner right on your tail. But Brent Fikowski is in the hunt. He didn't come out here... The guy is too calculated to come out and go, I just want some money to go. This was his shot. He wants to make it here. And I think he's in a great position, and those guys are going to be battling. It is gonna, it is shaping up and has shaped up to be in an, an impressive <laughs> impressive battle, and it's going to be an amazing fight tomorrow. I, I, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. We're nearly starting from zero going into the final yeah. day of competition. It is wide open to determine who will be going to the CrossFit Games from the teams kind of have that set but women and men nothing's final just yet <laughs> and that'll do it for day three of competition here at the 2019 dubai crossfit championship i want to thank our guests rich froning katrin davis daughter for getting on the broadcast today yeah. for bill grundler nikki brazier i'm Chase singram stay tuned for the final day of competition coming up tomorrow for the 2019 dubai crossfit championship we say good night